What up, everybody? This is Jay Watts with that Uber Jeep AZ live stream. Once again, live as you drive. Trying to make sure I get everybody in tonight. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of us, you know, out here cruising. So let me make sure you guys are, let me get you in, in the mix right here. I know a lot of you guys are out there driving. What is it, Monday night? Usually I drive Monday night. I took tonight off. It's been a, it was a crazy weekend. A lot of good money out there. Hey, you guys, let me know if this microphone sounds good or if it's cracking. Because you know sometimes the way these little electronics work is not always on the up and up. So if it sounds good, let me know it's good. If it's kind of off a little bit, say, hey, Jeff, it's crackling or it's not right. What up, Brandon G., my man? Like I said, if the microphone's sounding good, just let me know. What up, Jamil? Hey, I ran into Jamil the other night. We was both doing appointments, man. That was pretty cool. So I ran into Jamil. We were down at the uh, Arizona Grand doing pickups, uh, airport pickups early in the morning. Oh, thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Because sometimes these mics, man, they don't act right. But no, Jamil, man, he's cool, man. So he comes up in his Jeep, right? He's got this EV Jeep. Doesn't make a sound. He pulled up and I was like, man, who the hell is in this nice ass Jeep? So he got out and he was like, Uber Jeep AZ. What's up? I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> What's up? What up, Sir J? My man, he's in the house. Sir J's always, man. We always having a good time, Sir J. You know it, my man. Duato. He's back in the mix. Chinchilla. Okay, Stanley Jink. Hey, there you go, brother. Like I said, I got that, that Stanley Jenkins Motorsports. They ain't ready for that. They not ready for that. <laughs> what up, Daniel? Says, you look good. Wakanda. Hey, we vibranium over here. We don't mess around, man. We don't do the diamond tier and the platinum tiers. We stay vibranium. Keep declining. That's all you <laughs> I need to make a shirt that says vibranium. Forget that. What up, all for kicks? She's in. Florida snow. See, fuck these people. <laughs> they be tearing my car up. That's how I feel, man. They been there tearing my car up. I be mad as hell, boy. I be like, man, fuck these people. Don't be tipping me or nothing. Mad as hell. But no, I appreciate you guys coming to the live. Who's out there working tonight? If you work and put a moon in the chat, be like, I'm a night driver. Because you know me. I'm, I'm moon all day, baby. I'm the moon driver. I'm not the sun driver. I'm, I'm like a vampire, man. I can't do days. Wait till traffic dies down a little bit. Then I get out there. Oh, Sam Lee, he's in the spot. You know, he's out there doing deliveries, man. Shh. Hey, Sam Lee, stay on the go. He don't mess around. He stay on the go. He rocks a night driver, too. Hey, it's something about night driving, man. That's right. We, we're we the graveyard ship. We love it when traffic's empty. The streets are empty. You ain't got no traffic to worry about. Get on the highways. Get off. You don't have to merge. Man, I love night driving. It's going to be hard going back to days because when it gets cold this winter, I'm going to have to start doing days a little bit. But, man... I miss nights, man. I miss nights because, I mean, you can get out there. You don't. Get, and a lot of time at nights, you're picking up people that are just getting off work. Or they're going to work like they do the graveyard, too. So it's easy. You don't got to deal with that daytime energy, man. People waking up mad and shit because the oatmeal tastes bad. It's like, man, I ain't had nothing to do with your oatmeal. I'm just a driver, man. <laughs> like Chinchilla. Well, this is I met up with my friend who drives a Tesla Model 3 for Uber. He complained to me several times, hating the regen break, and it gives them three stars because of that. I guess we can't have nice things. Yeah. Well, see, my Beamer's got the same thing. It's got that regen breaking, and they keep saying I'm braking too hard. I'm like, it's not me braking hard. I hit the brakes, and I'm cruising, and then the car does its own brakes right after I hit brakes. So they're like, they be like, man, that's a hard brake. I'm like, no, nah, dude. When you see that blue light on my dash, that's the regen brake. That's not me. That's the car doing that. Ride float down in Florida doing it. Oh, <laughs> hey, y'all, Ride Flow. If you go listen to Ride Flow's channel, this is so funny. I got I to gotta say this, brother. I got to say this. So I'm listening to him the other day in the kitchen because, you know, I, I play when I get up, I'm playing podcasts, whatever. So I'm listening to Ride Flow's channel in the kitchen. Swear to God, I thought I was listening to like one of those helicopter traffic reporters. It was like, so he's like, okay, right here in uh, Capital City, Florida, we're going right now. We're going to try to get about a 250 surge right here. I think we're going to get the 250 surge. Let me go over here to the highway right over here. And now you can, I swear he sounds just like that. <laughs> I turned around. I was like, what the fuck did I just click? <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> his ass sound like the, the chopper news anchor boy i was like dude you need to do a chopper news anchor like the whole like thing like that that shit was funny as hell he's like uber east was offering crazy here 28 dollars for eight miles what 28 bucks for eight are oh, they trying to get everybody to be an uber eats driver trying to get off of lux like hey come drive for us uber eats yeah but man ride flow man you had me in tears man i was like dude you have that voice, man. You got that that helicopter air voice, that air traffic controller voice, man. You got to do it. You got to do your channel like that. Because <laughs> I was like, 
because we need some variation in the ride share community. You know, I love the fact that my channel is set up the way I set up. Like somebody made a comment. They don't like me, cousin. I said, fuck them, you know, because this is how it is. You don't walk into a comedy show. I don't like you making jokes about this. Or you don't walk into a country bar talking about, I don't like, you know, the banjo. Motherfucker, this is country music. We play banjos, God damn it. So it's like, if it's not something you don't like, shit, then just don't don't be around it. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, yeah, man. Hey, Rye Flow, you can be that variable, man. Everybody's got to have have some type of theme with their ride share channel because I don't want I don't want our channels to end up seriously, honestly, like a lot of the DoorDash channels. All of the DoorDash channels sound you could play one and it, they all sound just alike. Ride share is cool because you got, you know, the aggressive drivers. You got the intelligent drivers. You got the laid back. You got the funny ones. Dude, we got ride share is so variable. And I love that. I love that. So yeah, Rifle is another good channel. Like I said, I like because I listen as I'm, and that's why I told Rifle when you're making your videos, I told Nick the same thing. Make sure you guys are saying, you know, the amount of miles that you're getting, you know, in the offer and the dollar amount you're getting. Because I'm not always looking at the screen. I'm in the kitchen. I'm doing stuff, and I can hear you say, "Oh man, thirteen dollars for, you know, thirteen dollars for thirty-two miles. That's garbage." I like when you say that because now I don't have to turn around and look at what you're saying is garbage because <laughs> I can hear you. So it's like, cool, cool. And and you've been doing it a lot lately. I've been hearing you say the prices and the miles and everything. So I appreciate that. But man, like I said, what up, Night Shift? Uh-oh, I know you're a night driver with a name like Night Shift. Yeah, yeah. Chinchilla says, while waiting with a 750 surge, I had an each request showing up in the trip radar. <laughs> $2.86 plus tip for 25 minutes of tip decline. Exactly. Nah, nah, you don't do that. Nope. Daniel, he's over in the airport queue right now. He said, I'm one in five in the airport queue. Time for Uber pet. No surge. Yeah. Matthew, what's good? My man, what's good? Yeah, but no, man, you guys, like I said, ride flow. And, and that's why I love the ride share community. Because we're a lot of the new channels are coming out that are doing the screen records and stuff like that. We're telling the truth. Because you got a lot of these ride share channels. They never show you anything but a screenshot here and there. Or they only talk. They don't show you how they're getting the money, why they're doing it the way they're doing it. Because it's almost like they don't really want to tell you how inefficient they may be or how efficient they may be. They want to keep secrets from you and stuff like that. And I like channels that I, I like the screen record channels. I do, man. It was a guy that started doing it a couple of years ago, and I don't think he still does it or not. But I started doing it just because I got tired of taking screenshots all the time. So I just started screen recording. But when I looked on YouTube, I saw another guy that did it two years ago. I was like, oh, so it's not like I'm not the first one to ever do it. And now you see a lot of new drivers doing it, too. A lot of new channels are doing it. But it helps show their market, their time of day, the type of rides they're getting, the type of, you know, the reason why they're taking these rides. And I like watching channels like that because it keeps me on my game, too. It keeps me like, OK, so I'm doing something right. I see what they're doing. I see how they're doing in the daytime. I see which rides they're taking. And we're all kind of helping each other. And, and just the channels that show you the, you know, the, the weekly screenshot. Oh, man, I made, you know, $1,900 this week. I made two dollars, but they don't tell you anything. What up, KK? Oh, Rock said the food was sitting for an hour. Yeah, they, they ain't going to tip you for that shit. If it was sitting for an hour, you ain't getting the tip. Leave that food alone. Don't even touch it. But I like, I like the screen record channels because with screen records, you can't really lie about nothing. If you make a mistake, like I said, there have been drivers that caught me making mistakes in my videos, they say, hey, Jeff, man, you could have did this instead of that. You could have went this way instead of that way. You could have, you know, saved your surgery. You could have, you know, used Uber Pet for this. So it and other drivers will help critique your style because they see exactly what you're doing. So they're going to critique your style and help you become a better driver just through watching your channel. That's it. So a lot of people have helped me become a better driver and they're drivers. And I turn around and get that information back out. And so I'm like, hey, man, this is how you can become a better driver. Somebody told me to do this. This is what I do. Yeah. They show you how they made 1900 believe out the part where they drove 2,500 miles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Working 85 hours. I'm like, I don't think nobody's waking up in the morning trying to work 85 hours. I'm not saying, hey, I'm going to work 85 hours. What up, Logan Block? My man, what a do, champ? Paying my dues. Multi app and got my pockets fat. Lyft, DoorDash, Shopper, and Uber Eats. Thank you. Hey, and, and my man, Logan, I'm going to tell everybody right now, go to his channel because he's the one that got me to buy this. This right here. Is what I end up buying. Thanks to Logan Block. This. I got this off of um, Amazon. He sent me the link for it. And I put the link in, I think, my last video. I put the link and I put Logan's channel link in there, too. But this is how we're going to start getting tips. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it says at the bottom. But this is plastic. I drilled holes in the top of mine because I'm going to hang mine over my back seat. 
So I got a, a little chain or whatever. Oh, I got this chain here, actually. So I got this little chain right here and I'm, I wired it through the hose and I'm going to hang it over my seat. So it hangs in front of the customer's face. So while they're riding, this is what they see. They got my cash app and my Venmo hanging back there. You know, it says, you know what? The, the more, the most secure way to tip, you know, you can tip me through cash app Venmo. They misspelled my name on Venmo. They put J E F. The shit should be J E F F, but you know me, I'm professional. These motherfuckers always misspelling something they ship me. I got a microphone one time. He's, it was professional, but they put two V's in the middle of professional. I'm like, professional don't even have V's in it. That's just my luck. They always sending me shit that's misspelled. But yeah, Logan Block Valley. I put his I put his channel in the comment in the description of the video, but I also put the link to this in the video so you guys can check it out. Because like I said, man, I haven't used it in the car yet because I used to use paper ones, and the paper ones sucked. Because people would get them, they would, you know, step on them. Somebody try to put it in a pocket, it would fall on the floor. They'd step on it, screw it all up. So now that I got that, man, that's that's gonna be a game changer because it's gonna hang right there. And I, it's cool because I actually ordered mine with a little border around it. So I got like an embossed border, it's like raised up or whatever. You can see it from the side, sort of. So it's kind of raised up. But what they want to do, how can they see the sign and give a tip in the dark? Oh man, my car's lit up. I got in, I got glow lights all through my whole car, man. My car stays lit up. Cause even with the other one, what up, Robert Fact, Robert Reese. But even with my other one that I had in the pocket, they could see it hanging there. Cause I got the BMWs come with lights and all the doors under the floor, everything. So it, it was a pretty easy setup. But even with this, my man um Wes, Taz Game, and he told me to find a way out how to get lights over it. Like you could put a light like this little light. You could stick to the top of it or something like that. What up, Wes? I was just talking about you. You could put a light over it to kind of shine down to show that it exists. But when mine is hanging, it's hanging like right on the back seat, like how I hung my last ones right in front of the people. So they see it big as daylight hanging right there. And on the back of some of my shirts, I got um, it says tips appreciated right on the back of my shirts. So when they see this, they say, oh, man, can I just tip you through cash app or Venmo? Cool. And we can chat about it if they want. If they say, hey, man, can I add a stop? I'm like, well, if you want to add a stop, you see that cash app and that Venmo sign in front of you? Yeah, hit me on that. Say, don't put it through the app because if you put it through the app, they're not going to pay me. Oh, my bad. I'm like, so what's the stop all about? Oh, we just got to stop over here, this and that, this and that. It's on the way, man. It's like, you know, another maybe mile right here. All right, you, man, you just cash at me five, 10 bucks. Just hit the sign, man. And so that way they ain't got to go through the app. And for people asking you for stops, this is a good way to bring that up. Hey, do you mind if we add a stop? Do we add a stop? It's like, oh, you can add a stop. Just you could tip me a little more. You know what I'm saying? If you want to tip me 10 bucks real quick, you can add that stop. Tip me 10 bucks. There it is. It says, hey, the most secure way to tip. That's why I put it on there. This is not for fares. If they want to pay a fare, they can go through Lyft. They can go through Uber. Agree with the terms of service. You want to pay a fare? Go through Lyft and go to Uber. But if you want to tip me, this is for tips. Tips are 100% mine. I'm going through the terms of service. If you want to add a stop, I'm not doing those stops, but if you tip me 10 bucks, I'll stop for you. And you ain't even got to put it in the app. Don't even worry about it. I'll just do it as a favor. That's what tips do. I'm staying within the terms of service. I'm not going to say, well, I'll cancel your whole trip and you just tip me out. No, I'm not doing no cancel, no trips. If you do a trip through the app, you're doing it through the app. But if you want to tip me, this is what I want right here. Tip me through this. And that way I'll do a favor for you because that's what tips are. It's about favors. What does it say? Do you have a video with the tour inside of the BMW? Just curious because it looks fire. I think I got an old video. It's a it's about I was upgrading my floor and stuff like that. It's, it's in my uh, I got a playlist called the BMW Mods and Maintenance Playlist or something like that. But it's a video in there about it. Yeah. Yep. That's a smart, easy way to access tips. That's it, brother. What, what Chinchilla say? She says, I have a tip jar using Costco mixed peanut bottle with rider etiquette memes on it. People liking it's a good conversation piece and gets people to give you cash tips. That's another thing. I, I prefer cash tips. I really would. Because when I'm out doing stuff, I'd rather use cash than use my debit card and stuff like that. Because because with cash, I could just buy something right there at the store and be done. What up, King James? So, yeah, I like that, you know, Chinchilla. I would prefer cash tips, but I still do the Venmo, the cash app and all of that. But man, man. Yeah. Yeah, William, like I said, it's in my uh, BMW playlist. I know I got a. I kind of show the the inside, the flooring, the dash, and all of that stuff like that. I kind of go through a few of the, the option items on the dash. I think it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. What is this? Uber is sneaky with stops. Had a rider remove a stop and re-enter it in. Uber dropped the fare and it was way lower than up front going to the same place. That's how they're getting us. That's how they're getting us. 
Now, this is the thing right here. A lot of times, like I did a stop the other day. Well, somebody changed the address and it was further. It was like maybe a mile down the road further. And my lift fare came back lower than the original. It was like $42 was the original. And they end up giving me $38, but it was a mile further. I'm like, that shit don't make no sense. Was it because I didn't, you know, pick them up? I was in the parking lot when I picked them up instead of in the goddamn stadium. I'm like, that's almost three whole dollars less. Like, that's that's nuts, man. Yeah, what'd you say? Matthew says, Hey, what's your stance on recording rash or conversations and then posting them publicly on YouTube? Well, I would say if somebody's gonna record a conversation, like an actual conversation, if it I think if it says any like if it's a honest, innocent conversation, I wouldn't mind posting it publicly. If it's somebody saying, hey, thank you. Okay, you have a great day. You have a great day too, this and that. But to record a conversation just to ridicule somebody or to get a rise out of somebody by saying, hey, look at what this dude said to me. I don't like that. That's entrapment. Because once they get in your car, they, they consider it a private ride. It's a private ride. They don't think they're being recorded. If they are being recorded on camera or something like that, you just let them know, y'all got a camera running or something like that. But me, I don't run cameras like that. So if I was to record somebody and I was to pick up something they were saying that I thought would probably ridicule them or anything, I would just delete it. I wouldn't post it because I'm not shitty like that. I'm not somebody that's going to do that to somebody. Be like, oh, man, look at what this dude said. Oh, look at what this lady said. People that do that, they're attention hounds. They're, they're trying to ridicule other people to get attention for themselves. And I don't like that shit. I don't like it. I'm not one of those people that's going to do it. Oh, I can go viral by posting what this lady said. I can go viral. No, you don't. Don't do that shit because that's integrity on you. I see motherfuckers do that. I wouldn't even trust being around that person no more because they might be recording you. And I'm like, I wouldn't want to be around somebody like that. Just just on GP, because I could be speaking about something that I think that, you know, from friend to friend or, or homie to homie, whatever. And they're a known recorder to post shit later that you don't even know about. Man, I don't mess with that shit. Like, nope. I wouldn't deal with him. I wouldn't deal with him. What Wes says, Wes says, hey, I'll be listening when I drive working. Now I'm listening, working at home. <laughs> That's right. Hey, and, and I tell you, man, and I was just about to say that. Go, go, Lolo said the same thing. Best channel for rides here. I said, this is a true driver's channel, man. We get in here. We have a good time. We laugh. Thank you, Jamil. I appreciate that, brother. We get out here, man. We have a good time, man. And, and like I said, there's not a lot of channels out there that, that want to hang out like we had the barbecue. Every channel wants to be, and, and it was something I was talking to another driver about the other day, because he was saying he wanted to run a YouTube channel. I'm talking to him in the parking lot. He says, dude, I want to run a YouTube channel. I was like, dude, it is, but you could just run a YouTube channel. But he's like, YouTube channels like gig tubers are like, and I, I even wrote a note. It says gig tubing is like gang tubing. It's like, as soon as you start a, a YouTube channel, you can start a YouTube channel by anything, fucking trees, rocks, dogs, whatever. Gig tubing is the only space where if you start a youtube channel it's almost like you got to come in and be indoctrinated or inducted into something like you come in and other people are like well did you talk to this channel first before you did that i don't know that fucking channel i don't know them people i just do what i do well they got more subs than you so you should probably talk to them first i gotta fucking talk to them i don't even know them gig space is the only space where people think you gotta come in and ask for permission on shit because somebody else got more subs than you I ain't never seen no shit like this in my life. I'm like, I can have a Cocker Spaniel channel. Ain't nobody going to say shit to me. Other Cocker Spaniel people might be like, oh, that's a cool dog. But then when you do gig work, it's almost like people want you to like come in and treat other motherfuckers like royalty that you don't even know all because they got subs. I'm like, I could buy 500,000 subs today. I could buy 500,000 subs on the internet and that don't make me no better than anybody else's because I got a lot of subs. I don't mean shit. I just got a lot of subs. That's it. But I do my shit organically. I speak to people. I talk to people. We hang out. We laugh. We form community. We know each other's name, where we drive and shit like that. That's what we do. What up, Bigfoot Dasher? So when I come in and I talk to people, you know, when I tell people about creating channels for themselves, I tell them, man, hey, dude, there's 7 billion motherfuckers on this planet. Man, thank you, Adolphus. I appreciate that, brother. Keep up the great work. Will do, brother. Will do. And I tell people, man, there's 7 billion people on this planet. There's so many there's so many angles you can use with a, a ride share channel or a YouTube channel in general. You will reach somebody. You will reach the people you want to reach doing what you want to do. It's OK to have a content. It's OK to create a channel. There is no competition between channels. That's like saying, you know, ESPN is in competition with Fox Sports all the time. This and that. So one of them should just disappear. No, 
have different content. That's why, you know, I was just selling ride flow. You know, have you should run your channel like, you know, how your voice sounds. Run it like a news channel because, I mean, you sound like the helicopter guy. I could watch his videos all day laughing, listen to how he's talking about traffic and ride share and stuff. Shit was cool, man. And I'm like, man, what is this? I hate that you told your customer not to eat in your car, but they still continue eating and left garbage in your car. <laughs> yeah, real shit. I hate that, man. I was hot. I was hot about that. I was hot. Thank you, Jamil. I appreciate that, brother. With the big one, I love that. 11-11, the big ones, baby, the big ones. Man, and that's what I do. You know, I try to tell people, like, you know, if you want to create a ride share channel, you have to do it how you do ride share. Don't look at no other channel. Don't think you need permission to do anything you're doing. Start your channel. This is YouTube gave you a password and gave you a username, gave you a platform. You ain't got to answer to nobody. Like, if you want to ask for advice or somebody ask for advice, this and that, that's cool. But there is no motherfucking royalty. And, and it's cool when people say, hey, man, this guy's a leader in ride share. It's cool. It's, it, it's cute. It's fucking cute. I'll tell you that it's cute. But you got to pay the bills at your house. And unless somebody's paying the bills at your house, they really don't have much to say about you. They really don't. They can't tell you how to drive or how to ride, run your YouTube channel, how to run your TikTok channel, your Instagram page. They can't tell you shit because this is how you have to do it, how you want to do it. Oh, yeah, that declineology. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you got to decline them trash offers, man. Don't don't do it. Throw that shit in the trash. Like, nope, doubt it. And that and that's another concept when I tell people, you know, when I was talking about big money energy, I think of big money. Big money is, is like community money. It's like whole money, not just my own bank account, my own pockets. But I want all drivers to have money. I got to think bigger. And if we think bigger, decline trash rides, like what you said, if we get rid of trash rides and everything, then the income, the fares start going up. We start getting more money all around. And that's that's big money energy right there. Let's make everybody eat right. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, Dante, it's, I got that one online. It's on what? JMBTs.com. I got it on one of my uh, things right there. But yeah, I'll, I'll end up uh, posting the, uh, the uh, website in the chat pretty soon. But it's JMBTs.com is, is the actual website that I sell old shirts on. I've sent a few of them out already. So I know people out there wearing them, man. So that's cool. What up, WABZ07? What's good? Mr. Gambit. Mr. Gambit. Yeah, that's right, man. Cherry pick is the only way. Got to eat them crusty, dusty donuts. Why you doing it? <laughs> hey, I'm so I'm sitting there chatting with Juan Vargas in the parking lot, and I got my little lunchbox in the back. So I pop that mother open. I'm like, hey, man, you want one of these little crusty dusties in here? He was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> He know, boy, I be popping the motherfuckers out, eating them right on the spot. We chatting and laughing. I be like fudge rounds and everything, man. We cracking up. Oh, Adolphus, I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate that, man. Hey, I try, man, because like I said, I keep it 100 on my channel. I want the success of everybody. I'm not, I told people, I'm not a greedy driver. I don't want all the money. I just want enough to pay my bills. I never want to claim I'm the best driver. I don't like drivers like that. Robert Reese said, hey, I got my podcast up here on YouTube. All my interviews, one podcast, every single boardroom is a pie. Smart. Smart. Because I tell everybody, podcasting is what YouTube wants to do. They want to move everybody to podcasting. They still do videos. Like in my podcast, you can listen to the uh, podcast. You can find it and listen to it as you drive, and even, even though it's a video. But like I was saying, I tell everybody, man, some of these channels, they like to go around, oh, I'm the greatest, I'm the best, I'm this, I'm that. They love to pump themselves up. And that's cool if it helps them drive better. Pump yourself up. But I'm trying to get that community pumped up, man. If we all fucking make money, imagine if the fares went, the base went from $3 a fare up to like $6 a fare because we all start like decline all the bullshit. That's big money energy. I'm not worried about just my pockets. We need the whole community. We need these apps to be like, you know what? These drivers ain't taking these rides, man. Move, move that shit up then. Base fare is now $6 instead of three. Move that shit up some. That's big money energy. When you want to move a whole shift, that's shifting. And the only way we can get that shit is if we be, you know, if we be unified together and everything. What is this? I love it when Jeff does the auctioneer voice when Trash Rod starts popping. <laughs> Goku. And I was doing it like 355. You want this ride right here? 355. I don't think I want that ride. That motherfucker right there is dirty. The motherfucker. Oh, who wants that motherfucker ride right there with a goddamn surge on it? Oh, shit. Pet. Uber pet real quick. <laughs> I'll be moving that shit fast as hell. Be cracking up like a motherfucker. What do you say? This is. I say that because it does Mr. Algo and what normal drivers are trying to do. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And that's what we got to do, man. As a community, we got to we got to stand for each other. Like I said, I met a driver last night from uh, Albuquerque. His name's Richard. Richard Betty. Now, 
And he comes down here to work a lot. He's from like Albuquerque, but he comes down here to work quite a bit. And I told him, well, in this community, man, we, we try to look out for each other. At least I do. And the drivers I deal with do. There are some shithead drivers out there who, you know, they don't want to tell nobody a secret. I got a secret spot. Whatever, motherfucker, whatever. It's like, to me, ain't no secrets in ride share. The, the secrets are exposed when you find out who's getting evicted. When you see motherfuckers getting evicted, okay, you ain't got no friends in ride share. Because you should be making money right now. You shouldn't be getting evicted. If you're getting evicted, that means you were withholding information and you couldn't bond with nobody. Because once you bond with other drivers and y'all community together and shit like that, it's, it's hard to not make money. Motherfuckers is telling us how to use Uber Pet, telling us how to get reservations. <laughs> Look at Jamil saying crusty, dusty, exact. <laughs> Do you want this crusty? It's $299, $19. You want a half price, 50% off that guy? He's <laughs> like, no, sold to this crusty, dusty motherfucker over there. Man. And that's what it is, though. Hey, Adolphus, brother, it's real shit, man. I'll be trying, man. I'll be trying. And I tell everybody, you know, if, if we all help each other out and pull each other up, each driver can use the strategies that we all are using and we keep each other paid because I don't drive 24 hours a day. I drive five, six, seven. That's all I'm staying out there because there's other drivers doing shifts and everybody's getting money and everybody's doing shit. And if you got every driver online at the same time, there's not going to be any surge out there. So everybody can't be online at the same time. So I turn my apps off a lot. Go, go, logo. Just says, may you explain the Uber pet strategy with the surge? Uber pet's kind of tricky, man. Uber pet's trying to see. This is how Uber pet works. And I told people this. All right. What you do, you don't get a lot of requests on Uber pet. Frank got caught the other day and had to go pick up a chihuahua. <laughs> he was using Uber pet. But this is what happens. So if you're on Uber X, you're going to get a whole bunch of requests just sent to you. It, they just send them to you like nonstop. They send you requests all the time. So you don't have a breather. You can't get a breather. So what you do is you say, you know what? I'm going to put it on Uber Pet. You're not going to get no requests. Why you're not getting requests? You got time to move now. You can drive down the street. You can pick up a surge. And when you got that surge locked in, you pick up a $14, $15 surge locked in. You could be like, cool. Now I'm going to go buy ASU real quick. Turn it over to Uber X. Now you're going to be getting requests back down the pipe again. But on Uber Pet, you're moving. You can move around because there's not a lot of people going to get pet, especially in the nighttime. You might get like one Uber Pet every two or three weeks. So Uber Pet's pretty. That, that's your movement right there. You can trap a surge and everything with an Uber Pet and you can take off yeah, and use last ride every time. That way, if you end up in a surge, you can trap that surge. But if you don't use last ride, they're going to be throwing you rides the whole time. And you're going to be like, man, I accepted this ride. I had no idea I was a block away from a nine dollar surge because I accepted this damn ride. So you got to use that last ride. Lock that in. People get out the car. The map lights up red. You'll be sitting in gray. But the red is a block down because you use last ride. Put it on Uber Pet. Go around the corner and grab it real quick. And Uber Pet, like I said, it, it just helps you move. It's a mobility part of the app right there. And you and like I said, I'll be on Lux. I'm on Lux going like I was picking somebody up on a Lux ride, but I was passing through a, a $24 surge for Uber. So I put it on Pet and grabbed $17. <laughs> and I left that shit on pet. So by the time I finished with my Lux ride, I had $17 sitting on Uber ready to be used at any moment. All I had to do was just turn it on Uber X. Bam. Now I can go use my $17 I found. And that's what it is. Jamil said, my AR is 27% and making more with Surge and Cherry Pick. I'm telling you, Jamil, man. And, and then with you, you got the big G. So you can go do more airport. Like I said, I tried to show everybody my trunk with the little ass lunchbox. I mean, when you can do airport, man. And you can lock in surge, dude. You you're gonna make a killing. You're gonna make a killing. Cause you done locked in surge. You got an airport ride picking up somebody from Sky Harbor or either Mesa, and you're taking them like 11 miles with a $10 surge. That's almost like a $30 ride right there. So it's like that's all you gotta do. Juan Vargas is locked in. What's good, brother? What's good? Oh, no problem, go go. No problem. And what uh Dante said, yep, the same. Five, six hours overnight is my limit. Those early morning airport rides to Vegas is good surge money. Yeah, and you see that in a lot of my videos. My last few rides are always airport because I live by the airport. And they're good because they're reservations. So I got a reservation this morning, like four miles. It's like right around the corner from my house to the airport for like 19 bucks. I get all those early morning airport reservations, knock those out, be done. Done before the, the clock flips, I'm, I'm back out, back to the house. But Juan, come up these is they had a $14 surge locked in with Uber Pet while I was dropping off a Lux ride. After the ride ended, I went back on Uber and log they logged me off. When I logged in, the surge was still active. <laughs> good, good. And they, that's the thing, man. They're mad. So Go Go Logo says the Tesla Y considered as black. You know what? Juan Vargas, the comment right above you, 
that dude knows all about the Tesla tiers when it comes to like black and Lux and all that because he's got the Model S. He's the one in the last video I dropped. That's why I'm Vargas right there. So he knows which Tesla to buy to do what tiers, how to do it. Man, it's crazy. It's crazy. And I'm like, I was wanting that Model S and I'm like, okay, the Model I, Y makes more money, but the S is just a nicer car to me. I like that shit. Like, woo, man. Yeah, the Lux is considered Lux Black. Yep. Oh, yeah. And see, the thing, Thomas, for those airport surges, I tell people like this. If you have a surge locked in and then you're like and I show it on my videos a lot, too. If you got a surge locked in and then your reservation starts and it sends you. Yep. You get that money because the first time I dropped the video showing it, everybody's like, no, nah, man, you don't get that. You don't get that. Victor told me about it. Victor was like, dude, and he's a driver on the channel. Dude, He was like, dude, you can get all those surges. You're losing surges for no reason. So the moment I did it and it worked, I showed everybody that it worked. It's, it's part of the terms of service. And it says like, you know, insufficient surge or whatever when they give it to you. Incorrect surge amount or something like that. So when I did it and showed people, they were still like, no, man, you you robbing the system. You can't be doing that. You robbing the system. No, you, no, I'm not. It. This is how the apps work. And a lot of drivers out there know how these apps work. That's why I listen to the chat. I listen to the comments. I go through all my comments. There's information in there, man. <laughs> Adolphus said Jeff's mobile comedy club is coming. Hey, we're gonna ride around in a big old bus, have be serving alcohol and everything. A big old bus is like, hey, this is the comedy bus. We just picking up people on the way to where they're going. They're gonna be like, Yeah, we ain't know it was already people on here. Yeah, we just some people don't get off at they stop, they just keep riding. <laughs> yep, that's it. Silver Fox, man. That surge on schedule ride 100 percent right. Uh-oh, ten dollar tip just came in on, on Lyft from some ladies I gave. A four star two from earlier, but I had faith in my sisters. We was vibing. Yeah, you know you can go back in and you can five star them now, Logan. So you can go back in and do go back to rate passenger and open it back up and give them a five star. Leave them a little comment. I do that sometimes. If somebody don't tip me, then I'm like, I'll go back and I'll do something with it. But if they do tip me, oh my thing is kind of lagging a little bit. Uh oh, I saw the camera kind of lagging a little bit. I was like, oh, am I lagging? Yeah, you almost gave him. A, no, I almost gave him. Okay, okay. I almost gave him a four star. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's the thing, man. And and I like to leave comments on people's stuff, man. I leave comments so they know, you know, I'm paying attention to you guys, you riders, man. We looking out for y'all. Y'all looking out for us. We looking out for y'all. We'll be there to pick y'all up, man. What is a what's up with the Uber charging surge prices to guests but paying drivers base fare? Only the real stay real. Hey, you know what? When they do that. Your customer, like I said, I don't know if they're putting you in a surge zone or whatever. Like when I'm they want to give me an airport ride and I see a lot of people at the airport and I'm sitting downtown. I won't take it unless they give me the airport surge that's sitting down there because I know the customers are paying surge pricing. They can't do us like that. That's unfair for them to charge surge pricing, but find a driver that they can make a whole lot of money off of. They're like, oh, just use that driver. That driver ain't got no surge. That shit's wrong to me. I don't like that. I don't like that. And they don't need to do that. If, if a rider is paying surge pricing, that driver needs to get surge pay. But they'd be like, well, since you wasn't in the surge zone, well, don't use me then. If I'm not in the surge zone, then don't use me. Go find it. And that's why I'd be like, use another driver. Use a driver at the airport. And I say that shit in my videos. No, use a driver at the airport because them people been sitting there. Them drivers been sitting there waiting to get that money. They got a good ass surge on their phone. They've been waiting to use it. And the app wants to circumvent that shit and use me with no surge sitting somewhere else. I'm like, nope, pay them fucking drivers down there. Pay up, pay up. They've been sitting there waiting on this ride. That's why I don't I don't infringe on other people's money. I think big money, man. I think of other drivers. I think of a lot of shit when I'm driving. I think of a lot of people because it ain't just about my pockets. It's about all of us making the best money we can. We got to stand up. We don't need to ask these motherfuckers for no raise. They're going to give us, they only want to pay $17. So we just got to go out and take what we can, man. Use the right strategies. Get this money. Help each other out. What Damien say? They could keep riding, but if the money is low and their attitude is below the few that's is getting out of my car, and say car with me having the right to violent anything I say will be against you. <laughs> you have a right to be violent. Anything I say will or do will be against you. That's funny shit. That's funny shit. Yeah, man. What Juan Vargas say? Board and AZ, have you considered the Model Y? Oh, he's gonna he's gonna tell you about that Model Y. Juan, man, he'll he knows because he's got both. He's got a Y and he's got an S. So he can tell you about each car. There's nothing he don't know about these cars. I'm like, this dude is too sharp, man. 
So, and I keep telling them, man, dude, when you gonna get your YouTube channel up and going, dude? Because there's a lot of people need to know shit. Like I said, I don't know shit about electric cars. If you just get the channel up and going, you got the Y and you got the S, you can go through all this shit, man. And you can help people make decisions to make this money. And like I said, and it's not just ride share drivers. There's other people out there that don't do ride share that want to, we use these cars at a high level, a very high average person going to drive their shit 15,000 miles a year. We do that shit in a couple of months. So a ride share driver putting their car on the internet and doing a review on it, man, it should be car companies paying each one of us every month. Can you do me a favor and do a review on this car? Can you review these tires? Can you review these brakes? Man, there's so many companies out there should be using ride share drivers. Give us, just find any random driver in a Tahoe. Hey, we'll give you an extra $500 a month forever if you just review this Tahoe on, on a video. We'll give you $500 a month. Drivers out there with Altimas, drivers out there with Priuses, Mercedes, Teslas. Every car company need to be looking up ride share drivers. Let me get your phone number, man. I need to get you to uh, go through your whole car. Tell everybody how you you driving this car, like, you know, 60,000 miles a year. Tell them all about it. We're the proof for all this engineering. We're the proof. And these car companies is missing the boat, man. They missing the boat. Because I'm like, y'all could be making a killing off. We're the best salespeople for these cars that we got. We're the best. We use them at a high volume. And these car companies ain't even calling us. These raggedy motherfuckers, they don't even. I'm like, y'all don't even see. Y'all sitting there using, you know, Biff. And fucking Chad at the damn dealership to try to sell a car that we know all about. Just pay us. We'll sell that shit on a YouTube video. Motherfuckers be like, dude, I saw this video. I'm going to buy this car. <laughs> yeah, he could put a team in place to get paid, man. The Prius Mafia. Real shit, real shit. See, I just seen the ride share guy video on N-Drive. I swear if they bring that, the Phoenix is game over for the big two. Oh, yeah. If they bring N-Drive... They got hum out here already, but hum don't got nights. See, Thomas, hum is only a daytime thing. If hum had nights, everybody would be on hum. Everybody would be on it because they they give you 100 percent of your money or whatever like that. And for right, I think it's like 20, 30 dollars a month. I don't even know what it is because I got grandfathered in back when it was free. But it's a real small fare you pay. You pay one fare instead of us being charged at 50 percent of whatever the fare is every damn fare. I mean, we're paying thousand dollars, you know, six hundred dollars a day. We're paying six hundred dollars a day to these apps. If we make five hundred, they making six hundred, and we paying that shit every day, every day. Imagine if you work in five days, paying you know four or five hundred dollars. That's two G's, two G's you giving to these companies when well, you could be just giving somebody a hundred dollars a month and being done, and you keep all the money, man. Yeah, the Silver Fox said I constantly have to explain Toyota hybrids to people. Yeah, and I'm telling you, man, we could. We're the best salesmen out there. We are the best salesmen for these cars. And these car companies, you know what? The reason why they can't sell cars, because they're not using the main consumers of these cars. We're the ones who actually know how to drive. We know every bell and whistle, knock, tick, everything about these cars. And ain't no car company trying to contact any ride share driver. They should be like, we need 10,000 ride share drivers to make a video about each car, whatever it is. Man. And they, they could fire every salesman on their damn sales force. Somebody come looking for a car, be like, sit at this table, look at this video. This is a whole panel of ride share drivers who use all the cars that we got on our lot. They can tell you a little bit about each car. And they'll just sit at the dealership watching ride share videos. Drivers talk about their car, talk about how many miles they put on it, the amenities the car got, everything else. The ride share driver could be a car salesman through YouTube videos, and they just have the TV at the damn dealership. People like, I went to the dealership and just watched YouTube videos all day, and I figured out which car to buy. How you know? Because the ride share driver, I, I followed his advice, and I got this car because this is what I needed for. The BMW had a sucky-ass trunk, and I'm trying to do some heavy loading. So for me to look at the BMWs is kind of whack for what I need, but a salesperson is going to sell you a BMW so they can get the commission on it. But you looking at videos, you know. The trunk sucks, and I need trunk space. Real shit, man. What was that? Chinchilla said, I had a to uh model three got rid of it got a lexus es 350 so many issues with the tesla uh oh the screen went up man i hate when that happens oh i can't get the screen to drop back up oh there you go yeah and then with the tesla plus it was poorly built i got a 2015 acro sedan for ride share yes yeah, sometimes you got to do that shit you got to do it sometimes now i got this damn thing stuck down here i hate that oh there we go all right 
Yeah, make sure you get your cut, Jeff, for this idea. Beauty was that. Make sure you get your cut, Jeff, for the idea. Hey, I'm a businessman at heart. Even when I was working casino, all the marketing people used to be like, dude, why aren't you working in here with us? Why are you sitting over there in accounting, man? You always got some marketing ideas. I was like, dude, I just, I think of, you know, utility. I think of efficiency. People are, are doing double the duty. And I'm like, you guys are hiring salespeople to sell cars that they don't even know shit about. You just found some guy who don't even drive this car to try to sell this car at a dealership. Why don't you just use a rational driver to sell that car? They use this motherfucker all the, just like, hey man, make a video. We're going to pay you to make a video about your car for every car that sells through your video. We're going to send you a commission or whatever. Rasha driver might be like, dude, I'm getting like an extra $3,000 a month off of my videos selling cars at dealerships, man. Rasha drivers are, they're a hidden gem in the community, man. We know a lot of shit about these vehicles and ain't nobody, they think we low skill. We don't know shit, this and that. We know a lot. We know a lot. And people are overlooking the resource of a ride share driver. We know so much shit about these cars. You ain't even got to hire salespeople. Just ask the driver. Have four, say, man, I want you to do a Challenger. I want you to do a, you know, a damn Tahoe, do a Tesla. Guaranteed. Ride share drivers know these cars better than any salesman out there. Guaranteed. Salesman, oh, I know everything about, no, you don't. Yeah. High fact said, the craziest thing is you only need to see what the car is actually able to do during high process, high speed chases. Yeah, able to die during high speed chases. Yeah. The Adolphus says, make sure you get your cut on every sale. That's funny shit. Every single sale. Get your cut, damn it. Get your cut. And when it says, yep, mine paid for itself 10 times. It was a good purchase. I don't care how uncool they're supposed to be. I still drive it more than my new car. Say, so have we heard anything on the taxi drivers taking Uber rides yet out here in the Phoenix area? No, I haven't heard yet of taxi drivers doing it yet. I haven't heard yet. But they they probably out here doing it right now. They're doing it right now. So it's like, because I know a few people out here who have taken cars. They've said, you know, they summoned a, a taxi and they've gotten an Uber. But that was like last year. That wasn't even this year. I see VIP taxi everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. Oh, uh, Gogo said, thoughts on the BMW i8. Tempted to buy one. I ain't never even been in an i8. I ain't even been. I see them all the time. I ain't even been in one. Them cars are sick, though. I love how they look, man. I love it. Them things are nice. <laughs> Mike said, you got room in that trunk for my bag? Yeah, let me get my lunch bags out of here. Get that lunch box out of here. I want you to smash my peanut butter and jelly sandwich, motherfucker. Your luggage just smashed my sandwich. <laughs> trunk little as a motherfucker. It's like, what the hell you put in there, man? I got some fucking peanut butter sandwiches back there. It's like, your trunk little as a motherfucker. <laughs> that's just funny as hell it's real shit that's real shit though man yeah check your car invest in some seat covers because people jump in with buttons on their clothes they jump in with ink pens and shit in their pockets i got seat covers in the garage and i'm gonna end up putting in the uh, back of the car pretty soon i ordered them probably like a month ago i just got to figure out how to get them on there but they're made for that car but like i said i'm over you right running at, at altitude you gotta because people jump in Buttons on their seats and shit, zippers on their clothes, and they will rip a hole in the seat. And Uber be like, "It's not us. You got to deal with that, man. You got to deal with it." Yep, floor mats. Like I said, I keep my leather floor mats. And then I saw Juan Vargas. He's got these rubberized mats. Perfect, because you can wipe shit up with those, man. Like you do not want carpets, because with carpets, the odor sticks into them. People be in a backyard walking through dog pee and shit. Then they come get in your car after they just walk through their backyard after the dog done pee. Now they got dog pee in your floorboards and you riding around like, man, what's that smell? Carpets, man. That's why I wipe my shit down. Probably every probably four or five rides, I wipe my shit out. Yeah. They board and I need a gym membership. I seriously need to get in shape so I can do delivered. I'm going to tell you what, go to a dog park and just start walking around in circles. You're going to have a whole bunch of dogs just walking with you. That's going to be your exercise for the day. Say, like, what you do today? Just walk in circles with all these dogs at the dog park. <laughs> Man, that's funny shit. So what Damon say, the 2016 Honda I use for DoorDash and Uber Eats Friday through Sunday on my W-2 job to get around. The 2020 cars for traveling only. Yeah, I got a couple of cars like that too, man. I don't use a ride share. They'll be completely emergency for ride share if I have to. But ride share, it's rough on cars, man. Like I said, it'll tear up your whole fucking front end. You'll bust tie rods, rims. You get your door ding, rock chips, windshields. Man, ride share is not. And we got to use profits to fix these vehicles. Because if you roll up on somebody with a busted ass windshield and they go, well, how come you can't get your windshield fixed? Well, Uber ain't paying enough. I'm only getting paid a dollar a mile. No, you just probably taking a dollar a mile. That's what it is. You can afford it, but you got to go for higher dollars per mile. 
So if we don't go for profits, these cars are going to take us in the ground. We ain't going to be able to afford rent, food, none of that shit. So we got to go for profits. And that's why I like driving the way we drive. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't get it. Oh, y'all only driving like five hours a day. Y'all only driving six hours a day. But but we driving five, six hours a day, making the same amount of people that driving like 10 hours a day. We just using half the time, half the miles, making the same amount of money. Is that not some smart shit or what? <laughs> it's like we ain't got to drive 100,000 miles. We could just drive like 40,000, 50,000. We good. We don't have to drive. You know, if we, we want to make $100,000 a year and I'll say I want to drive 30,000 miles, I need to average like $3 a mile. That's it. If I could just average $3 a mile, I'm good. I'm good. But it means you got to kick out a lot of trash. You got to start getting rid of shit and go for anything $4 and up, $5 and up. Because every once in a while, you're going to have to take a dollar a mile ride, $2 ride. And it's going to pull your average down. So you got to do the best you can to keep that average up by taking higher dollar per miles. Yeah, man. Juan, man, I'm telling you, I am on. I got, what, two wind chills on the Jeep, two on the Audi, two on the Escalade. I'm on my second. No. Third. I think I'm on my third. I'm on my third windshield because I had one that was brand new. So I had a brand new windshield when I bought the uh, Beamer, drove it, it got chipped. They put another one in. Within a week, it got chipped. This is my third windshield on that. And I only been driving this car for not even two years. Three windshields, man. Shit's crazy because it was the new one. Then the one I bought was like fourteen hundred for the uh, the first windshield I bought was fourteen hundred for the Beamer. It paid the insurance covered it. So the second one, they went with an aftermarket windshield that was like eleven hundred. So they saved three hundred dollars on the second one with an aftermarket windshield. But it was like, man, it. I know that these windshields be killing them in Arizona because we got rocks in everybody's tires, man. And they hit that windshield, and I know my insurance be like another one. I'm like, hey, man, I pay y'all pretty well, man. I pay y'all pretty high premium. So y'all gotta cover this shit. I pay y'all that money for a reason. It's like, yup. Oh, what Thomas say? Hey, Uber, do you bother with the Uber Pro levels? I was thinking of going for gold, but unsure if it's worth the effort. Man, I've been blue for so long. Shit, I wouldn't even know what happened if I got gold. I'd be like, oh shit, let me run down to Circle K, go get me a motherfucking crusty dusty for free. <laughs> I don't know what you even get with gold. I have no idea. <laughs> they probably call you up. Make sure you get a free donut every day. Hell yeah, I'm gold, baby. I ain't got to pay that $2.19 cent. You got to take a whole lot of dollar a mile rides to get that shit. <laughs> What Robert Reese say, I used to hate those smelly people that fall asleep and drools all over the place. Oh, man. I picked up two people like that the other day, bro. And it was like a 15 minute ride. They fell asleep that damn fast. We was in the car. I mean, I turned around. They was knocked the fuck out. I'm like, because we was chatting and shit when they first got in. They just got quiet. So I'm thinking they just probably talking to each other. Don't want, man, both of these motherfuckers were knocked out. Smelling like molasses and shit. I'm like, these motherfuckers stink like a motherfucker. They've been walking somewhere. <laughs> they smelling like goddamn fucking warm molasses and shit smelling up my backseat so i had to clean my seats up for the next people motherfuckers just back there knocked out in some dirty clothes <laughs> i'm like how the fuck are you sleeping in dirty clothes man yeah well he loves it. i just replaced the o2 central on my toyota avalon yeah you got to replace this shit man we we forever fixing these cars we forever fixing these cars and if we ain't making a profits you know what i'm saying all the money's gonna be used to keep throwing into these damn cars and the shit happens man $80 here, $70 here, $210 here, $1,100 here. That profit has to come from somewhere. It's got to come from somewhere. So if these people ain't driving smart, they out here, oh, I just got to stay busy. I'm going to be taking these dollar mile rides. Don't do that shit. Don't do it. Don't fall victim of that, man. Well, I'm thinking of getting a minivan to do XL. X is annoying when you have four riders freeloading. Uh, that's why I, I haven't done a three dollar ride in a long time. Three, four dollars because I'm I'm over the freeload and shit. I'm over it. I'm over it. And they sitting there. Look at that. New tail light last week. Eighty five dollars. Yeah. But chinchilla, I'm over that shit because I'm tired of people, you know, paying that that one little four five dollars. They probably pay eight bucks and we get three dollars out of it. But they got four of their damn friends riding around and shit. And they ain't leaving no tip. I don't like that shit, man. I don't like that. So I just stopped taking low dollars. I'm like, nope, especially when it's by ASU. Because you know what they're going to do. They got four people. They're trying to get to the, the frat house for on a $3 damn ride. Decline that shit. Nope, not doing it. Not doing it. And what Uber needs to do, is, like I said, we need to be paid per rider. If we could be paid per rider, we doing good. But the fact that, you know, they're they're not charged. They're charging like the main account holder and everybody else can just freeload and bank off that. And it's funny because I was going through my cash app the other day. And I see how other people do payments, like they're paying each other back and forth. 
And one of them said, one lady was like paying her friend. She said something about a portion of Uber or something like that on her thing. So I can see that they're paying each other back and forth for the rides to each other. But the driver ain't getting none of that fucking money. So it's like, if y'all willing to pay and forth back and forth each other and do all this shit back and forth, why don't y'all just pay the driver straight up? Just pay the driver straight up. That's the easiest way to do it. And be like, hey, it's four of us. We know you ain't going to get shit but three or four dollars. How about we just give you 15 bucks to take all four of us? That's an easier deal right there. Do it like that. But the way that they're doing it, they're not doing it right. They're not doing it right. And I don't like that shit. They're sitting there, you know, everybody's paying Uber and they're throwing all these people in our cars and that shit just ain't cool. I don't like that shit. Taxes here charge one or two. Yeah. And we should be getting the same thing. Charge a dollar or two for each passenger. If we're getting a dollar or two for extra passengers, I wouldn't mind because, you know, that's up to, you know, an extra six dollars per ride for the three people sitting in the back. You're getting an extra six bucks. And it's only like maybe a mile or two. But you turn around instead of a three, four dollar trip, you're getting ten, eleven dollars for a trip. Plus they tip, you know, five dollars. You're getting fifteen dollars for two miles. You're getting seven fifty a mile. So you'll be willing to do that all day. But you're not doing three dollars a mile all day. You're not doing that. Not three dollars a mile all day. You ain't doing that. Yeah. Was it them, them low dollar rides don't be worth the pay? That's right, Tuck, man. It's not worth it. They're not worth it. And for the damage and everything that you're getting done in your car, the trash that they're leaving in your car, all the shit that's going on in your car, it ain't worth the money. And you got to sit there, get offline, contact support. Hey, they left dirt and dust and sand all in the back of my car. They left some wrappers in the back of my car. They might give you $25. They might give you 50 Who knows? But it took you like an hour going back and forth with them just to get that, sending pictures, screwing around with them. When you could have probably made 60 bucks at the concert, but yet you sitting there dealing with support. It's like, man, man. And that's why I don't like that shit, man. I don't like that. I had a woman take her sandals off and put her feet on my seats. I had to cut that. out. <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. You ain't about to put your feet on my, like, no, nah, you ain't at home. No. Show some respect. Keep your feet on the floor. Keep your feet on the floor. Oh, Board and AZ just said, you know what? Nicole hit me up. North in the Valley, Nicole, she hit me up the other day. And this is, and Board and AZ said the same thing. What do you think about this new BS? Uber expects to return packages for people. Now, I saw that. It said return a package for as low as $3. So if they're paying a delivery fee of $3, that means we're getting maybe $2 out of it. Tops. $2 to go pick up a package, return a package. Two bucks. Now, we already know Uber Eats be sending $2 orders, $1.85 orders, base fare, $0.97. Cent. They be doing shit like that all the time. And then they're going to turn around and say, we're going to have you guys pick up packages now. No, no. Because they just try to hit me with a package. It was like something like 30, 40 miles. I had a $12 surge, and it was giving me $24 total. So it was $12 for almost 30 miles is what they was paying me to do a delivery. If I didn't have that surge, that's what it would have been. Then it showed $24 as I had the surge. I said, like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing no $12 for no th almost 30 miles of driving. No, forget that. Nope. But that's what they do. And a lot of these drivers know the hack. They say, hey, it's going to be a package. So by the time you get there, they could be like, okay, you was going to take the package, but I think I'm just going to go with you anyways. I'm going to ride down with you. I'll take the package. So they're getting a free ride at package price. They get a free ride at package price. Ain't nobody doing that shit, man. No, no, you can't do that. <laughs> Zig said, I once had a woman change shirts in my back seat. She walked to the car in a t-shirt, walked down a spaghetti strap shirt with no bra strap showing. Man, Zig, you should have had the camera going, man. That was your content right there. Change clothes. <laughs> like, man, man. Yeah, Thomas Haney said that shit. Hey, we need to be paid right. They clowned if they think we're going to do that. Nope. Ain't nobody taking no packages. Nope. Hell no. And Chinchilla says, speaking of Connect, I got a ping for a 30-mile package delivery. They only want to give me $13 for it. Them bastards overnight with FedEx, it'll be over 50 Exactly. And like I said, the apps, the apps are, they think that they deserve the money because they feel that they're the service because they're an app. They say, oh, well, we're the service. We're the app. No, you're an interface. You're not the, the service is the people that's actually doing the service. We're the service. Drivers are the service. So service fees should be coming to us. They can have some kind of like app interface fee, like a fucking ride finder fee or something. But the ride finder fee can't be 70 percent of what the damn passenger is paying. That shit don't make sense to me. That shit irritates me, man. Irritates me. This is Uber only fans. 
<laughs> exactly. Only on Zick's page, Uber only fans. Like shit, motherfucker. Zick page have like two million, two million subs in one day. Like what happened, man? People be changing clothes in Zick car all the time, man. This motherfucker got people riding around with no sandals on. You got these feet fetish motherfuckers looking at your video. Hey, man, you got any people riding around with sandals on? <laughs> I love feet. Like, motherfucker, you weird ass motherfucker. Get off my channel. Got anybody changing their shoes? I love feet. Get the fuck off my channel. <laughs> like, you weird ass. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't look back to peak. I don't want them. I don't want them problems. Motherfucker, Zick turned around. Shit. She like, what you see? She tell me what you saw. I didn't see your dragon tattoo. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> you got busted, Zick. You got busted, motherfucker. How you know I got a dragon tattoo? Motherfucker, shit. Yeah, Damien, man. Ain't nobody doing that. Man. And like I said. It, it when it said for as low as three dollars delivery fee for as low as three dollars, that's when I was like, they ain't saying something, and that's how they link people into that shit. They go, oh, delivery fee as low as three dollars. It's like, hold up for a second. You saying as low as? So what is our percentage? Because we know what the delivery fee is. We know all this shit. What are we getting out of this? Because I want to know what the fare is for us. I don't want to know about delivery fees and all that. I want to know what is the percentage of fare we get. Do we get paid time, miles? What if we got to carry? Because I order tires. Motherfucking tires come to my house. What if I got to send tires back? You're going to have somebody put these big ass Jeep tires in their car. Hey, can you go pick up this package? This dude, he's got a, he's got four uh, packages. So when you get there, he's got four packages. You show up and there's some big ass motherfucking Jeep tires sitting out front. Like they sent me the wrong tires. you be like, these motherfuckers giving me $8 to carry these heavy ass motherfucking tires down the street. Yeah, UPS is right down the street. Still a mile, $8. For four big ass Jeep tires back to UPS, you ain't doing that. I don't even like lifting them fucking tires. And you're gonna get $8 for four packages. You be like, ooh, $2 a package, thinking it's a little ass package. <laughs> It'd be all kind of shit shipping do FedEx and UPS. You don't wanna mess with that shit, no. What chinchilla say? Oh, wait a minute. Wayne said, hey, Wayne said, well, what if they made it like NFL Prime, nine dollars a month, and then drivers get 100% of the ride money? I don't know about that. 100% of the ride money. That would be nice. I like that. Yeah, Christmas time, that package delivery, we all got to be careful because Uber going to want to send that crap to drivers. Yep, exactly. And people forever sending shit back and forth. And they're like, no, nah, I'm not doing that lazy because they don't want to wait in line. And it's going to get to the point where we got to wait in line for these people. Kind of like how we do grocery shopping and shit. You got to wait in line. So we get there. We got a long line out the door. We waiting there. We get four bucks. But yet, like 30 minutes done passed. You're getting $8 an hour to go one mile, but it's taking you 30 minutes to do that shit. Like, no, I'm cool on that shit. Tuck Tuck said, no, I'm cool on that shit. <laughs> That's real shit. I'm cool on that shit. I ain't doing it, man. Yeah, I'm not doing connect either, man. Hey, Robert Reese, a lot of us, we, we don't even do connect. When I first started driving, I was doing connect because I thought it was like, oh, man, this is pretty cool. I wasn't banking on time, miles and all that. I was driving a Jeep. Now, nope, don't even do it. I, don't, I see Connect pop up. I turn it. I turned that shit off on my phone the other day completely, like not doing it. And was it. Am I the only one who's crazy experienced like that? Also, I had a hot older lady, white lady, ask me if it's true what they say about black men. No lie. Once again, she was drunk, so I ignored it. What she say? Is it true what they say about black men? All you motherfuckers credit score is a 400 for real. Like, let me see your credit score. <laughs> like, bitch, you racist motherfuckers. <laughs> Now, I'm just asking, you know, I just want to know if it's true what they say about black men. All you motherfuckers got bad credit or what? Like, y'all looking for people to pay for y'all shit all the time? Like, that's all I keep hearing. No, motherfucker, that's wrong question. Wrong question. <laughs> I know. So I'm not naming names. Like, the hell no. Zick, like, no, that's not what she asked me, dog. She don't want to know about the credit. She want to know where it's headed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shit. Is it true what they say about black men? Could you motherfuckers dance for real? Like, bitch, fuck on the bottom of my car. Like, shit. That ain't what she asked me, Jeff, man. She ain't asked me that. It's true what you say about black men. You motherfuckers all can play basketball. That ain't what she asked me, Jeff. That ain't what she asked me, man. <laughs> 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 Zick, like, shit. Zick ain't saying nothing. I ain't saying nothing, man. I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> That ain't what she asked me, man. You know what she asked me, Jeff. Stop playing with me, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'll be fucking with Zig. Zig cool as a motherfucker, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he be having some crazy shit happening in the car, boy. That motherfucker, 
Like I said, that's that's the tuber driver. That's when I be sitting at the house watching movies and shit with your kids and your wife. <laughs> the tuber driver. Shit. What off the handle said, Rody can be okay. Need the independent gigs, not the corp gigs. Private ones that almost have tips, not so pharmacies, Home Depot. Yeah. And like I said, and with that, you know, if you if you're delivering people shit, like let's say you you got a, somebody just renovating a house, I would rather deliver that because you're going to get more money from that person because they really going to appreciate it and not take a high percentage of it. I'd rather do something like that all day, all day. Yeah. Beauty West says, do you have insurance on disabled falling outside of your car when they get out of your car? No, nah, that's Lyft and Uber better have that because they don't want to send us to these hospitals and we ain't even medically trained people. I mean, we showing up and it's people who's been going to, you know, physical therapists and medical stuff for the past, you know, three decades. I show up and I'm like, I don't know how to do this shit. I'm not a medically trained person. Why am I picking this person up? Because Uber just want to save money. And that's the thing. Uber be billing these insurance companies for these pickups. Lyft, they be billing these insurance companies. Now, most insurance companies are paying top dollar because they have to. They're paying based on standard rates and everything. What we get paid, I guarantee is like probably 20% of what Uber and Lyft got. If we get $13, I guarantee the medical ride for this that insurance covers probably like 80 bucks. And we sitting there getting $13 out of that 80 bucks. And I'm like, man, I just, cause, uh, cause what is a, a ambulance ride? Like a grand or something like that. So people can take an ambulance ride for a grand insurance has to either cover that if they got ambulance rides on the insurance or insurance will say, well, we got a little deal with Uber. We could just pay Uber instead of paying a grand, pay them like a hundred. So we saving 90%. 90% just by using Uber. Uber takes 100 bucks, tells us we got an $8 passenger for you. So Uber keeps 92. That's why I don't do medical trips. Like, no, I see somebody at the hospital, I'll be thinking about it. I'm like, man, I don't know. I don't know. It's like every once in a while, I'll be like, okay, it's late enough. And, and if there's a picture on there, sometimes I know it's probably a nurse or a doctor. So I'll do it because you can see the pictures get there. Yep, nurse getting off work, shit like that. If it's a motherfucking, you know, Henrietta, Margaret, goddamn Hank. Ain't nobody naming no 15-year-old person Hank. Ain't nobody naming nobody that's 25 years old Hank. It's like, motherfucker, Hank is like 90 years old. I ain't big enough. Barbara. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Where's that shit? Barbara. Come pick up Barbara. Oh, man, Barbara's like 90. She's sitting there next to Hank. <laughs> I know it for real. <laughs> Helen. I'm going to go pick up Helen real quick. Gus. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, you you just know when you see certain names on these apps, and that's why hey, Lyft is doing that now. Lyft don't show names because I'll be looking sometimes. Like I'll look and they'll say pickup. It'll say like Walmart. That's it. And I'm like, who am I picking up at Walmart? I have to wait till till I come to a stop. Once I come to a stop, I have to go through, and then I could be like, oh, then I can see the name of the person, but I have to go through the app, like the way bill to see the name because they only say the place now. Because I think a lot of people started canceling based on name. Like they'll see a nickname or they'll see some like three o'clock in the morning, you know, Killer Mike. Like, I'm not picking up Killer Mike at three o'clock in the morning. Oh, man, it's just my nickname. I don't give a fuck. You can walk now. It's like, I ain't got time for that shit, man. Why would you pick up a Killer Mike, Jeff? That is the dumbest shit ever. And it's like, exactly. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> Deborah Ethel Ethel <laughs> If you picking up an Ethel From a fucking Rosalind <laughs> Yeah I got all these names These people were all named in like 1945 All these names are 1945 names Rosalind I swear man Margaret Gertrude Exactly man If, if y'all pick up anybody with these names You know they, they ain't no 1980 baby No 99 baby They, they wasn't born no Who in 1999 named their kid Rosalind Now her name's Gertrude Like man she was born in 1995 You named her Gertrude Yeah named her Gertrude <laughs> Cleophus <laughs> Cleophus I know. Cletus I don't know man They be having some funny ass names out there And that's the thing man And like I said that's why I think they started showing, they stopped showing names because people are just like, you know, they're looking at names and you're going, no, I'm not picking this person up based on the name alone. Helen, Sue, Peabody, last, <laughs> nothing beats Krusty, last name Dusty. 
<laughs> if I pick up a motherfucker named Dusty or some shit, hey, I gotta go pick up Dusty or Rusty. My little brother's name is actually Rusty. That's funny shit. My little brother's real name is Rusty. His name is Rusty Watts. That motherfucker name is Rusty. Because <laughs> my dad's nickname, my dad's name was William Watts, but they used to call him Rusty. That was his nickname, Rusty. So my little brother, when he was born, they named his ass Rusty. They named him my dad's nickname. Ain't that some shit? So I'm talking about Krusty Dusty all the motherfucking time. This motherfucker named Rusty. <laughs> Rusty Wise, what's up, you dusty motherfucker? <laughs> That's fucked up. And I'm just Jeff, motherfucker. What's your name? I'm just Jeff, man. That's it. Jeff. Motherfucker. J-E-F-F. -F. Easy shit. And these motherfuckers still misspelled that shit. J-E-F. How the fuck do you misspell Jeff? It's like J-E-F-F. -F. It's the most easiest. That's like spelling. Like, I'm gonna misspell Joe. J-O-T. Like, motherfucker, that's Jot. That ain't Joe. Why don't we just added the letter? Like, what the fuck? Exactly. These motherfuckers misspelled Jeff. I'm like, and they be talking about minimum wage and shit, man. We need a higher minimum wage. Spell Jeff. J-E-F is like deaf. D-E-F is deaf, right? J-E-F must be Jeff. Nah, motherfucker. Spell meth. M-E-F. No, nah, it's M-E-T-H. That's meth. See, I was testing your motherfucking ass. <laughs> motherfucker spelled meth. M-E-F. He on meth. No, nah, man. M-E-T-H. That was a test. Say. I see folks say cancel trips either by mistake or something of the rider. What's typical cancellation rate, folks? I'm at 7%. I'm at like 33% cancel on uh, Uber, on Lyft. I don't know what the deal is with Lyft, man. I really don't because they say I'm at 0% cancel, but I've canceled some people on Lyft. But it says I'm at 0% cancel rate. But nah, I'm I clearly Uber is like on top of their shit because I'm at like 33% cancels. So I cancel one of the every three rides. But that's because it was just a concert. Without the concert, I would be accepting all these rides. But the problem is, is you can cancel. I didn't know that. <laughs> the problem with those concert rides is that they will give you a ride, but it's down a one-way street or a dead-end street and shit like that. And I'm like, no, I can't do that, man. I can't do that. So I have to cancel it because it's all jammed up traffic. So concerts will screw up your cancels rates bad. Concerts will always kill your cancel rates. Your acceptance rates will be even. It'll it'll be all right. It'll be like normally what you do or whatever. But cancels go through the roof. That's how you can tell when I do events. Because I was at 31% one time because I was doing earlier, earlier events or whatever. Then it went all the way back down to like 12%. I was cool with 12% cancel. Now I'm back up to 33%, higher than what I was. Because I was fucking around Juan Vargas now, driving all these damn concerts. King James now. Hey, man, you going to come do this concert? Is at the talking stick? Yeah, let's go do this concert cancel 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 <laughs> i'm like why am i even here <laughs> i almost get i said i need to get the fuck up out of here i went far north I said, i'm out of here man out of here <laughs> yeah yes yeah, name is i swear people always be butchering people with simple names like this is my friend jeffrey e-r-y or jiffy no nah, motherfucker my name is jeff get it right hey i got a bill my bill comes from cox cable every single month i should find one of these motherfuckers around here my bill I bought this house in 2019 and I got Cox Cable here because when I was in the apartment, I didn't need it. Here I got Cox Cable, high speed internet, all that shit. 2019. Since 2019, even after contacting the motherfuckers, my name on the bill is J E S S. They call me Jess. It's always been that way. And I've said, hey, man, my name is Jeff. I want y'all to put my, because I might need a bill for some shit. They was like, Who's, who the fuck is Jess Watts? It's been like that for four years. I'm like, I gave the fuck up. I don't even contact Cox no more, man. It's like, and somebody said, well, we need to see a bill with your name on it. Here, your name's Jess? No, it's Jeff. Just imagine the S's as F's, because that's what these motherfuckers apparently are doing. I'm like, people just mess my name up on the easiest shit. Motherfuckers, you call me Joe? What up, Joe? I'm like, I said Jeff. Oh, I thought you said Joe. Jeff, Joe. Joe got an O sound to it, motherfucker. I just, I got the world's worst name for a black dude. And then on top of that, I mean, my real, my whole motherfucking name is Jeff Watts. If that's not the whitest shit you've ever heard, motherfucker. Hey, don't make me call my motherfucking homeboy over this bitch. He'll come over and whoop your motherfucking ass. My homeboy buff like a motherfucker. Call him. What's up, man? My name's Jeff Watts. <laughs> oh, I thought you was calling Killer Mike or something. No, man, this is Jeff Watts. God damn it, I'm about to have this motherfucker do my taxes. Oh, fucking nerdy motherfucker. I thought I was about to get beat up. This is Jeff. <laughs> Jeff ain't beat nobody up. This motherfucker's Jeff Watts. I saw him in the spelling bee. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. This is a, <laughs> that was Palo for years. Palo. 
What what the Dolphins say singers on them are my new favorite platform, seniors. Duh. You be driving around seniors hanging out, having a good time. I'm gonna hang out with this senior all day. Love it, love it. BME from now on. That's right, Wayne, man. BME, brother. Big money energy, man. We got to think of everybody in the mix. If, if we really going to do this ride share industry and we really going to look out for each other because it's, it's too many people out there that they are disconnected, disconnected from humanity. They're like NPCs, man. They're really disconnected from humanity. If we all can stick together and become a force that the apps have to deal with it because they want to divide and conquer. That's what they want to do. Divide and conquer. But if we can stay together and we do this shit the right way, like, no, nah, man, everybody do it like this. Like when I was at the concert, man, I saw a lot of black Lux cars out there and they was all standing in front of their shit with taxi on, cash rides on. They all stick together. Black Lux, them big black SUVs, they stick together, man. And I'm like, if if we could all as ride share drivers think bigger, think about big money. Like right now we got little money, you know, $13 a ride, $20 a ride. But imagine the fares going from base fare of like two or three bucks all the way up to like six bucks. That's four dollars extra for every ride across the books. Every ride across the books. That's big money. That's what we need to be. Now, how do we get that though? We got to stick together. We can't be taking these bullshit rides. We can't be doing that because we never gonna have that big money energy. We got to do shit differently, man. <laughs> Your alternate is Jeff Volts. That's my German name, Jeff Volts. Motherfucker, Usain Bolt. <laughs> Hell no. This is Jeff Watts looking for you. You better watch out. Doesn't sound too threatened to see you show up. Then it gets real different. <laughs> Jeff Watts looking for you. Man, I paid the bill. No, you don't understand. That's a different Jeff Watts. This dude, he's like, man, I already paid my bill already. Different Jeff Watts, dog. <laughs> Not your bill collector, Jeff Watts. This is like the gangster Jeff Watts. Oh, Jeff Watts. Yeah, yeah, man. R-E-Y or E-R-Y. No, oh, he's Jeffrey R-E-Y. Oh, man. He, he can whoop some ass, man. That motherfucker R-E-Y. Oh, fuck them R-E-Ys, man. <laughs> <laughs> fucking dirty ass names and shit. <laughs> he said, uh, so I was in school. I was Pedro, Paco, Poncho. <laughs> it was very, very wet. Hey, Pedro, hey, Paco. Motherfucker, my name is not no fucking Paco. Hey, Poncho, my name is not no motherfucking Paco. After a while, you just answered that shit. What? <laughs> say, someone needs to run across the Super Bowl. Mid game with a sign that says, fix the gig apps. Man, that shit will be funny as hell. Hey, man, that would be funny. Motherfucker streak down the thing. Fix the gig apps. <laughs> that would be sick. Hey, it's going to be in Vegas. You know what they say in Vegas, man. Shit be wild out there. You might have to give a motherfucker about five or six shots. It'd be like, dude, we got the sign in the back of the car. You ready? You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> motherfucker stumble over the sign and fucking just roll. You're like, God damn it. This drunk motherfucker done tripped over the sign. We ain't got no more. We only had one. That motherfucker fucked it up. You had one job. <laughs> Uh oh, had a reservation this morning. 4.4 miles to the airport, $26. Managed to screenshot the 275 surge before pickup time. I requested a fair review. Why did they add 1861 surge, 4462? Yep. I don't know why they do. They did me like that once. They got me like, like probably the, one of the last ones I did. I said, man, y'all forgot my $3 and like 50 cents or something weird like that. I said, these motherfuckers add that shit like $18 or something weird. I was like, holy shit. I was like, hell yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. I wouldn't ask for all that, but I'll take all that. Like, man, but normally they just give you what you ask for. I don't know why they bumped it up like that. And even the driver fare went from like $27 and the driver fare went up to like 44 or something dollars. It like jumped the whole fare jump. I'm like, did he really pay more? Or did y'all just like finagle the fucking numbers just to make it look like that? But man, yeah, yeah, man, doc, Arizona got cocks too, man. I don't know. I don't know. So drive Uber XL, took an X ride to the airport. Pastor said to her husband, it's nice not to have luggage on our lap. <laughs> Jimmy Denson. <laughs> hey, the motherfuckers they ain't in that BMW. Because Hey, I've had people have to ride in my Beamer. We'll just keep it in our laps. Okay. Well, I don't put luggage in the front seat, trunk, front seat. Mother got back, some backpack in their fucking lap, dude. When you get an XL, you're going to get there the right way. When you get an Uber X, I don't know. Shit's going to be a little different. You're going to be like, man, we took that motherfucking Uber X. Don't ever do that. Ever take an Uber X to the airport. It's a cheaper price, but man, you're going to ride like you on a train in motherfucking Bangladesh. Everybody stacked on top of everybody and shit. You fall out the motherfucking car when you get to the terminal. Like, damn, where all these people come from? It was all in that Uber X, all of them, with their luggage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. 
This is, oh no, please don't call that name. It's bad enough he wants to be a coach to rip people off, but keep him out of here. <laughs> hey, you see how that works? And that's, I'm telling you, man, I tell people all the time, man, this, and I was saying that shit earlier, gig tubing is like gang tubing now, man. It's like gangs of motherfuckers. And, and it's only in the Roger industry do I find that, in the, the delivering Roger industry. Do you see? And I, it's one thing to say, okay, man, we're going to do a collab. Cool, let's collab. Let's, let's do a project together real quick. You do a project, it's done, it's over with, cool, no problem. But now they got it to where everybody's pages they want everybody pages to link like everybody talk about the same thing or don't you can't get online this time because we're online this time and we're doing our podcast this time so we don't want you doing your podcast this time and you know we don't want you talking about this material because we're covering this material it's like i don't fuck with y'all it's like why y'all asking me this shit like this ain't no goddamn coalition ain't no fucking gang <laughs> it's like this is youtube channels if somebody want to watch the shit they'll watch it if they don't they won't ain't no big deal it's like man yeah. Wait, wait a minute. What do you say? <laughs> the CEO's apps are taking notes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're like, OK, we need to do something. Anytime I've had my airport trips reviewed, they've always increased a huge amount. See, Matt, they only did me like that, like maybe once, maybe twice, but definitely once because I had it on video where I asked for like three, four bucks and they gave me like 18 bucks. I was like, what the fuck just happened? Holy shit. I was like, I'll take it, though. Man, Thomas says, so Jeff, a.k.a. BME, going to organize us in person. What's the plan aside from not accepting trash orders? <laughs> trash rides. If you don't accept trash rides, make sure you get your cash app and your Venmo plaque. Now, my last video that I dropped, I actually had the link for this in there. And I got Logan, uh, Logan Valley. He's Logan Block Valley. I put his channel link in there, too. So he can show you exactly how his his is set up like this and it's way longer and it's got stuff on it. Mine is set up sideways and I drill two holes in it. So I'm going to hang it over my back seat. So it's hanging in people's faces as we ride. And they, they're going to be like, hey, can we add a stop? Is it OK if we add a stop? I'm like, well, you see that cash and that Venmo hanging right there? Yeah. If you tip me on that app right now, you tip me on that. We can do the stop. You ain't got to worry about adding it. We'll just do the stop. See, and they'll tip you on it. They'll say, OK, we just tip you like 10 bucks. Cool. Can you just stop here at Circle K? I got you. Don't worry about it. But when people be like, I'll tip you in the app, I have this hanging there. If you want to stop or you want to add or do another ride or, you know, say, hey, can we, you know, extend this trip or something? This is how you do it right here. Tip me with this. Don't tip me in the app because I may not see it. Tip me with this. And like I said, this I got this off of Amazon and this like got raised is raised up and everything. So you can do all kind of stuff, man. I love this little plaque. This is about to make me some serious money. But. What it, it, Robert Reese said, they got mad at me a few months ago telling me I purposely go live when other people go on. I'm like, you, you've never watched TV before. It's, it's many different stations. Yeah, Robert Reese, man, it's, that's the thing, man. We all have different channels and we all do different things. But for some strange reason, only in the gig community, do people think you have to follow some weird ass fucking hierarchy. Like anybody can make a channel. You just make one. But what it is, is they see a channel that's getting traction or that's getting attention. And they say, well, that channel is taken away from what I'm trying to do. I don't give a fuck what you're trying to do. Do it better. I don't know what to tell you, but you can't say because we feel you're getting a lot of traction. You're getting a lot of attention. You're getting a lot of views. Or you're getting a lot of, you know, comments and stuff like this that we need to come monitor you to let you know, you know, you're encroaching on some motherfucker. This is the universe. It's 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year. You can't run somebody's channel. If Robert Reese feel like dropping a motherfucking live every day at seven o'clock, he can. This is YouTube. He can do it. It ain't no big deal. And a lot of people, man, like I said, these channels, I, I don't know who they think they are. Like who told them because it's a gig space and they think, well, I got more subs. I don't give a shit. I can buy 500,000 subs tomorrow. Does that make me the gig leader now? Because I bought 500,000 subs tomorrow. No. They're going to say, damn, Jeff, you was just at 5,000 yesterday. What happened? Well, I bought 500,000 so I could be the leader. Cause that's all y'all basing the shit on is on who, who got how many subs, right? There is no fucking true leader. If you want to feel like a leader, knock yourself the fuck out. Feel like one. I can't tell you not to feel like one. Feel like one. Shit, you say, man, I feel like I'm the leader. Cool. Knock yourself the fuck out. But the problem starts when you start thinking you're the leader to where you start contacting motherfuckers with YouTube channels trying to tell them what to do. That's when you fuck up because that's not the real game. You can feel how you want to feel. You can feel like fucking Santa Claus for all I give a fuck. I feel like Santa Claus today. Fucking feel like Santa Claus today. I can't tell you not to feel like Santa Claus. But don't come to my motherfucking house and slide down my motherfucking chimney. Now you done took the shit too far. Give a fuck how you feel. Feel how you want to feel. But don't slide down my motherfucking chimney. 
Like you can feel like the leader on YouTube. Feel like it. I can give a shit less. Feel like it. But just don't come to me with that bullshit. Feel however you want to feel. I can't knock you how you feel. But don't say, I'm going to act on my feelings and tell Jeff, Jeff, you can't do this because I'm the leader and I kind of set the tone around here. You don't said shit. It's like, there's too many fucking channels. There's so many industries. I see mechanic industries out there. I see dog industries out there, car industries, you know, comedy. And there is no true leader in anything. You lead what you do. And I hope you do it very well. That's it. I hope you do it very well. But in the gig space, I don't know why people start thinking that people can control others based on how many subs they got on their channel. I've never seen no shit like that before. I don't see that shit on TikTok. I don't see that shit on YouTube. I mean, on uh, IG. I never saw that shit on Facebook. Like, hey, man, your Facebook channel, man, I got way more followers than you got. So you got to do this on your channel. And I never seen that shit. Even on Facebook, I ain't see that shit. But yet when you get on YouTube, motherfuckers see what you're doing on YouTube. First thing you want to do is start telling, hey, man, this is what I need you to start doing with your channel, man. This, this is what you got to do because, you know, it's kind of encroaching on what we're doing. And it's kind of, you know, going against what we do over here on this. What the fuck do they got to do with me? They ain't got shit to do with me. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. And like I said, and I'm one of those people that I look at all channels, all podcasts. I look at all videos from a lot of genres, science fiction, everything. And it's just how I feel based on I wake up and I just, you know, look at my homepage, start clicking on shit. If somebody's shit is something I want to watch, I just watch it. I don't go, well, let me go to the leader first to make sure the leader is doing something. That, uh, ain't no fucking leader on YouTube. It's a homepage. You just go to the homepage and well, watch what you want to watch. And like I said, some people get views. Some people don't. It's just how shit is. It could be the algorithm. It could be anything. We don't know. But there's no true, oh, we're the leader. Man, yeah. It's not prison. It's YouTube. That's it. It's fucking YouTube. That's all it is. It like I said, what up, Ryan? Man, man, real shit. Tuck, tuck. I appreciate that, man. Is it real? Is real? That's why we rocking. What you think, man? And and like I said, and I'm a driver, and I tell people I'm not really a YouTuber because I could be on YouTube and I can make like thirty bucks in a day on YouTube. Make thirty bucks. I can make, and that's in a day. I can do that shit in like thirty minutes driving. So why would I give up driving to be a YouTuber? YouTube ain't shit. It's just like us hanging out and having fun and doing this and doing that. It's like we laugh, we trade strategies and stories. Then we take this shit to the streets, to the real world. We transfer all this information to the real world and we go out there and we make some real money out there. That's what we do. Because when those bills start hitting them fucking mailboxes, I can't be like, well, you know, I got like 30,000 followers. Motherfucker, Citibank gonna be like, so what's that got to do with this fucking bill? You gonna pay this motherfucker or not? Well, you know, my followers... No, 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 that don't work. The real world don't work like that. You got to go out there and you got to drive. You got to get money, man. You got to come up with a plan. You got to generate profits. You got a lot of shit you got to do. And we teach each other that. And that's why I like this community, man. I like the whole ride share. Even when I'm on other channels, man, I jive with the drivers on those channels. I ain't in competition with no fucking channels because half the drivers on this channel be on other channels. We all on other channels. We like looking and seeing, you know, if there's something new we should be talking about or that we didn't notice. And, and a lot of drivers that are in channels are helping to spread information. And once we spread information, that's when we start educating each other. And that's when the apps have their fucking hands full. Cause when we all doing the same shit, all the apps gonna have their fucking hands full. They're gonna be like, Oh man, we, we keep trying to get over on these fucking drivers, but man, we can't get over on them for nothing. They always finding out how to, how to, you know, keep their search. They always trying to find out how to do this and that we can't get over on them for nothing. Cause we're communicating. They don't want us to talk to the riders. That's already bad enough. They don't, they don't want us talking to the riders. But then turn around, we try to talk to the drivers. Hey, you can't keep us from talking to other drivers. We'll, like you said, tuck, tuck, each one should teach one. And we pass that energy on. We just keep passing that energy forward. That's how we do it. What, what Magnus is it? Hey, Beauty Evans says, your subs is growing, Jeff. You real teacher and good at entertaining the driver. <laughs> That's these, these <laughs> because when I be in the car rolling, man, I be, I be cracking up, lady. I be cracking up when I be rolling because I don't even know what I'm saying half the time because I'm focused. I'm focused on making money. So I'm just talking like how I talk, just doing what I do, talking to passengers, talking to people, this and that. Then when I go back and do the edits, man, I be crying. I'm like, this is the dumbest shit I could ever fucking say. <laughs> but this shit be so funny, though. It be stupid funny. But it's real. Like, I don't filter it. I don't censor it. I be acting out. I be wilding out and shit. Then the very next clip, I sound like calm because it's like I'm over it already. I'm like, they done pissed me off. They done stole my motherfucking money. They done, they done jacked me for something. Now I'm, 
let me get up, get off that energy and let me go finish this fucking night. Let me go do something different. And I keep it 100. That's it. Ride chair is like it. It is a roller coaster of emotions. I mean, you can go from having the best ride of your life to having the worst ride of your life, like one ride to the next. It's a roller coaster. So if you can't check yourself and bring yourself back to a level playing field, be like, listen, you know, my last ride was horrible. Let me go sit in this parking lot for a minute. Let me chill for a minute. You chill for a second. Get yourself together because your next ride, you got to get that tip or you got to do this ride real good. You don't want to get a bad ding or something like that. That's how you gather yourself in ride share. A lot of people don't have that ability to do that. And so some of my videos, I hope people say, man, you be wilding the fuck out. But then a minute later, you like, cool. I'm like, cuz that, that ride chilled me the fuck out. I had a really good ride after that. I was like, oh man, I love, I'm glad I did this ride, man. This ride was good. This ride was good. So shoot, man, I appreciate that, Ryan, man. He says, I appreciate, we, we appreciate you more than you'll ever know, brother, man. I, and I appreciate all the riders, man. I tell people, I appreciate all these drivers because I've learned a lot just from reading all the comments that people used to say, man, you go through every comment. I'm like, when I get the notifications, I go through all my comments as much as I can because you guys are the, the true community. There's no YouTuber that knows everything. These motherfuckers might pretend they know everything, but they don't. They'll fuck around, have you in the same boat they in. So what you do is you go through the chat, you go through the comments, you read stuff, you get educated. This is all literature. Everything you guys type on the videos, everything you type in the chat is all literature for a driver that might not know shit, thinking the apps give a fuck about them. It's going to teach them how to make money. The apps going to blaze right through their ass until they find a channel that sits them down and says, this is what you need to do to make money. Because a lot of these channels will be like, oh, well, when you get in your car, make sure your foot is on the brake and then you hit your start button and your car should start. That's the moment you're now a driver. Like, like what? what the fuck kind of channel is this that's the kind of weird shit you be hearing on youtube and i'm like no nah, man keep it 100 these motherfuckers gonna try to play you if you ain't smart keep your head on a swivel to keep yourself safe but make sure these apps don't fuck you over they're gonna send you a fucking 30 mile trip for 15 bucks and if you take it that's on you you can't complain and it's just like a lot of motherfuckers out there oh man i'm tired of these motherfuckers not giving me a tip it's like well, shit, you took the trip or you took the fucking delivery. That was on you. It was a no tip delivery and you took it. You can't blame them. And Raj is the same way. Now, I'm tired of these fucking trips, man. Paying me 50 cent a mile. You're taking it. <laughs> Night just damn. You sound like Hank Hill. Man, I'm telling you that Bobby over there. <laughs> so YouTube has its pros and cons. This depends on how we use it and the people we reach out with knowledge, gain respect and loyalty. I'd rather have a small Circle, then a big one to it and expect a lot. And that's what I always said, Damien, man, from day one, I say, you know what? I don't mind having a small channel. I've always loved having a small channel because to me, it's like, you know, we slowly inviting people to the barbecue and we can bring another table in and say, oh, oh, we got some more people coming in. You know, we bring another table. Hey, bring some chairs over here, man. Bring some chairs. We got a couple of more people. And that's how my channel slowly grows. It's never going to have like an exponential fucking growth. One day, 5,000, next day, 10 day. No, because because this is a barbecue. It take a while to understand what the fuck's even going on over here. People come over here, they got to rock with us. They got to vibe with us. They got to understand what it is. And a lot of people come over here and they're like, man, I expected to come over here and, and hear how to drive and, you know, how to make left turns properly using the turn signal and how to brake easily so the customer's not upset. No, this ain't that kind of fucking, there's channels like that out there. This ain't that type of channel. I mean, there's a variety of channels out there. <laughs> King of the Hill is coming back. <laughs> Captain, what's good from Colorado? Hey, Jeff, making 208 and 6.5 hours last night using the tips and tricks from your podcast. Pick the rides that make the most sense and profit. Have a good night. Get out there and earn it. Real shit, brother. That's it. That's it. 208. And like I said, you're covering $200 in six hours. There's people out there driving 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours just to cover 200 bucks. And I'm like, it don't got to be like that. It don't have to be like that. Those a lot of those orders when people do that and they're driving at that degree 10, 12, 14 hours to make 200 bucks, they're accepting shit that the app is throwing out. It's a bunch of trash, and the apps is like, We can't believe these people are taking this shit. They still taking it. Holy, keep sending it then because we're making a lot of profits off of this shit. The more they take these little ass rides, the more we making a profit off of them. They don't take that shit. There's there should be no way. I mean, you basically are working less than a full time six and a half hours is less than a full time job. You're working part time hours. You're working part-time hours making full-time money. You can't beat that because $208 just working normal work hours. Let's say you get $208 a day and you're work. Let's say you work like even 200 days a year, 200 days a year, taking 165 off. I mean, you're still making like $40,000.
working 200 days a year. That's half the year, half the year. And you was like, you're making 40 grand with half the year if you're making $200 a day. And that's why I say, you don't have to work full-time hours. You don't have to drive a whole lot of miles to get money. You got to do this shit the smart way, man. You got to do it the smart way. And if you're doing it the profitable way and you're looking at profits and locking in profits, you're going to go a lot further in a short amount of time and a shorter distance than people out there just driving nonstop. Y'all going to end up at the same dollar amount at the end of the year, both at $100,000, but you're going to say, man, I only drove $30,000 and they drove $120,000. That's a $90,000 um, mile difference between 30,000 miles and 120,000 miles. That's 90,000 miles of difference. That's a lot of fuel, a lot of wear and tear, and a lot of time. <laughs> it's like, fuck that. I'm not trying to do that. Go G Lab. What's up, brother? Jeff, thank you for doing these lives. You're very inspiring and entertained and love it. Man, hey, brother, I just, hey, I'm a part of the community, man. I just tell people how it is. And we get out here and, and we just, you know, we laugh together like i tell people man this is this is the barbecue this is the cafeteria man we walk in this motherfucker we sit down with a big ass tray of fucking pizza and motherfucking mashed potatoes be like uber gave me number mashed potatoes today i'm mad as a motherfucker i'm like well tomorrow hopefully you get the pizza because a few of us got pizza well they ran out of pizza by the time i got here i got mashed potatoes <laughs> welcome to the cafeteria <laughs> man Tuck says doing Uber ain't for the week. yeah you either have a skill or you waste your time and losing money and hey tuck and that's why i used to tell people all the time man if people sit up there and and talk and like the W2 people talk about how we are and how we don't have this and how, man, yo, Damien, this is a troll in the hater too, bro. Oh, no, that's funny. That's funny. And I tell people, man, and if a W2 person wants to come try this, try it. Try it a week, two weeks based on what you think Ride Cherry is. Try it. I guarantee they ain't going to make it. They going to man, I had to fill up my gas tank. Like every day, I fill my gas tank up every single day. I I done replace two tires. Man, I hit a wall backing up one time. Man, my windshield got cracked. Trust me, they wouldn't fucking make it. Nope, not even a day. Oh, in some markets, no. Vegas, they wouldn't make it a day in Vegas. Miami, they wouldn't make it a day in Miami. I guarantee they wouldn't make it a day in Miami. Even if they came to Phoenix, Phoenix would, would be okay until they started with the nature hikes. If they didn't know about nature hikes, they would be fucking in Cave Creek, Cave Creek all the way down to Santan Valley, Santan Valley all the way out to Goodyear, Goodyear all the way up to Sun City. They do all four corners. They'd be like, dude, I drove 360 miles a day. How much money you get? $148. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. You drove 306 and 140? Yeah, man. It's like, because you hit all four corners of the city and you was only getting like $60 a trip, $50 a trip. You made a little over 200 bucks. You done drove like 360 miles a day. They wouldn't know what to do. They wouldn't know what to do. And they want to talk about we don't have skill. Guaranteed the first week after they tried ride share, they'd be on one of these channels asking drivers, hey, I just started ride share. And uh, I, I was the dude that used to talk shit about y'all all the time. I'm having problems right now. <laughs> I don't want to talk shit about y'all no more. I want y'all to help me. <laughs> it's like, exactly. Look at Ryan. Ryan, shout out from Fresno, CA. Things are really shitty here, too. Been paid 40 to 50 cents on a dollar per total fares here as well. Yep, they getting us, man. They getting us. And I was, that's why I'm like, we got to start capitalizing on, you know, how to get our own tips, how to do trips. I've done, you know, more private rides in the past month because I'm, because like I said, when private rides, it's kind of hard to do because you got to open your schedule up. Luckily, like when I was dropping one of my private rides out there at the, at the concert, I went up to the gas station, met up with Juan Vargas. It was just right up the road. So I met up with Juan Vargas. We hung out for a while. We found another huge surge in area, shot down to that surge, made a killing. Then we ended up splitting. As soon as we dropped in a Tempe, I grabbed a $12 surge. He kept down a 202. I think he grabbed a $12 surge on the other direction. And I ended up, you know, taking that, making $33 going up to 101. I mean, and that's what we did. You know, we meet up at gas station. We kind of chatted a little bit. It was like, hey, let's roll, man. Let's go get this money. And we try. Yeah, what Zig say? Send them to Memphis to try it out. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> Send them to Memphis. I mean, these motherfuckers, that's better. They better off going to Beirut. Like, geez, you better off just going to Beirut. Trust me, you don't want to go to Memphis. Just go to Beirut. Man, they're going to kill me in Beirut. What you think going to do in Memphis? <laughs> it's like, shit. Yeah, and Tuck is, I'm from Pennsylvania, full of bridges and construction. You have to know your way around the city. The gigs have to take you out of the game easy if you think it's a turn-by-turn -turn deal. Yeah. And like I said, if you don't know what you're doing 
And like I said, even when I was at them concerts, some of my videos, I knew what they were doing. They were taking me from concert areas, sending me far away before the concert was over, just so they can end up having like I don't get surged when I come back. I was gonna come back and there's gonna be nothing there. That's why I was kicking out all those rides. I was like, nope, because I see what they're doing. They're trying to have you go far north, far west, far east, because they want to get rid of you. They don't want a smart driver around. They're looking for these, you know, high AR people who are renting from Hertz. That's who they want at these events so they can make money for Hertz and make money for the apps. Because all the money they making got to go to pay for this car. And then all the money that they make that does not go into the car, the app is keeping. There's a real small uh, profit margin for a driver that's renting. You got a much smaller, smaller profit margin because your first couple of days, you're just paying for the car. And the app is eating up the other part of that money. So the app gets the money and then the car gets the money. You didn't really start making your money until three days into your week. Now from three days up to seven days, now you get into your money now. But the apps are still eating. Gas is still getting spent. Food is still getting, like I said, it's it's a hard bit. And you got to know these apps. Like Tuck said, you got to know these apps because they will play you out. If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to be spending money on the rental car, paying the apps. And at the end of the week, you're going to profit about 400 bucks. You're going to be like, I profited $400 in my pocket, like after gas and everything else. And I worked six, seven days and I made $400. With that 400, I got to buy groceries. I got to get, you know, save some up for my rent. These apps will do you like that. They will not call you on your phone. Hey, Jeff, shit's cool. We saw you didn't do too well last week, man. You only made, you know, you probably only pocketed tops, man. You know, three, four hundred dollars last week, Jeff. Shit's cool. Can we can we send you some better rides or something? Can we hook you the fuck up? What what can we do for you, man? Because, you know, you're not going to make it driving the way you're driving. And Jeff was up. Apps ain't going to call you with that shit. They're going to be like, man, we killing this motherfucker. We eating his ass up. <laughs> Yeah. What is a uh, silver fox? I like to get in private rides, but it's not easy. No, it's not, man. You got to meet people like DJs, waitresses, bar, like club owners and stuff like that. Bar owners. I had a bartender passenger last week. She recommended that I get some business cards made my number to get regulars and bars pay for cash rides that are going through the app. Man, where is my dude? Because I got a on one of my videos on one of my videos, Ryan. It's got my business cards on it because on the front, it's got my number. It's got my Jeep on some when I use the Jeep, but it's got my car on the others when I use the car. But on the back, it's got my QR codes. On the back of my business card, it's actually got these two codes on there. So on the back of my business cards, I got my cash app and I got my Venmo. So you give it to the people. Now, when they want to pay you, all they do is just hit, they, hit it with their phone. Boop, they pay you on the spot. And you can tell them, hey, you can take a picture of it, send it to people. You And once they get you in the their Venmo or their cash app, they got you locked in. They're only keeping it for like the phone number at that point. So yeah, yeah. Tuck Tuck says exactly. Rent a car will fuck you over. Been there, done that. Signy, yeah. Because like I said, what rent the car, and, and they like to they like to say this shit. Well, you don't have to replace the engine, you don't gotta replace the transmission. True, you don't. But I mean, I got all my cars like. My uh, Escalade's got over 200,000 miles, like 224. My Jeep's got 257,000 miles on it. The engines ain't blowing in those. You just got to know how to maintain the car that you use. And even if you're renting it, you got to know how to maintain it. You got to take care of that shit. And so they're charging you for the what if. And if you don't blow an engine on a rental car, you don't blow a transmission, you don't fuck some up on a rental car, you don't get none of the what if money back. You don't get to say, hey, since I didn't blow y'all engine out, since I didn't fuck y'all car up, is there any way I could, you know, have some of that money back? No, no, we'll just charge you that just in case. Because one day somebody's going to blow an engine. We got to use all these overcharges to pay for the, the damage to our vehicles. You don't get that money back, even if you didn't fuck up a vehicle. They ain't going to say, okay, well, yeah, you're right. You didn't blow an engine. We'll give you this much money back. And them rental cars don't give a fuck about that. They don't care. Oh, hold up. Yep, exactly. Yep, sweet, man. I think I'll take that idea and get my Venmo and others on it. Yeah, man, definitely get your Venmo and your Cash App on it. And uh, what else? It was something about Venmo, Cash App, PayPal. That was the last one, PayPal. So Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal. When you get those three added to, to the back of your card somehow, people could just hit it, scan it, dude, and they could just tip you right there real quick, especially for stops. Stops and added rides. They ain't got to go through the app. Be like, hey, man. Uh, can you take my homeboy, you know, this and that? Yeah, we can just add it into the app. I'm like, you know what? Before you do that, I'm going to let you know right up front. Apps going to give me like four bucks. You about to pay like $30 for this shit. I'm going to get like four bucks. So if y'all want me to do it, 
you could tip me on this real quick. Just tip me, man, like 15 bucks. I'll do it, man. Just tip me 15 bucks. I'll do it. All right, cool. They'll shoot you a $15 tip and that's it. Done. Done. Yeah. What did Jeff Wright said? My app's been been lying to me uh, twice and said I'm going to the airport, start the ride, and I'm going on a nature hike. You know what, Jeff? I saw that the other day, and it it was something that was like, I think it was like 3.8 miles. Swear to God. It said like 3.8 miles. I picked the person up. It said like almost nine miles. I was like, hold the fuck up. How did it go from like 3.8 to like 8.2 or something weird like that? I was like, dude, this they they screwing with me, man. They're doing this to get, and some of them be like 0 0.1, 0 0.0, like you getting picked up, dropped off at your destination. They do this shit because they know they can get away with it. They're doing it because they know they can get away with changing up the destination. Once you accept it, you've accepted it. You get to the place, the person gets in the car, you're thinking, I'm going to the airport. Hey, you ain't got no luggage. You ain't got no, no, I ain't got no luggage. Motherfucker looking at you like, why the fuck are you asking me about luggage? Because they don't know. You just saw the airport on your thing. You slide start, it's going somewhere else. And you like, wait a minute. This this said airport. I swear that shit happened to me, man. They they getting us, man. They getting us, man. I swear. It's like, what has anyone seen drivers with those light, lighted advertising signs on top of their car? Yep, all the time. All the time. I see that all the time running at altitude. They had that at the stadium the other night. They've got some real, some of them use iPads or notepads or notebooks and stuff like that. And they sit them on like little tripods. They got them sitting on their hood, their windshield, the very top of their car. Psh, they be making bank. And I saw a lot of people walking up to them. That's the thing. A lot of people were walking up to these people. Groups of four, groups of five, just walking up. Hey, and guys like explaining what he can do. And next thing you know, they're, they're talking money. They're getting around the cars and everything. It works. You go to an event. It works. Those things works, man. What is it? Uh, yep. Juan Vargas, you're right, man. Those are the bait rides. And that's the thing, man. And I tell people, you've got to pay attention to what's going on with these apps, because a lot of these apps, they're, they're slick because they know all. sometimes all we do is slide. We're just moving and clicking and sliding and moving. Shit, we got two apps running. We don't pay attention. And that's what they're banking on. They're banking on that. And the moment you don't pay attention, they realize they got you. Because you'd be like, man, I swear this, this ride said it was $22. It, it said it was $22. How am I getting $18.47? I swear it said $22. Because they catch you. They catch you slipping. And a lot of us don't screen record. We don't screen record. We don't, you know, uh, screenshot. So it's all memory. And we're thinking, damn. So then you go back and you look, you go, oh, shit, they did add a stop. And I just didn't see it. It went right past me because I thought it was a regular straight ride when it was actually added a stop. And Lyft and Uber is slick. When these people are adding a stop, they show you an offer screen. They'll show you the offer screen. The stop is farther down below because it'll say here, there. The second one you see is the stop, not the destination. The destination, you have to scroll up through the ad. When you scroll up, then you will see, oh, this is a three-part trip right here. Popsito, yeah, we still in. We still in the mix, brother. We still in the mix. And that's why I told people, man, yeah, I use Maximo. It takes a screenshot of every offer. Yeah. All right, go out there and get that money. Go get it. Hey, don't, don't be scared to decline some rides, man. If you got to sit and chill for a minute, don't let them play you. Do not let them play you. And it's like, because when you sitting there getting them good rides, you're going to start getting bangers out. The moment you let start letting them play you, the bangers are going to stop because they're going to look at you as somebody they could just send bullshit to. And I'm like, oh, we can send you some bullshit because you're accepting it. Stop doing that. Bangers going to just start coming through the woodwork like, damn, I'm killing it now. Killing it. But yeah, what is that? Is this 57 cent, 2.1 miles. Oh, shit. Hi, everyone. Just experienced today. I accepted a ride for 0.8 miles for seven dollars. And when I started the app, it's 2.5 miles. I got it twice. Yep. They're getting people with that, man. And I start seeing that, like, I be I be feeling like texting people. When I see a ride for under a mile, I be feeling like texting them. Now, point a of a mile was you basically going around the block. You were going to get the ride and go around the block. That's all you were going to do. But when you got there, they changed the ride when you were on your way because they probably look at this and say, oh, shit, it's got him picking, dropping us off where he's picking us up at because your car is aiming in a certain direction. So as soon as you get picked up, the car is going to have you go all the way around the block and drop them back off. That's where that point eight comes from. And it's like, nope, I'll, when it's under a mile, I either say, hey, check your app. Make sure your, ad, your destination address is right. If they don't answer back, I just cancel it because I don't got time for that shit. I'm not going to show up to find out it's a 19-mile ride. And I'm like, oh, shit, for 19 miles, I'm definitely not getting paid shit for that. They ain't giving me no 2 $3 a mile for this. They don't give me like 50 cents a mile for that. 
What off the handle say Uberies was treating me good last week, then accidentally took a garbage offer. Since then, they've been sending me on garbage. Like, that's okay. Nope. I go to zero percent acceptance before that. I take that. Yeah, I'm telling you off the handle, they'll do it. The moment they think they got you, it's a wrap. They're gonna start sending you all this shit. Night, big Jeff. 15 hours of work, I think enough for me. Yeah, 15 hours is man, that's a wrap, man. You do days, then you take a nap, then you go back out and do nights. Man, that's crazy, brother. That's crazy. Yeah, but if you start hey, off the handle, you're right. If you start taking that shit, they're going to start sending it to you. They ain't never going to, like I said, they're looking for whoever has the lowest tolerance to their bullshit. And when you tolerate it, when you're like, oh, man, I just need a ride. They look at you as a desperate driver. You're desperate. And that's when you, they, you get lost right there. As soon as you say, you know what? I'm tired of sitting here. I'm just taking whatever. They got you. They wore you down. And that's what the design is to wear you down, whether it's customer service you contacting, whether it's looking at these apps, they're trying to wear you down. Once they wear you down enough, it takes some days sometimes. It'll take you two or three days of slow shit, no rides, garbage rides. You going to break at some point. You going to break. But the strong drivers that we've already generated enough profit, we know, you know what? I'm eating into some of my savings. I'm eating into it, but I got to stand strong. I got to stand strong. Yep. You got to be like, doubt it. <laughs> End up on a damn nature hike. Doubt it. Yeah, because because once they get you to that point, they know they got you and they know the type of driver you are because they're like this person and the algorithm is, is fast, way faster. They know your your point of elasticity. If we starve him out for 30 minutes, he'll take a shit ride. If we do it for two or three days in a row, he'll have a whole day of just taking shit rides, trying to make a challenge to make up that money. Because once you pass two or three days of not making money, you are thinking the only way I can make money now is through a challenge. So you start chasing quests, chasing challenges, whatever you can. That's how they wear you down. And then they're going to throttle you. When you get to the end of the challenge, they're going to throttle you. So you're thinking, I could do 30 rides. I can do 30 rides to make this, you know, $90. I could do it. You don't get to like ride 24. And all of a sudden, your app just dries up. They push you all the way to 24 rides. And you like, all I need is six more rides. But damn, I got three hours to get six rides. I got three hours. And you end up with like two rides left. Like they do that shit, man. Don't start accepting that. Once you start accepting it, woo, they, they start messing with you. I've come home before. I just like, you know, I'm calling it good. I'm going home and I'll just come home, man. <laughs> Don't be a fool. You got to make boss moves, people. Yeah. And it's, it's executive decisions. You got to make executive decisions. You got to say, hey, I know what they're doing. What I think I should do is, is just call it a night. Let them know my car is not available. I'm not driving no more and come back out tomorrow and see if I could do this shit again. That's the only way you can do it. That's the only way you could do it. Yep, Zick, you're right, man. You just, Zick, like, hey, you just got to know the apps are not your friends. They'll change the rules during the game. Look at how they just did Lux drivers after buying expensive vehicles. Case in point. Case in point. We got 36 months left on our loans, 48 months left on our loans. And we bought these cars to do ride share. We got to do three more years, three more years of loan payments. On cars that, you know, we should now we're all like we should all just went out and got like five thousand dollar cars. But then we wouldn't have been able to make the money we were making. But now we ain't going to be making the money to cover the cars we got for the next 36 months, 48 months. And then you got a lot of ragged ass drivers out there now. Oh, I don't care about looks. I don't care about looks. I don't drive looks. So I don't care about looks. Selfish ass drivers. They don't give a fuck about people, man. Oh, looks ain't got nothing to do with me. I, I hope luck's going to the ground. Because if luck's going to the ground, that means I get more rides. I, I get more upgraded rides because everybody going to want luck. They want Lux and Lux ain't available. So that's going to start coming. Now I'm going to be people like that. I can't fuck with people like that. I can't fuck with people like that because they're not looking at the big picture, the big money energy. They still small money. They small minded thinking of small money. Me, 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 me. And they like, you know what? If those drivers got to suffer, if they get evicted, if they got to pay off their car lo loans, if they got to get insurance, if they got to pay this and that for that car. And Lux cars usually got high insurance on it for full coverage. And you got drivers out there looking at the situation as as like vultures. They're vultures now. They're drivers that turn into fucking vultures. Ooh, Lux is going to go. Oh, man, we finna make a killing now. Fuck them drivers, man. Fuck them drivers. And I'm looking at these people like we're a ride share community. Like, who the fuck are you? We're a ride share community. We trying to look out for each other's family. Motherfuckers got kids, grandkids. A lot of the people are retired with nice ass Mercedes doing good rides and shit. 
A lot of people, you know, pensions got sucked up during, you know, the first or second recession. So they kind of making money back from the pensions. A lot of people out there, you know, doing what they could do to, to keep their bills paid. And you got these motherfucking vultures out there. Oh, I'm glad Lux is leaving. Oh, this is perfect for me. Perfect for me. I'm glad Lux is leaving. Like, who? what the fuck is wrong with these people, man? And they want to talk about, yeah, I'm a part of, you ain't a part of the fucking community. You a shithead. You a shithead. To, to be grateful and thankful and clapping because you know a bunch of people with 36 to 48 month loans on their fucking vehicles are about to struggle now. And you clapping. Oh, this is good for me. I'm finna eat. This is good for me. I'm glad they canceling Lux. This is good for me. Raggedy motherfuckers, man. So I can't fuck with everybody. Like I said, and there's a lot of people I can't fuck with because I'm, I'm a real dude. I'm a real dude. But when I hear people talking like that and act like that, and I see these motherfuckers on videos acting like that, I, I immediately say, I'm glad I don't fuck with this cat. I'm glad I don't fuck with this cat because I ain't nothing like that. I don't got no, I'm not a heartless motherfucker like that. Somebody who's on their last dime, you know, just barely keeping themselves afloat because rent done went up three, four hundred dollars a month. Food done went up three, four hundred a month. So that's extra six to eight hundred dollars they got to come up with. So you got to come up with an extra six to eight because the shit going up. Then they pull luxury money your feet. How you going? You've been having a hard time making a six to eight. Now, how you going to make six to eight driving on base fucking platforms? Oh, this is more for me. Fuck them drivers. I'm glad they struggling now. I'm glad they pulling lux. Fuck them drivers. That's how the motherfuckers act, man. That's how they act. Shitty people. I'm a part of the community. No, you not. No, you not. Because the community don't fuck with that energy. We don't fuck with that energy. Because that's that's just not cool. That's not big money energy. That's selfish ass fucking energy. That's right, Damon, man. Small minded people never see the big picture and always get the feeling entitled. Never put in the work. Big minded people do big things and go through the struggle and come out. Like like Nipsey Hussle say, you got to go through all the emotions. You got to go through all the emotions. You got to go through the wins, the losses, the incarcerations, the victories, the, the being bailed out, you know, the studio time, the flop records, the good records. You got to go through all the emotions, man. Like I said, there's too many motherfucking drivers out there, wannabe ass YouTuber drivers or whoever the fuck these people are. And the first thing they do, I'm the best. I'm the greatest. I like sitting at the top because when I look at when I'm sitting at the top, I can look down and see people below me. I like to sit at the top and look down and see people below me. Me, I'm in the crowd, motherfucker. I'm in the mosh pit with these motherfuckers. We in the crowd. We against the apps. I'm not against other fucking drivers. So when I see drivers that pit themselves against other drivers, I can't fuck with them drivers, man. I can't. Because when push come to shove, I don't want to see a motherfucker on my channel going, man, I'm going to be out of commission for about three weeks. I got to get all my furniture and shit together. I got to go, you know, and I got to get my kid and re-enroll him in a different school in another community because we getting evicted because I just wasn't making that money like I was making, man. And, you know, look, that, that's some shit I don't want to see. That's a reality I don't want to see. I don't want to see that reality. Motherfucker, I slept in my truck before I was homeless with my kid. I know how the shit is. This reality. This shit's real. I wouldn't want nobody to go through that. So when I see motherfucking YouTubers bragging, happy, that luck, oh, that's more money for me. When they kick Lux out, woo, fuck them motherfucking drivers. Fuck them drivers. That's more money for me. I'm glad Lux is leaving. I'm glad. Hell yeah, I'm glad. Like, well, fuck you, motherfucker. It's a whole lot more people than you that we worried about. Because if you doing okay, as you been claiming you've been fucking doing, if you doing okay, as you claiming you've been doing, if you doing fine, as you claiming you've been doing on your fucking channel and shit, as you, oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing amazing shit. But yet the moment Lux is all, oh, yeah, fuck them drivers. Now it's time for me to get more. That shit ain't cool. That shit ain't cool. I can't fuck with people like that, man. I just, I don't, I don't roll like that. I don't roll like that. And a lot of people do. And so when I see people like that and I see who they flock with and who they fuck with and who they roll with, it tells me a lot about them as a motherfucker. And I say, you know, I'm glad I don't fuck with them people. I'm glad. And I don't have no problem saying that shit. I'm glad I don't fuck with them people. Yeah. <laughs> all for kicks. I saw you how smarter they as the other night. I was cracking the fuck up. <laughs> hey, I'll be out here moving in these streets. And I do that shit in our video to tell people, you know, these are options and opportunities we can use to get this fucking money into our bank accounts. So at the end of the day, everybody needs to come up. Everybody needs to come up. Fares need to go up. Bills and shit is going up. We ain't getting paid nothing extra. They sending us more shitty fares. And if everybody ain't coming up together, then we people are losing the whole industry is losing because if the apps turn into giants that can just crush each one of us individually no I'll tell you what when you put enough ants together you get enough an ant can carry some heavy shit you put enough ants together oh you can carry a lot of shit 
So if they looking at us like we ain't nothing but ants, trust me, we'll carry you motherfuckers out the door. You get enough of us together, but we got to be together. That's the whole thing. We got to be together. And I'm one of those cats that's like, you know, I was corporate for a long time. I walked away from it because I didn't think that was my energy. I just wasn't a corporate person because they were trying to change me. Because when you corporate, it's, it's kind of like when you go through a mentorship program, when you go through any type of program, you go through a, a sports program, anything else, you're going to be, you're going to have advisors. You're going to have people talking to you, whether it's a coworker, a, a subordinate, somebody over you, whatever. And they're going to try to mold you into being something that the company can use. So when I was in corporate, they were trying to mold me. They knew I knew numbers. They knew I had an accounting degree. They knew I was sharp with the shit. They knew I was quick with it. I think fast. I talk fast. I move fast. They knew that shit. So they was like, you know what? We could use this energy. We could, this motherfucker can come in. He works on his shit. Then he goes into the apartments and he works all the department shit. He's helping everybody at their computers. He's like actually sitting at their motherfucking desk, like showing them how to go through the whole thing. He's sitting in their office. He ain't just shooting a fucking email delegating. This motherfucker's out there participating. We could use that energy. So once I became one of the young execs or whatever, I, I still stayed the same. I was still sitting at people's desk. They're like, why the fuck is the assistant controller sitting in your office doing your work? Oh, because he was showing me something and this and that. And then, Hey, the shit falls in my plate. If I'm running the department, the shit falls in my plate. I want it done right. So I'm going to come down to the office. I'm going to chat with you. I'm not shooting no email delegating shit. And so I understand how it feels to, to just, you know, push shit out and to step on fucking people. And I didn't like that. That wasn't my energy. I didn't like that. I don't like stepping on fucking people. Yeah, Damien, real shit, man. So I don't fuck with people like that. I'm going to be quick to tell them to step. I don't see them as drivers as being entitled from the bottom feeders. I roll with drivers who put in the work and be true to themselves. Real shit. And Thomas said, hey, so the cherry pickers and gas drivers do try to, to change the algos, get messed up by the EV drivers simply because the picture of profit looks different for us. Yep. And our gas goes up like a motherfucker. You're right, Rye Flow. Being in a corporate job is like being in a cult. And they got cult leaders. And they got motherfucker. Your title is your position in the cult. And your your job is to move did a different a better title because with a better title you get a better office in the cult so now your office used to be let's say down the hall you can come closer down the hall to where all the other executives are where the boardrooms are now your office moves down and it's a cult it's all just a mind fuck corporate is a, a huge mind it's an illusion you're doing the same work you're just in a different fucking office and it's the illusion that you're more important because your office was down that way. Now your office is down that way. It's an illusion. You're doing the same shit in a different part of the building. It's an illusion. And I think I was just too real to see through the illusion and they couldn't get me to buy into that shit a lot. Like, they were, like I said, I would tell motherfuckers to go home before meetings. They say, yeah, we got a 5 PM mandatory meeting today. We got a 5 PM. And I'll be like, do they always do this shit? Yeah. They always, and people be getting calls from the daycare. Hey, you know, Somebody's got to come pick up Daisy. She's, you know, she's been waiting. You know, it's it's about to be 10 minutes before we close. And then we got to call Child Protective Services. If you guys ain't here, they do that shit to people all the time. You don't pick up your kid on time. Child Protective Services. And if they get alerted too many times, you might get child abandonment charges on your ass. Me being a parent, I tell motherfuckers to leave. Get the fuck up out of here. What are you doing? Well, we got that mandatory meeting. Fuck that mandatory meeting. Get out of here. Well, if they I'll, I'll take the heat. I'll take the heat. Trust me. Like, Jeff, why are you telling all these people to leave all the time? You Because they got kids to go pick up. We got a meeting. Man, fuck that meeting. I'll tell them about it tomorrow morning when they come in. Flex, what's good? God damn it, I'm late to the live stream. Here's my crusty, dusty, late feet. <laughs> Say, what did I miss? Oh, man, this shit, we done had a fun live. This is the crusty, dusty, late feet. That's some funny shit. I appreciate that, brother. That's funny shit, the crusty, dusty, late feet. Yeah, it's a lot of clicks in the corporate world. And like I was telling people, man, and that's how I was. I was always one of those people that was willing to take the heat. They wouldn't fire me for shit because I knew too much about the company. I knew the ins and outs. I knew the financial statements. I knew all the accounts, the entire chart of accounts. I basically wrote half the motherfuckers. It was like all a lot of the expense accounts. I created them, all the audit teams. I worked on all the audit teams, internal audit, external audit. So I worked on all the audit teams. They wasn't getting rid of me just because I sent some people home. They're going to be mad at me. That's it. They just mad at me all the fucking time. You can ask any job I ever had, even the people that's on my still on my Instagram or they're, you know, used to be on my Facebook page like that. They'll tell you, we stayed mad at Jeff. We stayed mad at that motherfucker. He, he walked in the building, just did what the fuck he wanted to do. But it's not that I did what I wanted to do. I did what was right, right by fucking people. I hate when people get used like robots and they're not viewed like their family ain't viewed. Their position ain't viewed. You can't do people like that because people have feelings. 
they're going to walk back to their office and they're going to do exactly what you told them to do because they want the paycheck. They're going to be pissed off at you, upset, crying, calling home. I can't come home yet because that's a human you did that shit to. That's a, I don't even treat my dogs that fucking bad. And that's a human you doing that shit to. I, you got to go home. No, they're going to be mad if I go home. Fuck it. I'll deal with it. Don't worry about it. I'll deal with it. Jeff, stop sending people home, man. We got shit. Man, I'll do that shit in the morning. Fuck that. I'll do it in the morning. Man, you keep sending little Dima home, man. You keep sending her home all the time. We got. I don't give a fuck. You keep sending Christine home. I don't give a fuck. And it's like, what you going to do about it? You're going to just be mad. Be mad. But we got shit to do with this fucking company. We still got profit margins to hit. We got financials that had to go out by the third fucking day. We got consolidators that we got to put out by like the sixth fucking day. So you being mad ain't getting none of the shit done and we got to get done. So be mad. She'll be back tomorrow. See you. They hated me in corporate because I didn't give a shit. It's like, you could fire me if you want to. I just go get another fucking job. It's a job. This is not my fucking life. I'm still a human. I'm a person. And they couldn't mold me to be what they wanted. They really wanted to mold me. And I just wasn't fitting that fucking mold too well. Everybody's like, dude, that's not your accountant. This motherfucker just pulled up on a CBR 1000. This motherfucker rolled up on a CBR 1000, did a fucking willy and shit. And that's your accountant. He don't fit the mold of an accountant. <laughs> it's like, We're going to turn him into the best accountant ever. No, nah, fuck that. No, you're not. I'm going to stay me. Yeah, Damien, man, real shit, man. Realize, won't realize and recognize shit like in the person of believing actions over words with always keeping it 100 on someone earning your respect and trust. Real shit, man, real shit. Uh-oh, what often is a third decline, $4, two miles, notoriously slow in sushi spot. Nah, I'd rather sit here and comfy and entertained. <laughs> real shit, real shit. Man, what is it? Well, Elon is cutting... Tesla price is about 10K and federal tax rebate of 7K will help you get another under 30K for a Model 3. I oh, don't know, man. I want that that S. What is it going to do with that S? No, I'm just kidding. No, but real shit, though, man. Like I said, and, and that's why I appreciate and I respect like all the drivers that are sharing information because we share information to help each other. But not only do we do that, we share information to help other drivers when we see a driver in a chat say something or even in the comments, say some, and we just chime in to help him out, pick him up. Other channels you go to, oh, well, my advice to you is just to quit fucking ride share altogether because it's a dumbass fucking industry. It's a stupid fucking, they're going to play the shit out of you. Just quit. That's not the solution, motherfucker. That's the solution that you think is your solution. But for this person, they probably don't, they can't go get a job tomorrow. They have to download $200 tomorrow. We need to say, how can we get you to download $200 tomorrow? This is what we think you should do. You got to use some Uber Pet. You got to find you some service. You got to see some events in your area. We're going to help you download $200 tomorrow if that's all you need to keep these motherfuckers off your back. And that's what we do on this channel. A lot of fucking channels don't like, and we know the apps going to fuck. We talk shit about these apps all the time because we can. We contractors. They talk shit about us. I guarantee they talk shit about us. 100%. These motherfuckers sit in the corporate office talking shit about us. So, hey, the feeling's mutual, motherfucker. We don't like y'all. Y'all don't like us, but we still got to do work together. We still got to work together. You could be mad, but it ain't going to mean shit. Like, we still got work to fucking do. <laughs> it's like, be mad. We be mad at basketball practice. We mad at football practice, but we still got to make a fucking bucket. You could be mad, but you got to make a bucket. So be pissed off and keep your fucking form. Follow your shot. Dribble this motherfucker right. Be mad. I don't give a fuck. Be mad. But we still got shit to do. Man, this is man, Jeff. You can't be twinning with one. Get the orange model Y. Oh, I'll get it. I'll get that motherfucker wrapped orange and black. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we gotta do, man. Like, and you know, we help each other out and everything, man. So when I see drivers, you know, on channels or whatever this and that, you know, gloating and happy that they're on a tier that's not being canceled because all it means is that hey, it just means more money for me. Fuck them give a fuck about them it's about me it's about my money it's about what we're doing fuck them it's a lot of people on lux it's a lot of people on lux a lot of families rely on that money on lux lux is already shitty y'all see me declining lux rides left and right it's already shitty if i'm declining lux rides you know i gotta go you know four miles to pick up somebody to go 22 miles this way so 26 miles total for 29 dollars. that's a shitty fare for lux and i'm like no, it should be way more than that, according to the rate card. It should be like almost forty dollars for that ride, almost forty. Man, and I'm only made fifty nine dollars cherry picking. 
This is, man, I've been connected since 7 a.m. It's 12.51, and I've only made $59 cherry picking. <laughs> and you ain't spent no gas, though. You probably spent about $4 in gas, if that. So you had a profitable day, a very profitable day. I bet you profited more today than somebody else probably did because they probably put in like, you know, $60 and they probably only up to about a hundred. It's like, shit, they only, they $40 up. It's like, shit, I'm only $40 up. And you like, you already 55 up. So you better than them and you ain't even doing shit. <laughs> exactly. You ain't went nowhere. You, you went like, you probably burned a gallon. You ain't went nowhere because you get shit. What? Almost 27 miles a gallon, some shit like that. So you ain't went 27 miles to make no 59. You probably went, I will say, close to 30 miles. I'll say 25, 26 miles to make $59. So you use like four or five dollars to make 59 bucks. To me, that's better than the fucking stock market. If you put five dollars in the stock market and somebody said, you give me five dollars and I'm going to give you fifty five dollars in a couple of hours. You tell me that shit ain't better than the stock market. If I put $5 in the stock market, run right now, one gallon of gas, and a motherfucker came back to me three hours later and gave me $55, shit, I'll do that all day. <laughs> it's like, but these motherfuckers putting money in the stock market, they ain't getting that shit back. They get negative money back. But you give me, you say, hey, man, give me five bucks. I'll bring you 55 back in a couple hours. All right, bet. I'll do that shit every day. Man, yeah, Juan's type best is crazy, man. That motherfucker's crazy, crazy. That shit, that's the Batmobile. I told him you need to take that Tesla symbol off and put a bat signal on that motherfucker. Just get something custom made. Like, cover up the T and put a bat signal right there for the Batmobile. <laughs> like, man. What, what off the handle say for Venmo? Tap on the hamburger menu. Three horizontal lines in the top right corner of the screen. Tap scan code to see your own QR code. Tap my code at the bottom. We'll show you your QR code. Yep. And then when you do that, once you get that, then you, you screenshot it. And when you screenshot it, you make it into a picture and you send that picture to the people on Amazon and stuff like that. And that's how you get those little plaque made because all they want is a screenshot of your QR code to put in there. So you got to screenshot the QR code, put it inside of there. Like, man. Yeah, Miami made, I was cherry picking uh, last night, three hours, made 149 in Miami, Fort Lauderdale. It took me some time to figure this shit out though. Yeah. Hey, that's that's good, Flex man. That's, you run like fifty bucks an hour, man, and that's good. I think if you if you at least forty dollars an hour, forty dollars an hour cherry picking is is perfect. Forty bucks an hour for cherry picking is perfect. If you're over that, you're doing better. You're doing much better. Cause like I said, some nights when this events like when me and Juan Vargas we be out, we could crank out you know anywhere between eighty to a hundred dollars in an hour. But you only got one hour. That's it. So you have to do all short rides that stay in that fucking area so you can keep grabbing that same surge. Without the surge, it's not happening. You can't do it on base fare. So as soon as the surge dries up, we're back to $40, $50 an hour, shit like that. But when you got that surge connected each trip, you're getting an extra $14, extra $12, extra $15. And you do three of those trips, you've got 15 times three. That's your you know $45 right there. So you got $45. Now you got to come up with $55 in fare for the on those three rides at least 55 and fair on those three so each ride has to be around about 20 bucks a ride so when you see somebody you know it's like 30 dollars, but you're only going like six miles that's a good one because you're still in the surge zone so you get that 30 dollars that's six miles head back you pluck another surge that's the only way you can do it man so 149 in three hours that's good for a regular with no concert that's how we drive right there, man. Three hours, 149. Because in six hours, you sitting at $300 in six hours. $300, six hours is part-time work. Part-time. That's it. You, eight hours is full-time. Six hours is part-time. So you're making $300 technically a day working part-time. You do that. You do five part-time days a week. Just five part-time days. You're making $1,500 part-time. And you're driving 30 hours to make $1,500. If you did 60, you'd be at fucking three Gs. Nobody need that fucking three G's that damn bad to wear your fucking self out, wear your car out, have a headache and shit like that. Fuck that. You say, I'm going to maintain, keep my expenses low. The lower you keep your expenses, the less revenue you need to create profit. So keep your expenses low. Fuel should be low. You know, try to maintain your car the best you can on your own. You know, if you can look up the YouTube videos to how to fix fucking windshield wiper motor or something weird, to uh, fix a headlight or something, do whatever it takes to retain your profits. Because your profits are what's going to carry you from month to month to month to month with bills and shit like that. When you start throwing profits down down a tube, dude, it's a hard way to live, man. It's a hard ass way to live. 
and what Flex say, you know what it is, and I'll put it out there. Other people in my area can make good money between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. And Lauderdale surges $20 almost every night. Work that, and you'll make good money. And that's what I do, man. And like I said, and, and lately, I don't know what the fuck's going on in South Phoenix, but on Baseline and like 40th Street, Baseline and 24th Street, there's always a $15, $20 surge sitting there. But it's never at a time when I'm driving. And I'm like, do I throw this motherfucker on Uber Pet and try to go get that bitch or what? And they did that today, too. And I didn't drive today. And I was like, it was, I, and I'm on 48. So I'm like, 40 is like eight blocks that way. So I'm like, I can go get that shit. But I'm like, no, nah, you know what? It's probably going to fucking bait my ass over there. And when I get there, it's going to be like a dollar 25 by that time. But yeah, sometimes, man, if you just know your market and know the areas when they search, and it might be because a warehouse or something is letting out over there. It could be somebody doing a job shift. So right over there in, in the Lauderdale, between 10 and 11, somebody could be doing a, a shift. Say, hey, you know what? It's, it's a, a shift shift. You got FedEx. You got Amazon. And they're sitting there going, hey, you're going to have like 30 requests come through. And it's like two drivers in the area. Of course, they're going to throw surge out there because they're going to need more drivers over there to answer those requests. So you shoot over there. Bam. Instant money. Instant money, man. Yeah. What is it? All they send me is garbage. One mile. One per mile rides, and they don't hardly noticing uh, that's worth my time. See, Miami, you got to just figure it out. What you got to do, Miami, you've got to find you a, a area that's close to like a, a busy downtown area, restaurants, bars, clubs, something like that, and just kind of stay there. Don't let them send you away. Because when you sit there and you decline a few, because last night I had two rides to go to hit the like, it was a $20 bonus or something weird. I did. They were trying to send me nature hikes, 19 miles this way, 22 minutes that way. Nope. I was taking all anything that was under 10 minutes. Take it under 10 minutes. Take it. Uh Oh, adult dating in the chat. Oh, shit. I got bought it. I got spam. Somebody's fucking getting me. God damn it. These motherfuckers is here <laughs> trying that shit, man. Yeah. And that's right. Facts, flex. You ain't lying. Yeah, man. I'm fucking spammers, man. These motherfuckers be trying to get me, man. They always own my shit, too. And like I said, sometimes when I be making videos, like I'm like, I'll in the comments, I'll see them. I'll pull those motherfuckers out. Yeah, man. Adult dating chat. Fuck that. Motherfuckers start going to that shit. You get up getting a bot on your phone or something. Like, I don't fuck with them goddamn things. You don't know what these. Hey, make sure you click this link so you can chat with Susie today. Motherfucker, chat that shit. All of a sudden, your phone goes black. What did I just do? You got hacked, motherfucker. Don't be doing that shit. When Uber lets riders prefer drivers, the drivers filters offer their preference. They only make more money. Now it's a crapshoot for both sides. A mismatch of instant of instead of a harmony. Okay, a mismatch. Yeah. He says, you made it if they bought you. <laughs> I know it. That's what you hear YouTube say. saying. You've made it if they bought you. God damn it. YouTube, you've made it if they bought you. <laughs> like, you are not a great YouTuber yet until you get bought it. Man, I got 150,000 subs. You ain't been bought it yet. Nope, you ain't shit. Wait till you get bought it. That's when you some. <laughs> I'm at 560,000 subs. You ain't been bought it yet. Nope, you ain't shit. Wait till you get bought it. Motherfucking shit. You ain't made it till they bought you. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> Motherfucker, like, I got eight subs and I got bought it. Dog, you in. You in. <laughs> you got eight subs and they bought it. You all. Oh, you in. You made it, dog. You up. You already there. <laughs> Motherfucker, zero box said, You ain't made it till they bought you. <laughs> Man, that's some funny shit. That's a funny shit. <laughs> But hey, you know you've been on YouTube too much if you know about the bots. <laughs> Fucking silver boxes, man. I know about these bots. <laughs> these motherfuckers get everybody. You ain't made it till they bot you. Like shit. Motherfuckers be hoping they get botted. Man, I'm gonna do a live stream today, man. I hope I get botted. <laughs> Why? Dude, I ain't made it yet. Dude, you got like a half a million subs. I ain't been botted yet. <laughs> these little fucking lizards. <laughs> <laughs> fucking chat lizards is it a lot lizards these is the chat lizards that bitch is a chat lizard <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> y'all gonna be crying now man it's just stupid fucking digital lot lizard the uber lift ride i can't believe a passenger ate in your bm yeah man and it was motherfucking uh he had a jack-in-the-box packet when he walked the fuck up that raggedy motherfucker had a jack-in-the-box I was like you son of a bitch you got in my car and did that shit I should have said, hey, man, can, can you do me a favor? 
I got to do something in my car real quick. I'm, I just got him out of the car and took the fuck off. Ended that shit right there. Fucking lot lizard. That motherfucking jack-in-the-box lizard. Man, what, what my mom say? Flex, I'm in the Wynwood area. It's too far out what type of uh, rods price would you take? Example, because all they do is send me trash. Yeah, yeah. Man, off the handles. I knew every offer would be of this quality. I'd accept them all. And that's why I say, man, low rod, low AR drivers are the drivers that actually tell you how good your market is. If you got low AR drivers in your market and they AR start going up, that means the fares are going up. The fares are getting better. But if you got low AR drivers and everybody's shit keeps getting lower and lower and lower, that means the apps are fucking with us. They're not trying to pay nobody. And all these high AR drivers, I don't rely on them for shit. I don't listen to them, man, because I don't want to end up in the same boat they in. They out there driving, you know, every day. They out there 12 hours, 14 hours, 15 hours. And they just won't, like, they don't make that much money. They will barely be fucking clearing what we clear in half the time we do. This is how long can you go, man? Hey, I'm at only at 214. This is an easy stream. This is at 214 right now. Shit, I got another like fucking hour. No, I'm just kidding. I probably go for another 15 minutes. We can wrap this shit up in 15. But man, like I said, I just know usually, especially tonight's like Monday nights, it's not a lot of activity on YouTube. I know a lot of drivers are out there driving. What up, Max Shelley? A lot of drivers are out there driving, and we just try to, you know, keep that, keep that energy for them, man. These apps is beating us up. These apps fucking us up. So what we do is we try to, you know, keep these live streams going for them. A lot of night drivers don't get good live streams. A lot of the live streams are in the daytime or they right after dinner, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock. They don't give them the late live streams so they can actually chop it up with other drivers in the community. And a lot of times we out there by ourselves, man. One in the morning, we out there by ourselves. Two in the morning. Glitch Dash, a lot of times, if you go on Glitch Dash's page, he runs a lot of live streams, and that's why I like his channel. He runs a lot of lives. So if you're driving and you just want to be in the enveloped and ride share and delivery, just be around drivers and shit, go hop on a live stream. Because sometimes, you know, videos is cool. Like, I'll use my videos, and that's, like, the lessons I teach people, like, in the videos of shit that I've learned from the chat, shit that I've learned from comments, and I'll make a video. The live streams are us hanging out. I ain't trying to teach nobody shit. We learn shit in here. We share information. We educate each other in here. But this is for us to hang out. This is real time. This is live. And I, that's why I don't like a lot of live streams of other gig tubers because they don't say shit to the chat. These motherfuckers will sit there and talk for a whole hour. Don't say shit to the chat. They'll be like, hey, they'll, they'll see a, a, a famous YouTuber in the chat and they'll say something to that. Three percent after I left Gold Rush. Damn. <laughs> that motherfucker King James was declining rise like a motherfucker. He's at three percent. Yeah, but a, a lot of these motherfuckers, you know, a lot of these gig tubers, they only talk to the famous YouTubers in the chat. They don't talk to the drivers, the drivers that are building all of our channels. All of us, chan all of our channels are built by drivers. All of our channels are built by people who want to support the energy we putting out there, the information we putting out there. Like I said, if you're not giving something back to the community, if all you're doing is, is having motherfuckers, you know, Talk shit about the community. Talk shit about the drivers. Letting that shit happen. No, I protect the drivers on my channel. People know. If a motherfucker, I've had so many common people jump on my channel. All you people are idiots. You motherfuckers should just quit driving. I removed that comment because I don't like idiots in the classroom. I don't like that shit. I removed the whole fucking comment. Because I'm like, you want to make an ass out of yourself? Go to a channel where you can do that. Because there are all channels that allow that shit. I don't. Too many drivers over here trying to feed families over here. We ain't got time for that bullshit. We just don't got time for it. Because if somebody needs to download 200 bucks, that's what we need to do. Go to this video. Go to these comments. Figure out what you need to figure out because the, the education is in there. You just got to figure out what applies to your market. Pull that shit out and try to use it. The fuckery comments and all. And I, don't, I don't deal with all that shit. I don't deal with that. And I'm like, man. And yeah, Damon said, yeah, live streams is like 70, 80s, 90s radio station where you're letting people know how you're, you're not alone and you're among the drivers here by actually talking. Real shit, man. Real shit. And it's like Miami maybe he's like, AZ is the real deal. Hey, brother, I'll be trying. I'll be trying. And that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? We out in these streets driving by ourselves, down alleys, down roads, you know, sitting in parking lots, waiting on good ass orders and stuff like that. And, and this is how we communicate with each other. I mean, Damien, he could right now be waiting on some orders, just kicking back, trying to share some knowledge that he's got with people, letting somebody know, you know, what's going on in his market or what's going on live. So, of course. And some people who are driving and can't read the chat, I have to read Damien's comment. Because if I don't read his comment, you don't even know Damien spoke. That's why I do the best that I can do to keep up with the chat. 
because I know there's a lot of things. I see sometimes people are talking back and forth to each other, and that's cool. Sometimes I'll catch one of those and I'll read it. But for the most part, I try to, if anybody's throwing some good information out there for people, I try to read that shit. Like here's Thomas in Miami. They're going back and forth. Like say, hey, Thomas, I'm in a Miami market. We need a telegram chat. So we should come up with one. See? So what they're doing is they're mixing it up. They sitting there saying, hey, if I'm in Miami, you in Miami, let's get on the same chat. It's like me, Juan Vargas, King James, Frank, all of us, we all text each other like crazy. We should probably do a telegram chat. That's probably what we should do. Because what I do is I usually screenshot where the screenshot where the surge is and I shoot that shit to each one of them. <laughs> we should probably get a telegram chat thing just like what y'all talking about. Man. And it's like that would help us all because that way King James could put something in the telegram. And next thing you know, we all got it. So I don't have to do it like over and over. So just me reading that comment right there between Miami and Thomas, you know what I'm saying? That's a good idea for drivers in any region. Create a telegram. And that telegram just say, hey, we don't want to be in this motherfucker talking no bullshit, no politics, no crazy stuff like that. But what we could do is just screenshot, you know, you know where the surge is or what's going on. Like I shot him an airport surge the other day and King James was in the air. He's like, oh, thanks, bro. It was a $13 surge at the airport. I wasn't going to get it. So I screenshot it, sent it to King James because I knew he was going to be in the area. He says, oh, thanks, bro. Appreciate that. And that's what it is sometimes. You know, we let each other know. What well, Thomas say, hey, can you add me to your chats? I'm in AZ. Love to challenge you guys. Yeah, Thomas, we need to create one probably, like one of those Telegram chats. Like I said, email me at uberjeepaz at gmail.com. And like I said, I talk to Juan Vargas all the time and stuff like that. We could probably do either a, a text chat where we all can like have all of our texts join in one big group, or we could do like that Telegram thing. Depends on how we do. I don't really like doing like apps on my phone because that should be throwing too many notifications, slowing my phone down. So I just text a lot. Like I don't do like Discord. I got a Discord. I don't really do Discord, but I like to text people, just send it all out so everybody knows where the money is. So if I can't make it, one of them can make it to the money. And that's how we do, man. You know, we, we try to help each other out. We try to help each other out. Yeah, and what Damien say, facts. We don't got time for class clowns and immature adults who never grew up. We're driving and staying in touch with, with one another and saying it like it is. That's real shit. And there's, in any industry you go to, you got an HR department that you can do grievances and complaints at a W-2. You can do a grievance and a complaint, and you can do that while keeping your job. Yet we do grievances all the time. We complain all the time. And motherfuckers go, well, if you don't like it, why don't you just go get another job if you don't like it? Motherfucker, you probably complain at your job every fucking day. But nobody tells you every day, dude, will you shut the fuck up and just go get another job? Stop going to HR. Quit bothering HR. Quit putting in these complaints and shit in HR. Go get another fucking job. No, we do complaints and we do grievances to say this is what the apps could change. Because these motherfuckers got employees that's watching these channels. They ain't stupid. And that's why I like when I, you know, talk, talk to the drivers. The drivers are in the chat. The drivers are on the comments. These are all problems and things that all of these app people could be saying, we need to work more on this because these drivers ain't going to be taking no more fucking rides. We're going to be losing a lot of income in our region because we got a lot of shit rides in our region. We're going to be losing a lot of money. So at some point, you know, their income on these low, low level rides are going to dry up. They're going to see a very, very low acceptance rate on shit rides unless they do big challenges and bonuses. Like, hey, excuse me, they will do three rides for like $35, some weird shit. Three rides for $21. So you get $7 extra a ride. Okay, you're going to take a shit ride. You'll take a $3 ride because that $3 ride for two miles is really $10 now for two miles. So maybe that's how they adjust. And they get all that information from reading a real fucking channel, real chat. We talk shit about the ass because they shitty. They know they shitty. They ain't stupid. Even Dara said the shit was shitty. So how the CEO of a company say some shit is shitty? I sit on YouTube and say some shit is shitty. Well, you just bitter. You need a new job. Maybe Dara needs a new fucking job if you think that, because he the one who said Uber was shitty. So you think, oh, Dara, if you saying Uber is shitty and you making millions and millions and millions of dollars off of these people, you should go get another job. Dara's like, no, I'm not going to go get another job. I'm saying it what it is. Uber is acting shitty right now. We need to change something. Cool, cool, Thomas. I appreciate that, brother. And that's what it is, man. It's like, we we call it like it is a lot. And a lot of people don't like it. They really don't. And especially, there, I know there's certain gig tubes out there that don't like it. Because, what up, Forerunner Forever, my man. From UberX to UberXL, that's another beneficiary of the chat. That's what you need a t-shirt that says, beneficiary of the chat. The chat taught him how to get his money. <laughs> he said, my shit went up 60 to 70%. 
And that's what it is, though, man. Some of these channels, they don't like how we move. And I'll tell you what it is. Like I said, it's that gig tubing turning into fucking gang tubing. These gig, all these gig channels, they feel that they all have to be linked together to be real. It's like it's like choosing a side shit. What, whose side are you on? It ain't about sides. I'm on the side that's not poor. I don't want to be poor. That's the side I'm on. I want to get money to pay my fucking bills. That's the side I'm on. There is no, well, who's, you got to be on somebody's side. Whose side are you on? His side or her side? Neither one of them are paying my fucking bills, so I'm not on either one of their side. I get on my channel and I say my piece. That's it. But everybody wants to know, whose side are you on? This is not gang tubing. I don't do the gang shit. Been riding a motorcycle for 25 years. I've never joined a bike club, ever. Because I don't do the gang shit. I do. I could do bad by myself. I could fuck up a lot of shit by myself. I don't need nobody to help me fuck my life up. I really don't. I can fuck up my own life. I know I can. I've done it before. So I'm like, the way I am, I'm like, you know what? I don't I do not do the gig tubing. I mean, I don't do the gang tubing. So a lot of people, oh, well, I'm against this guy. I'm against this guy, too. I'm against this guy. And if you're in the gang and you're not against who everybody else is against, now they're all against you because that's how gang tubing works. Oh, you're not against him? No. Then you're not with us if you're not against him. So I eradicate all the shit by saying, I don't fuck with none of them. <laughs> it's like, solves my problem right there. When I'm on somebody's channel, I have fun. I laugh. I joke. I look at their comment. I appreciate their comment. I make sure I, I you know, click like on it. I make sure I, I add some commentary. I, you know, give them an honest criticism of what I'm saying. Like, hey, man, I really like this shit. I like the way you did this. I, I give them an honest criticism. I like the way you said this. I like the way you put that there. I like the way you said this because it gives them good constructive feedback on what I like. Not only what I don't like. And a lot of, oh, I don't like you cussing. I don't like you. Man, fuck you. Get off my fucking channel. Motherfucker walking over to my, I don't, I don't like you cussing. Motherfucker, it, it's people right now dropping bombs on other fucking countries right now. Like, they're dropping real fucking bombs on countries. And this motherfucker's on you. I don't like you cussing. I don't like people getting bombs dropped the fuck on them. <laughs> it's like, I got bigger problems than you. <laughs> yeah. Uh-oh, what forever say? He says, today I stopped loading the suitcase luggage. So many people don't tip, so I stopped going to Bum Beyond. I'm paid to be a driver, not a butler. Mm. Come on, Fred, fucking Spencer Fred, motherfucking ass. I don't know where he been. He took off and never came back. <laughs> Spencer Fred, like, oh, shit, I just walked through the wrong room. Yeah, I be telling motherfuckers, pay attention to what room you walk in, because you might walk in some shit, and you be like, oh, fuck that. Yeah, but like I said, it, it, it's... Some people worry about the, the, the weirdest shit on YouTube, and we're sitting here trying to really, really educate people, but but teach people the value of who we are as drivers. It's like, you know, Forever said, he said he's, he's a driver, not a butler. And a lot of people disrespect us like that. They see us getting out, taking luggage, helping out, moving stuff, carrying groceries to their fucking door so we don't got to be on this delivery forever. And next thing you know, we don't even get a tip. They motherfucker, I just help you carry all these Walmart groceries all the way up these motherfucking steps to the middle of the apartment complex. And you couldn't even tip me three dollars, five dollars, something. Nope, I paid Uber. If you want more money, get it from Uber. So I just stopped doing Walmart shit. I'm like, you're right, you're right. I'm like, I'm not even gonna argue with you, motherfucker. You're right. If Uber wants me to do this, Uber needs to pay me more because I don't fuck with you because you ain't tipping. So I'm not taking no more Walmart shit because you motherfuckers ain't. Y'all got a very good point. If I want more money to do Walmart pickups, then I need more money from Lip. I don't need to be coming to the passengers. You got it right. So now these motherfuckers sitting outside of Walmart with their melted ass ice cream, they motherfucking corn on the cop thawing the fuck out, wondering why they ain't getting picked up because Uber ain't paying us for it. I mean, you motherfuckers be saying it. We don't got to give you no tip. We ain't obligated to give you no tip. You want more money? Go to the app. You right with your melted motherfucking ice cream because I'm not coming down there. Why well, I need somebody to come pick me up. I'm paying good money for this. Oh, fuck you. Uber ain't paying us for that shit. Hope your fucking ice cream. You can take that shit back in the store and tell them this shit's melted. Can I go get another one? Ain't nobody picking me up. I've been standing out here for like 20 fucking minutes. People keep declining my shit. Like, yeah, because you motherfuckers ain't got a tip. Like I said, I just keep it 100. I tell them, you motherfuckers are right. We should go to Uber and go get more money. You're right. We should. So we are. And if they're not paying us, you ain't getting picked up. This is how shit works out. Yeah, Damon says, facts, motherfucker, freedom of speech, saying the shit with a pipe bomb of all truth and don't have time with what people think. Yeah, man. And, and that's how, you know, the, the truth in YouTube works. 
I don't worry about what other channels think about mine. I really don't because I don't really think shit about theirs. They create their content how they create it. Just like Rod Flo, he created his content the way he created. He didn't ask me what I thought about it because what I think about it don't mean shit. It's his channel. He created the channel. He talks on his channel. So when I go to his channel and I watch his information, I go, dude, I like your layout. I like the way you're doing this shit. I think you should do this. This is a pretty cool channel. And that's just what I think. Motherfuckers, if you don't like it, just don't look at it. If you like it, keep looking at it. And this is this teaches us value of who we are as people. So we don't get walked on. So many YouTubers, like I said, when I started watching YouTube a long time ago, most YouTubers were getting walked on. Most people were talking shit about YouTubers or, you know, drivers. Oh, you motherfuckers ain't shit. Go. It was so rampant on YouTube back then. Go get a real job. Go get a real job. You broke motherfuckers. You no skill. Y'all ain't uneducated motherfuckers. This. Go get a real job. It was so rampant. Over the past three years, so many of those motherfuckers been laid off that they became drivers. All the motherfuckers used to say that shit. They're now drivers now. But you don't see many of them on YouTube. They don't get on YouTube and try to chime in because we can go back through and look at all the shit they used to talk about us. Go get a real job. Uh, they got laid the fuck off. Now them motherfuckers delivering fucking DoorDash now. They got laid the fuck off. Now they doing Lyft now. But they was talking all that shit. Go get a real job, motherfucker. And we try to warn him. We try to tell him, this is good money. It pays bills. This is why we do it. It's freedom. It pays bills. You got, I don't give a fuck what you say. This is my job. I love my job. I got an actual title, an actual position. I don't ride around in no motherfucking Buick Skylark picking motherfuckers up. He's like, we don't have Buick Skylarks. Those are from fucking 1985. Shows how much you know about ride share. We can't put a 1985 Skylark on the fucking platform. We can't do it. We've tried. I've tried. They don't want a fucking Buick on the platform. <laughs> Dude, how you get a fucking Chevette on the platform? This is a 1985 Dodge Omni. How'd you get this on the platform? Man, these motherfuckers don't know. I got it wrapped. <laughs> This motherfucker got an uber black 1985 Buick Skylark. It's uber black. I got it wrapped black. It was sky blue with velvet seats. <laughs> it's like shit. That ain't how ride share work, motherfucker. We can just put any car on there. So, you know, we try to help educate a lot of people on why we consider this, you know, real money. It's real money. Whether or not they want to call it a fake job or whatever the fuck. They, that's cool. Knock yourself the fuck out. They tried so hard to devalue who we were as drivers. And I think many YouTubers were, were getting heat from that because a lot of the haters would go to their channel. I made videos when I first started this channel. No motherfuckers used to try to come to me. I started making videos about these motherfucking haters. I started putting their comments in my motherfucking videos. I'm like, you can come say all the shit you say, but you fucking with the wrong one because I'll highlight your motherfucking comment in a video and talk shit about you to your face. I ain't got to hide behind no username. You know what I look like. You know what I sound like. You know what I drive. I'll talk shit to your face about you. And I did it to a lot of haters on my channel to where they got videos with their motherfucking username in it. Fuck them. And it's forever there. And I get paid for their hating ass. <laughs> YouTube paid me for that shit. So, Jeff, keep talking shit about these haters if you want to. We'll just keep paying you for it. I'm like, all right, bet, bet. And that's why a lot of them haters quit fucking with me. Because they saw that you don't rattle me. You don't. I'm from the hood, motherfucker. You can't rattle me. I'll take everything you fucking say and use that shit for income. Fuck with me if you want to. And so the haters left me the fuck alone. Half of them probably got fired, laid off, let off, whatever. Something happened to them because we don't seen all these companies closing over the past couple of years. And now they're probably in ride share and delivery, something like that. A lot of people that they weren't haters, they weren't haters. And they were just kind of inspecting, you know, ride share. just a lot of them just had W2s and want to see how ride share work out. And they slowly started migrating into ride share. They had a W2 and they migrated into ride share and they like ride share so much. They end up leaving a W2s. Those are the type of drivers we were welcoming. We love those type of drivers. Yeah, that's the thing today. They, they have not seen me anything worth the drive. I'm sitting at $59 at 7 p.m. I'm about to give up for the night. Wait till the clubs open up. Wait till the club, the bar. Oh, it's Monday. Yeah, Monday. I don't even drive on Mondays, man. It'd be slow as hell. Yeah. What was that? I bet a sign that said, the most sincere comment I ever got was written on a $100 bill, but pay for itself eventually. <laughs> Yeah, the most sincere compliment I ever got was written on a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> Wear that fucking t shirt in the car. And people are like, So, what you trying to say? You're trying to say, if you want to be sincere, write that shit on a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> Man, 
Yeah, Damien, real shit, man. The more someone promote, the more they're doing you as a favor, sending people on, send, uh, sending people on over to you and putting more money in your pocket, man. And YouTube and Google does this shit. Like, it's not even people are paying for it. It's like YouTube and Google are saying, Jeff, haters are beneficial to you. Quit scaring these motherfuckers off. And I'm like, I'd rather protect the energy of my drivers, the energy of me, the energy of everything around me, than let these motherfucking haters run my channel into the ground with their shit fucking energy every day. They do that shit on Facebook to people. You open up some Facebook people page, I mean, it's nothing but fucking negative energy and venom and dumb shit down their whole motherfucking Facebook channel. And I'd be like, that's why I can't even look at people. That's why I just got off of Facebook completely. And those same Facebook motherfuckers, now, it ain't nothing but negative people on Facebook, all negative people, ain't really a lot of positive shit over there. They see positive people making money, buying cars, we buying houses, we taking trips, we putting all that shit on YouTube, we showing what we doing on you. These negative motherfuckers from Facebook, now they gravitate over to YouTube now. Oh, let's go and fuck with some people. Ain't nobody left over here, man, on, on Facebook. Everybody's long. Everybody left the party on Facebook. It's done a bunch of negative motherfuckers over here. So we leave their ass over there on Facebook so they can be negative. Fuck them. And so we come over here where we can make money, educate each other, make videos, chat, microphones, videos, have a good fucking time. We all eating good, trying to drive good, doing everything right. Then all of a sudden, those motherfuckers, they don't have anybody to ruin over there because everybody's ruined over there. Everybody's fucked up over there. They have nothing to ruin. So they like, who can I go poison today? Who? Oh, YouTube. I know YouTube got some YouTube channels about ride share and they always over there talking about how much money they got and how well they doing is it. Let's go in and fuck with them. Let's go fuck with them. Cause you, cause Facebook, yeah, Facebook ain't nothing. All them groups on Facebook, man. Every ride share group that I saw on Facebook never had a solution. Supremely negative. It's cool to be negative because shit ain't always positive. I give it shit ain't all gravy, but shit can't all be shit either. You can't have a hundred percent shit on nothing. If it's all shit all the time, then it's probably you. You are the common denominator. Because sometimes ride share could be shitty. And those are the nights I just, I pocketed. I say, I'm, I'm headed home, man. Just like today, Miami. Miami today is dead. Let's call it good. I'm out. I mean, I've, I've left with $35 in a day. 35 bucks is all I decided to take because everything was bullshit. 35 bucks, I call it good. And a lot of people, you know, they don't understand why we drive like that. Because sometimes it is shitty, but sometimes it's really good. But yet you get on over there, you go over on Facebook, these motherfuckers ain't got one good thing to say about nothing. It's a shithole. It's a shithole. You go to a ride share channel on Facebook, from the moment you get there to the time you leave, you're going to feel horrible about being a fucking driver. Like there's no fucking, there's no point in it. No point in it. And that's what they want. They want to suck people into their misery. And they tried that shit on my channel when I first started my channel. They tried to come to my channel. I got haters on this motherfucker. I used to put memes about these motherfuckers, screenshot their comments, put their comments in my videos. I used to rag on their motherfucking ass. I'm like, if you want to give me content, keep talking shit. Because you're going to give me some content. And Google and YouTube going to say, hey, pay Jeff for this shit. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, you giving me the content. I ain't even got to go look for it. Like, you see motherfuckers out there reviewing other people's channels and reviewing these videos. I ain't got to review shit. Let the haters come. The haters going to give you fucking content. Let them come. Because I'm going to talk to the motherfuckers how I talk to people. I don't talk like a professional guy. I'm not going to be, well, I understand that that's your opinion, and your opinion is probably gauged based on the, the proximity of the region in which you work. Man, I'll be like, fuck you, you raggedy motherfucker. <laughs> I'll let their ass have it. Fuck them. You come on my channel trying to ruin my energy. Or I'll fuck your day up. And you're going to be like, why did I even go to that channel? Yeah, why did you come to my channel? Because I will fuck your day up. Trust me, I will. Yeah, Damien said, haters usually wise up and turn face once they uh, get to know someone. Ignorant and arrogant people are the ones that's not worth anyone's time because they never learn nothing. Real shit, real shit. And because all we do, and I used to ask them that shit. I used to ask the haters, oh, what do you say? Jeff on reservation, who pays more Uber or Lyft? Uber, for me, Uber pays a lot more. Uber pays a lot more. Yeah, but Damien, man, and that's what it is. Like, I would tell him all the time, how could you hate on the motherfucker leaving a house to make money? Get the money, come home and pay a bill, get groceries on the way home, because now they got a little money in their pocket. Get groceries. Okay, I'm, I'm going to buy a couple of frozen pieces. I'm going to get some motherfucking dog treats on the way. I get a case of bottled water because I made some money. I got some tips today. How are you hating on that? This is a hunter-gatherer, motherfucker. This is a hunter-gatherer. This motherfucker went out hunting today gathered some money, came back to his house, 
The kids was happy. The kids got cereal, got milk. There was no milk in the house when I left. Came back as a whole gallon of milk. We can have cereal for breakfast now. I even bought Fruit Loops. I brought some motherfucking Lucky Charms now. I got some tips today. How can you hate on a motherfucker that's doing that? When you hate on somebody that's bringing food to their house, that tells me a lot about you. That don't tell me shit about the person you hate. No, it telling me a lot about you when you hating on a motherfucker who's bringing food home. And I'm like, I ain't never seen no shit like that until I started, you know, making my ride share channel shit. And when I started, I was like, wait a minute. So you telling me these people are upset that drivers are feeding families. That's what you that's what they upset at. Well, they need to be doing that from a real job. They need to be like sitting in the office. They don't need to be, you know, making money on their own. They need to be they need to have a boss. They need to supervise. They need to be punching in and out. They need a real job. Motherfucker, the point to life is not to have a real job. The point of life is enjoy your existence. If I hit the motherfucking lottery, what do you think I'm going to do? You think I'm going to get a real job to, to say, oh, now I really exist because I have a real job? No, motherfucker, I just hit the lottery. I'm about to enjoy my existence. And that's the point of life. Enjoy your existence. The point of life is not about having a real job. Some people live just to work. And some people work so they can have a good life. They work so they can make a good living. Two types of motherfuckers out there. Not everybody going to be out there every damn day. I want to work 90 hours a week. I want to work. If I could do everything, if I can make as much money as I can in three hours a week, I would only work three hours a week because there's life I want to live. I might want to build a fucking shed in my backyard. I can go to Home Depot, do that. That's part of my life. I might want to travel to fucking Bolivia. That's part of my life. I might want to take a, a fucking cruise one day. That's my life. I don't live just to work for somebody. I don't live to wake up just to work. I don't live. That's why motherfuckers, well, you wasting time sitting in that parking lot. Like, you don't even know what the fuck I'm doing in this parking lot. I could be like going through a, a fucking, you know, tutorial for something on BMW. I could be going through a tutorial. How you think I found out how to get a good microphone? You think somebody just fucking said, hey, get it. No, I had to research microphones. So when I'm sitting in parking lots, I'm researching microphones. I'm researching cameras. I'm researching chairs. I'm researching podcast studio setups. When I'm sitting in parking lots, I'm investing into me. That's my time now. When I'm sitting in parking lots, I'm looking up cooking recipes so I can make better foods than I'm, so I don't have to eat these shitty ass motherfucking restaurants. How can I make a minute meal? How can I make the quickest meal for under 10 bucks? I'm looking at shit like that online. I'm investing in me, my own personal intelligence, my own personal capital when I'm sitting in the parking lot. When you go to work, imagine sitting at a W-2 and you sitting in your motherfucking office looking up ways to prep meals under $10. Your boss come up, uh, what are you doing? Uh, what are you talking about? You're you're looking at recipes on yeah, man. I, I just because I'm tired of eating in the cafeteria downstairs. I just, motherfucker, you should be working right now. We got report doing like 20 minutes. Are you sitting there looking at my man? I just need some time. You ain't got no time, motherfucker. You work right now. You you on your W two? You don't clock the fuck in. You're not clocking in just to sit up and look at fucking recipes, man. If you don't turn that motherfucking internet off and get to working, see that's W two shit right there. That's boss. That's that's supervisor shit. We don't have that, so I can look up a recipe. How can I make this under 10 minutes? Nobody's over my shoulder. And I enjoy that life. I enjoy that vibe. I enjoy that energy. You know, I can get in my car, go sit my ass in a parking lot around the corner and wait till good money come. I ain't got to chase bad money. I can wait till good money come. If good money ain't coming, I got a screen open. I'm looking at recipes for under 10 bucks because I want to spend at least 10 bucks, you know, making this food and probably spread it out over two nights. So it cost me $5 a night to eat dinner instead of $50 a night to eat fucking dinner. So I'm spending $5 a night to eat dinner. Cool. Put that shit in the Tupperware bowl. I'm researching how to be a better me, how to have a better existence. And that's what I like about Rasher. It gives you the leverage to do that. A lot of jobs don't give you the leverage to do that because they always in your face, always behind you, always over. Hey, what you got on your screen over there, Jamie? What's on your screen? I'm going to worry about what's on my screen. I, my car is having a problem. The check engine light came on. So I'm looking up why. Oh, you don't got time to be looking up car problems, Jamie. We got a report doing about an hour. You got to get on that report, Jamie. I just want to find out what's wrong with my car, though. I mean, the check engine light came on. Can I look that up? No, you can't look that up. You don't clock in. We don't pay you to look up car parts. You better get on that report, Jimmy. See, that's W-2 shit. I can't do W-2 shit. That's right, Ryan, man. It's NPC thinking, man. Thanks, Miami. So that's true. Good lot. Good topic. Yeah, and it's like, I can't I can't do the, the W-2 because I exist, and I'm aware of my existence. I'm aware of what's coming down the pipe for me. And what's coming down the pipe for me is every day our time on this planet gets shorter and shorter and shorter. So I'm not going to give all my motherfucking time to a company that's going to close. Look at all these companies that laid all these people up in the past three years. 
all these companies laid all these people off in the past three years. All just look them up. Look up, you know, layoffs in 2023, layoffs in 2022, 2021. Look them up. It will blow your mind at all the companies you thought that would be there forever, laying all these people off. And guess what these people are doing now? DoorDash, Spark, Instacart, same shit we've been doing. But now we know how to do it so well that we can do it with less time and everything. We can do it with much less time. They just learning. Well, and we're trying to get them. Hey, we know you just came from a W-2. Let's tell you what. Don't make the mistake. Stop taking the little. Well, I got to stay busy. Got to stay busy. Got to keep my wheel turning. You ain't doing them sitting in the parking lot. You're not doing nothing. You're just sitting there like, motherfucker, I make the same amount of money you make. But in half the time, half the effort. That's what I'm trying to get you on. I'm trying to get you on that shit. But you won't slow down because you employee mentality. You won't slow down to see how we're trying to teach you. This was seven hours online for 50 bucks. I'm out. Fuck over for the night. Hey, that was me all week with Lyft. I was on, I was sitting at the house and my Lyft app went off. I was like, I, I forgot I was on Lyft. I was like, oh shit. I looked at the motherfucker ride. Yeah, Tuck, that's what it is. Like, like I said, and I'm one of those people that try to grab the employee mind of people that I know just got laid off. And they've been seeing all the, the major channels, all the major, my channel's a, a minor channel. All the major YouTube channels, they get shared all over Facebook, all over Instagram. All the major channels get shared everywhere. And the reason why they get shared is because they retain that cog in the wheel, NPC mentality. They don't break the mold. They're all channels that are umbrellas of a mold. They're cre This channel doesn't fit a mold. It doesn't fit the ride share mold. YouTube don't even know what to fucking do with me half the time. I know they don't know what to do with me. They're like, is this motherfucker working on a car today? Or is he picking up motherfuckers from the airport? What the fuck is he doing? They don't even know what to do with my channel. So half the time they, they classify me as education. The other half, they classify me as people. I don't know what the fuck my videos are classified as because they keep switching me back and forth from people to education. So you two don't even know what to do with me because I don't fit the mold. So my shit's all over the place. You go to the, the indoctrinated channels, the basic channels, they all fit the same mold because they have to follow a mantra. And I don't fit that mantra, man. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate that, brother. Keep up the good work. Love this channel and community. Thank you for the super chat, my brother. Lud. Thank you for the super chat. Much love and respect, brother. Yeah, educational people, obviously. <laughs> this is educational people, obviously. Yeah, yeah, we need to, we're going to have some kind of group chat or whatever. This is new, new category, declineology. <laughs> if you want to learn how to be a smarter driver, join this new category, declineology. And that's basically what, what I do with this channel. You know what I'm saying? I know I don't fit it, but I know YouTube don't like me because I don't fit every advertiser's, you know, mantra. People might say, well, we want to advertise on channels for this. So YouTube don't know what to do with me, and it's cool. Drivers know what to do with me. I'm here for the drivers. YouTube is cool, but I'm here for the drivers. Because if we can all somehow just be more efficient, just like Miami tonight. Miami, you didn't make a lot of money tonight, but you also didn't spend a lot. So right how much money you spent versus how much you made. I bet you're going to have a big ass plus sign sitting there. There's nights where I sit in my driveway, decline five fucking rides and call it good because it ain't shit out there. There's no surge anywhere. There's nothing. I'll be online, decline five fucking Lux rides because they all be like, okay, I got to drive 18 miles to get somebody by Gilbert to take them four miles. So I got a 23 miles. They're going to pay me $25. But see, if I go to Gilbert, I'm way out there. There's no guarantee I'm going to come back this way. So I just decline it. I can make $25, but it's I got to end up coming back, though. I got to come back. All right, Flex, go get it, brother. Go get it, brother. Three miles, nine bucks, get it. $3 a mile, shit, get it, get it. So like I said, at $3 a mile, 30,000 miles of that is going to give you $90,000 a year. So people think, oh, it's just $9. Oh, but 30,000 miles will get you $90,000. So it's not just $3. You got to understand how this shit really works. You got to look at the math behind it. A lot of people, I tell people, we got all year. Yeah, how facts Robert Reese said, they, they still don't have them classified yet. They, they ain't classified you yet. They don't know what to do with certain channels. YouTube don't know what to do. So they try to throw you into different realms. And they even ask you, what, what would you classify this as, Jeff? I'm like, I don't know. Because based on what I classified as, the algorithm is going to pick me up or, or kick me out. And it might put me into a category I don't want to be in because of advertising. Advertisers might be like, you know what? We we would take them, but yeah, we got like real scientists and rocket science, all this shit. And then we got this motherfucker over here cussing, like fuck that. He can't come over. He's not like NASA intelligent. This motherfucker, he's good for common sense, but not for what we own. 
So it's kind of hard to see what YouTube wants to put me as, but I'm cool. I still keep doing what I do. Yeah, Damien, so YouTube can hate you, but still get attention and letting your word spread to drivers is the voice for the people. Real shit, brother. I appreciate that, man. And I say that shit for real. I, I appreciate it. When I say I appreciate it, you understand, man. A lot of shit y'all say I take it to heart because you guys are men, women, fathers, mothers. And y'all giving me words of encouragement. Y'all hitting me with shit because this shit that I would say to somebody when I appreciate somebody. So I know how it feels to say it and I know how it feels to receive it. So it's like, you know, the feeling's always mutual, man. And that's why I say, man, I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Like, it ain't just a, mon a fucking phrase. I'm saying, oh, I appreciate that. No, I really appreciate that shit. Because it's the humanity behind somebody. There's a lot of shit I don't even say to people. Because if it's something bad, I'm like, why am I even saying this to that person? Because I could just, like, not even fucking type on a channel. I could just go somewhere else. So I don't say. But when I do stop and I do actually say something to somebody because it's, it's something good and it's some energy I want to give to them. I hope they understand that I stopped and I gave you that energy because I thought this might be something that might carry you at a time when you might need that shit. And a lot of times, man, like when I did my calculations one day on YouTube and how much money I was making on YouTube. And I said, I'm making like a dollar an hour. And I'm like, I drive like, you know, $50 an hour. YouTube pays me like a dollar an hour. YouTube is getting over on a lot of because I know they make a lot of money on, on content. I know that because they got ads and shit like that all the fucking time. And they get sponsors and all that shit. But I'm like, you know, I could be out driving instead of trying to help other people make money the smart way. Instead of teaching us who the value of who we are. Because we're when people see me out, like even last night when I was driving. Oh, what else do you do, man? What else do you do? I hate that shit. Like people don't understand how much I hate it because you're, you're sitting in my car and you're looking at me like he's just a driver. He must do something else. Driving don't pay you this. What else do you do? That shit is an insult. And I don't think riders realize how much of an insult that is. They think it's something that is cool. It's not. Yeah, last night was popping, man. Yeah, what is it? They don't regard, they don't reward consistent providers of value to their customers. Nobody who does a great job should be idle because they don't want to drive for peanuts. Real shit. And like I said, it irritates me when a rider says, Well, what else do you do? What, what else can you do? I'm like, well, that's an insult. Because, I mean, what if you got in a car with a woman and I said, hey, who's who's your number one? Because this girl got to be your number two. Who's your fucking number one? Like, who you got to have a fine ass girl. Who, no, that's my wife. Like, wouldn't you be fucking insulted? Yes, you'd be insulted. Because if I look at your man, you, you got to be, dude, you could do better than this. I, man, a dude like you, man, you could get a girl way better than this, man. D this your number two. Is this your side, bitch? This is your side, bitch. Now that's my wife. Okay. All right. My bad. Shit, motherfucker, rasher is what I do. There is no other shit. There is no other shit. And so to, to, to tell somebody, a driver, who took time to clean his motherfucking car, get all this shit together, and to sit up there and go, well, what else do you do? I mean, you, you possibly have you have to be doing something else because I know what I do for a living, and I'm struggling doing what I do for a living, and, and I'm a smart person. I'm this and that. So you, you have to be doing something else. No, this is it. This is all I do. Really? And you get paid? You're not like broken, destitute, and, and begging for fucking change with a squeegee at the fucking Circle K? No, this is what I do. And I'm like, you you can't, and I don't think they realize how much of an insult it is to a driver. I mean, imagine me going to a school teacher at the school. said, oh, man, thank you for teaching my kid. Thank you so much for teaching my kid math today. But what else do you do for a job, though? You got to be doing something else. I know teachers don't make shit. What, do you, what else do you do other than this? That teacher would look at me like, huh? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. There's so many people here behind on fucking rent that got W-2s. People behind on bills that got W-2s. I don't walk around the motherfuckers in Walmart. Hey, hey, can I, uh, Sally, I know you're working here at Walmart. That's cool. What else do you do, though? You got to do something because I know this job don't pay shit. What else do you do? You don't do people like that. It's an insult. It's a fucking insult. And I don't even think riders know it. So, and, and, I, and a lot of times, you know what? I fuck with them back. I fuck with them back. And I tell them, I said, well, actually... I got my accounting degree when I was young and I worked until I was like 38 years old before I retired from corporate America because I just didn't feel like dealing with that shit no more. So I cashed out of everything, invested my money in something else and, you know, sold that, moved out to Arizona, bought a house. I heard they go, oh, really? Like, yeah. Now, how old are you, motherfucker? 52, still working. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's like, you ain't retired yet. I retired when I was 38 from corporate America. And it's not that I want to insult their intelligence to fuck with them, but I want to let them know not everybody lives the same MPC fucking life of waking up, clocking in, 
sitting at the desk, clocking out. Waking up, clocking in, sitting at the desk, clock. Not everybody wants to do that forever just for a title, just to get a better office down the hallway, just so I can get, you know, a parking spot underground instead of parking my shit above ground where the sun going to burn it the fuck up. It's like, I don't do that. Everybody has a different, some people live to truly exist in what we have. We see trees every day. We got the windows down. We smell food when we driving around. This We could turn an app off and like, dude, I'm going to go here and give me a fucking churro. This shit smell good. I'm going to give me a motherfucking crusty, dusty ass motherfucking churro. Has sprinkles of cinnamon all over the fucking place. We could stop, eat where we want to, stop, meet somebody. Hey, how you doing, man? Nice ass Corvette, dude. Hey, I'll tell you what. Meet a lady. Hey, girl, what are you driving a big ass truck like this for? We can do that. We live in that type of existence. We ain't in the office. Well, oh, I would talk to you, but I, I, I got I to gotta go. I'm, I'm, I'm on the clock right now. We don't got to be like that. We can turn that motherfucker off and kick back. Like, hey, what's good? What's good? You want chicken fingers? Let's go get some chicken fingers then, man. Cool. Let's go. Shit. Let's roll. Fuck that. So I was over there talking to Juan Barks in the parking lot. Me and Juan was in the parking lot for a good fucking 30, 45 minutes, man. Chopping it the fuck up. I wasn't on no clock. He wasn't on no clock. We work when we ready to work. I just dropped some people off. He went out, made fucking bank. It's like, we work when we work. Like Damien says, says, it's an insult. They should speak to a driver as a person and appreciate the fact that you're helping out them out and dropping them off. Nobody is better than anybody. Who cares how we make our money? Real shit. Real shit. Real shit. So thanks for asking. I actually have a panhandle on my off time because you clowns can't tip properly. <laughs> I should say that shit. Thanks for asking. Oh, actually, I got a panhandle as soon as I drop you the fuck off because I know you bitches ain't tipping. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see me with a squeegee and shit why you got a squeegee in the front seat because i know you motherfuckers ain't tipping so i'm gonna drop you off and clean your windshield hopefully you give me some money fucking motherfuckers man yeah and that's the thing man it's like you know so many of us our drivers have been devalued and that's like even with you when people started their youtube channels especially the bigger channels it was in a period of time before rideshare was really like big big like before rideshare was big and people didn't understand rideshare that much. And so they got devalued a lot. So they thought, well, if I create a rideshare channel, if I create a YouTube channel and call myself a YouTuber, then people will see me as more valuable because I'm not going to tell them I'm just a driver. I'm a gig tuber. I actually do YouTube and not just drive because driving is so low level. I tell motherfuckers I drive. This is all I do. I just wake up, I clean my cars, make sure the motherfuckers clean. I do my own maintenance and shit. I built my Jeep pretty much. I mean, I tell motherfuckers everything. I don't tell them I got a YouTube channel because I don't want to have them motherfuckers to come on my channel and find out what I'm saying about them. So no, I don't say I got a YouTube channel. That's not their fucking business. This is a channel for drivers. If somebody happens to find out I got a channel, it's one thing. Every once in a while, I meet a real, real cool passenger. And I was like, hey, you know what? I got a YouTube channel. And I'll tell them that you need to drive. You want to drive? You want to learn how to drive? Cool, I got a YouTube channel. But just talking to random motherfuckers, I'm not, oh, hey, fucking, you know, Elliot. Hey, Henrietta, I got a YouTube channel. No, I don't, because I my channel ain't for them fucking people. My channel's for drivers. It's not for people, just regular fucking people. If you want to become a driver, my channel might be for you. But if you ain't a driver, if you just out there just nilly-willy fucking around, no, my driver, ain't, my channel ain't for you. No. <laughs> Was it? I just divorced Uber, signed out and uninstalled. Now I'm going to give them a seven- 185th chance of reinstall something they got to start sending offers again once they give me a timeout worth a shot <laughs> they keep giving you timeouts you keep installing and going back and forth yeah damien blaze hey it's our business and our business doesn't conflict with your business on how we go about our lives and what we do yeah yeah the wayne's hey, people been saying that to me since i started doing this nine weeks ago yeah thanks ariel you rock buddy thanks thanks <laughs> i'm convinced we live in a world full of npcs motherfucker. <laughs> shit man 10 to 15 cent of people are actually self-aware i believe that shit because a lot of people just they just on autopilot man autopilot and it's real so I, and i'm glad that more drivers that i'm seeing now are really taking taking this shit serious like it's a business and it's not a hustle we ain't trying to like slide somebody hey man you want to buy a fucking watch you want to buy a motherfucking chain we ain't we ain't hustling no fucking body this is not a hustle it's a legit business. When you run it like a legit business, you can make some legit profits if you analyze the profits. But if you just out there saying, man, I need to hustle up some shit. Ooh, man, look at this. 25 miles. Oh, I just got our 25 miles. Ooh, this is a quick $12. Let me go get this quick $12. I'm like, dude, you going 25 miles just to make 12 bucks? Yeah. You're not a business person, are you? I'm a hustler, baby. I just want you to know. 
It ain't wait, man. Where I'm about to go, about to go 25 miles out, motherfucker, for $12. That's where you're about to go. <laughs> I'm a hustler, baby. I just want you to know. It ain't where I've been, where I'm about to go. You're about to go broke. You're fucking around with that kind of shit. You're finna go broke. That's the only place you about to go is going broke. So, man, I, I tell motherfuckers that when you become aware that this is a business, that you're doing it like a business, shit's way different, man. It's way different. And I like running it like that because especially with people who, who say they, yo, man, this is Jeff going off. I love it. When people sitting there going, you know, if motherfuckers want to sit up there and say, hey, man, I'm trying, I'm thinking about quitting my job, but I don't know what else to do. To, and I start them out slow. I say, dude, let me tell you right now, if you just want to learn how to be in the seat of a car for a while. All right, Damien, man. Hey, it was nice of you to come through the chat, brother. Nice of you to come through the chat, my man. Hey, take care, my man. Hey, be out there. Hopefully, you get out tomorrow and make some money. I'm going to be out tomorrow, too. But get out there and make that money, brother. Keep driving the smart way, man. I always appreciate your energy, man. Much love and respect. Much love and respect, Damien. But, yeah, and I, and I tell people, you know, I'll, I'll start you off slow. I'll say, hey, if you just want to do delivery just to feel what it feels like to be in the seat of a car for a while and to kind of navigate your way around the city without feeling rushed with a motherfucker sitting in your back seat over your shoulder, start with delivery first. Do Uber Eats, DoorDash, Instacart. Do something first so a motherfucker ain't over your shoulder so you don't feel rushed. And once you start getting better at it, that's when you can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to actually get involved and ride here now. I think I know the areas. I know the market. I know traffic. I know how to deal with people better. I'm going to get involved in ride share because this ride share and delivery are two totally different monsters. Delivery, you on your own energy a lot. You're on your own energy a lot. Ride share, you got to switch energy because you got to deal with, you know, the guard at the gate. You got to chat with the guard at the gate. If you're a dick, the guard in the gate might not let you through. Then you got to get to the person. The person might be on totally different energy because they only know no motherfucker at the guard at the gate. Talk to them. Drop them off. As you're dropping them off, you got valet walking up. Totally different energy. You got to talk to valet. No, man, I'm just dropping somebody off, dog. That's it, brother. I'm swinging. All right, cool. Sorry, man. You know, talk to everybody. So in ride share, you have a lot of different energies you got to deal with on one trip. So you got to know how to navigate energy and how to gauge energy, how to gauge people. And a lot of people, they don't, like I said, they're NPCs. They're NPCs. And they don't know how to gauge people because they're just used to going on fucking autopilot. So I tell my fuckers, if, if you don't know how to gauge people and you got a really hard time, really hard time, you know, navigating traffic, multitasking, knowing how to analyze a transaction, how to analyze people, how to analyze the market, ride share is going to be very hard for you. It's going to be. And like I said, when it gets real busy, I pull over. I'm like, dude, I need to take a break real quick. I need to take a break because you got to gather yourself. Sometimes you got to gather yourself. And once you gather yourself a little bit, that's when you be like, OK, cool, cool. I'm back. Let me start scouting some rides, see what I want. You know, I got to talk. I talked to the cop the other day, Walmart, because I parked the wrong way. <laughs> he says, you parked the wrong way. It's like, how can I park the wrong way? What is that? You parked the wrong way, motherfucker. You're parked the wrong way. Tuck, 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 ding, 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 ding. Yeah. And that's real shit, man. It's like, you know, if if we sit up there and, and try to help the new drivers that are coming out, we're not bringing in, you know, a bunch of NPCs to the fucking program. We're bringing in people who are really wanting to do this as a business, wanting to make the profits up front. Not just the oh, man, if you just get in at four o'clock in the morning, drive until your clock runs out, you're going to make a lot of money. You don't drove like almost 350 miles because how far can you drive in 12 hours? Honestly, you could drive a long ass distance in 12 hours. And you're going to drive three, 400 miles and walk away with $225 because you did a whole bunch of shit trips. Like, how would you make 200? I made $225 a day, man, in like 10 hours, 225. But you done drove like 300, 400 miles almost, man. You got to, you know, scale back that shit some. Use, use a quarter of a tank of gas. Like, budget say, I want to use a quarter of a tank of gas to budget how I can make some money. Because I'd be like, if I can make 100, 120 per quarter, because sometimes I'll make that shit in an eighth of a tank. And I'm like, damn, I'm really getting good at cherry picking. That is really good tonight. Like the market is good. The tips are coming in. The fucking surges are coming in. I'm doing really well. But if you sit up and you go, I'm just going to drive nonstop, taking whatever hits my phone, auto everything, stay busy, keep going. You're going to be doing quarter of a mile trips, 50 cent a mile trips, 70 cent a mile trips. You might get one banger all day. Ooh, I got $4 a mile for this one. Your only trip. All day, that was over a dollar a mile, was a four dollar mile trip all day. When we are reversed, we have one trip all day that's a dollar a mile. All the rest of our shit is three dollars a mile and up. <laughs> it's like because we don't budge. 
So if you're driving for one dollar a mile and you drive a hundred miles, you're gonna make one hundred dollars. It's fucking math. One hundred times one is a hundred. If I say I want three dollars a mile and I drive a hundred miles that day, I'm gonna make three hundred dollars for the same amount of miles you drove. Three hundred. And it might take me a little more time because I'm cherry picking. It might take me like five hours to make the 300. But it's going to take you driving the way you drive at a dollar a mile. If you're driving a dollar a mile, the most you can drive in an hour with stop and go and waiting. The most you can drive in an hour is about 24 miles, 26 miles. Because you got stop signs, stop lights, you got parking lots. 24 to 26 miles is as far as you're going to go in about an hour in city traffic. If you hit the highway, you can probably make it 45, 50 miles in that hour. So for us that are driving for $3 a mile, we don't have to drive but 100 miles. That's easy. I can do 10 trips. I could do 10 trips at, you know, if I do 10 trips at 10 miles each, that's my 100 miles right there. As long as they're all $3 or more, $3 or more per mile. And then when tips come through, you get more. So it's just basic math. I got time to do math. So I sit, I chill, I relax. I do my math. I scout my rides. I make sure I'm not getting no shit. And that's basically how you got to do rides here. A lot of these new people that come in, they don't get it. So that's why I like when the, the older drivers come in and we educate people on how to drive properly. We say, okay, this is what we need you to do. Don't take no shit rides. They're going to try you because they want to see exactly what your point of elasticity is. They want to see what you will accept. So the first thing these drivers do is they come in and they already seen all these bigger channels out there. You know, 11,000 subs, 12,000 subs, 30,000 subs, 40,000 subs. First thing these channels say is, Start at four o'clock in the morning and drive until your clock runs out. When it says zero, zero, then you're good. Count how much money you got. That's all they say. That's it. That's it. And these people, they do that shit, man. And I'll sit there and go, well, you can, like a monkey can do that shit. It don't take like intelligence to do like a monkey could do that. If you just start a monkey and say, hey, start driving at four o'clock, motherfucker keep driving nonstop. He's a monkey. That's what he does. But you tell a monkey, apply some thought to it. Monkeys don't think like that. <laughs> if that's what you want to do yeah so you got to sit down and you got to say i have a plan my plan is based on profits so if i want to profit good on the fuel i've used and because i got all i got 12 months tax season is 12 fucking months for us we got 12 months to do this shit so i want to drive thirty thousand miles this year but i want at least three dollars a mile that's all i want is three dollars a mile some you're going to get $10 a mile. Some you're going to get $25. And so it helps your average out a lot. But if you keep that base at three, you're going to make $90,000 active driving, $90,000 in a year, and you only drove 30,000 miles. These busy motherfuckers, they don't drove 130,000, 140,000. They driving almost 10,000 miles a month. And I'm like, man. <laughs> oh, Flex said, hey, Jeff, my pastor sell me $5 and said, get that guy $2. He the truth. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, Flex. I appreciate that, brother. Man, tell your pastor just said, thank you. This is how we talk in Rise Share, you know what I'm saying? Flex is my man. He's always in the chat, always in the comments. Every video, we share that energy back and forth. So I'm glad, Flex, I'm glad you trust me enough to play me with somebody in the car. Because <laughs> you know we get to going off sometimes. We get to going, man. <laughs> Motherfuckers might be scared. Be like, can you just drop me off at 7-Eleven? I didn't know you had friends like this. Like, no, he's cool, dude. Cool. He just mad at the apps. That's all. He just mad at the apps. He ain't mad at you. <laughs> just God damn it, Jeff. You owe me three dollars. I got you, brother. I got you. I'm gonna give you a crusty dust. I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Uber Eats deliver you a fucking donut to wherever you at. <laughs> You're gonna be just sitting in your car in the park a lot, motherfucker. Pull up, look over at you. You flex, yeah. I got a donut delivery for you. <laughs> Like this motherfucker sent me a crusty dusty man. Yeah, but man, says, Drew said, I'm sitting here on live set deluxe, chilling, watching your stream, clicking on XL trash, and live spams me. I wish I could just set my sh uh, shit deluxe only and disable XL. Yeah, yeah. This is my lazy ass getting 35 on nachos from DoorDash right now. <laughs> Bridge map, don't do it. Go to Walmart, man. What you should do, you should hit up Walmart for a bag of nachos and then order some cheese with it. And make your own nachos right at home. That's it. That's how you do it, brother. That's how you do it. Fuck DoorDash. Yeah. And Thomas said, I am educating them often when they ask about how to be a driver. Good, man. And that's the thing, Thomas, man. You, you, when, even when you're talking to passengers about it, 
And when you're talking, you're educating them on, on how we don't get paid what they think they're paying. You're only, they're only going to tell somebody else. So they're, you're transferring knowledge to people who really make the difference. The riders and the drivers got to talk. We've got to trade information back and forth. And that's what the apps don't like. The apps don't like it when we start talking. Once we start talking, we're uncovering all the drama, all the bullshit. We uncover everything. And they don't like that. And so we start, like I said, you start telling passengers the truth. This is really what it is. You just pay like $28 for a trip. You probably normally pay $18 for. Yep. Well, I'm only getting $9 out of that 28. What? Yeah, I'm getting nine out of that 28. How is that, man? How's that shit even legal? Exactly. Because the apps ain't nothing but travel agents. The apps are travel agents. And the travel agents are getting more than a cruise ship. That shit don't supposed to work. If you pay $1,000 for a cruise, the cruise ship don't get $250 bucks and the travel agent keeps $750. That's not how it works. That ain't the shit's backwards, man. It's not about cherry picking the surges. Just need to have common sense. I'm an eight-year vet driver with Uber. Yeah, yeah. You got to have common sense, Tuck, and that's what it is. And a lot of people don't understand. They don't have that that business acumen, that common sense about business that, you know, set any business out there going to tell you right off the bat, they're going to start with a budget and a forecast. All No business is aimlessly out there just doing shit every day. They got a forecast on what they want to make per week, what they want to make per month, per quarter, per year. They've already got a forecast. And sometimes they'll hit that forecast or they'll exceed the expectations to go over it. Sometimes they'll fall short of it. But every business has that. So riders need to hear this shit straight up, <laughs> man, real. And once they sit up there and they say, you know, you get your forecast together, you get your budget together, you've got to act on that. Every action you do has to say, we're getting this forecast in order, whether it's revenue generation or expense reduction. Everything you do has to work on that budget and that forecast. That's it. And a lot of drivers don't have either. I always say I like $3 a mile. Sometimes I'll take two. One is when I transport myself from one side of town to another. But my rides be six dollars a mile, seven dollars a mile, because I know I'm going to have to take a dollar a mile trip someday. So I got to keep my average up. And so you got to set your forecast, set your budget and say, you know, even based on oil changes, the day you change your oil, say, OK, this is how many miles I had this day. And you put it in your, your thing. This is how many miles I had this day in about two months. Look at how many miles you went in two months. Oh, Ryan, appreciate that. Really, the crusty, dusty dudes. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. But yeah, but in two months, but like, see how many miles you drove and then say, how much money did I actually make in those two months? Go through your apps. Sometimes you get cash tips and it's hard to keep track of cash tips, but trying to go through your apps and be like, man, I went like, you know, 7,000 miles, but I made like $21,000. Holy shit. And you say, yeah, I made $21,000. I only went 7,000 miles since my last oil change. This is crazy. And it's possible. Because if you're averaging $3 a mile or more, you're going to hit that number. Now, 21,000 miles, if you do that every quarter, four quarters, you're going to end up with $84,000 after those four quarters. If you're only doing 7,000 mile increments, all you're doing is 7,000 mile increments. You're going to hit 84,000, which is close to your $90,000 goal. You was like, I was going for 90 grand. I'm at 84. Probably you probably more than that if you count the cash and you, that you got and everything like that. But still, you're like, I want to. My car doesn't take oil. Tom is like, my car doesn't take oil, man. What the fuck? I got a Tesla. We only take gas. That's it. We don't have oil in Teslas. We only have gas. We use premium in Tesla. That's why we so fast. We use 100 premium. <laughs> it's like, shit. But yeah, man, it's like, but once you start setting your budget and you set your forecast and stuff like that, you're, you're legit running a business. You're legit running a business. It ain't a hustle no more. It's a business. And a lot of people don't see it as that because they think, oh, you're just driving this low skill. Anything, cutting grass is fucking low skill, but people run landscape companies. I mean, I could teach a 10-year-old how to cut my fucking grass, but some of the biggest landscaping companies out here are multimillionaires. Their owners are multimillionaires. So I could cut fuck. I can say, hey, cutting grass is low skill. Shit, sweeping the floor is fucking low skill. But you got people who own goddamn janitorial service companies and they making twenty, thirty thousand dollars a month with a janitorial service company. They making big bank, 20, 30 G's a month, cleaning offices, cleaning homes, cleaning mansions, cleaning apartments and condos. 
when you run something at a business, even if it's low skill, the skill is in the business. That's the skill part. Don't worry about what I'm doing. It's how we're doing the business. That what makes the difference. That's where your skill comes into play. Because, I mean, just think, it's motherfuckers out there right now twisting balloons, making dogs and shit. Motherfuckers out there, wait, 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 wait. Motherfuckers making probably $40,000 a goddamn year twisting balloons. It's a business. I said, dude, I probably spent like three G's on balloons this year, and I'm just in a fucking parking lot. <laughs> fucking bubble on the head, bubble on the butt. Here's your fucking poodle. 40 G's, motherfucker. So it was like, anything could be a business, but you have to run it like one. That's where the skill comes in. Flower shops, businesses. It's low skill. Like sticking flowers in a fucking vase is low skill. It's like you put water in there. I know keeping them alive is hard. So you got to have, you know, an arborist in there to teach you how to keep the motherfuckers alive. But it's a lot of low skill shit out there. Shit that don't take a lot of intelligence. But the intelligence is in running the business. The intelligence is in time management and how to plot your rides, how to plot your courses out, how to get around town, what parts of town to go to, what events to work, which events not to work, because I've done that before. And it's also, you know, some of the skill is also in when to work, why you, why you shouldn't work that day when it's raining. I don't work because I don't want to take the risk. So it's a lot of skill involved in there. And a lot of people don't look at what we do. Like I said, it's easy to do what we do is so easy, so easy. But the skill comes in your it's all mental. Physically, it's easy. And that's what I mean by easy. Physically, it's easy. Mentally is where the complication starts. And if you don't have the mental, like somebody said earlier, I think it was Miami said earlier, if or Tuck Tuck said earlier, this is not for the weak. Ride sharing delivery is not for the weak. It doesn't mean physically weak. It means mentally weak. If mentally, if you don't have it in your head to know how to do this shit, mentally, you're not going to make it. So easy. I could pick up a bag of fucking chicken. I could pick up a box of fucking chicken. It weighs like two pounds. I could walk it up them steps. That shit's easy. But have me do that while using that money to pay rent. Ask me do that while paying for a car, while paying for insurance. Now you got to have the mentality of which chicken buckets do I pick up? Hmm, which pieces do I pick up? Do I stop picking up pieces today? Do I go do a party over here? Do I do ride share? I mean, the business, it starts hitting you in the head in a mental way to where you got to say, physically, I can do this, but mentally, I got to know what the fuck I'm doing or else I'm not going to be able to do this. And that's the hard part that a lot of people don't get when it comes to ride share. They don't get it. Yeah, Tesla also states, uh, Tesla, dumb back and front tire, different sizes, so you can't rotate. Yeah. I drew the same thing on my car. I got 255s on the front, 285s on the back. I can't rotate. <laughs> the Jeep, I can rotate. Every other car, I can rotate. The car, 285s on the rear, 255s on the front. Because there's eight and a half inch, eight and a half inch wheels in the back, but it's eight inch wheels in the front. So I'm like, if I got the same size wheels all around, then I could do it. But yeah, when you get cars with offset wheels, yeah, you you gotta kind of you screw yourself pretty much. And I know it. It, I like it, but it's, it screws us. We can't rotate. You can't even put a tire from one side to the other side if you got directional wheels. And most of us got directional because we push the water out. Like you want directional tread on your car. So when you go through water, you don't hydroplane. You just you slow down a little bit and it fans the water out instead of you just rolling over the water and skirting your car off the road. So you can't even reverse the pattern because if you reverse the pattern, you're sucking the water in as you're driving. It's the water shooting up under the car now. So it's like, man, it's all jacked up. These goddamn cars, man. $21, 10 miles. I'm out. Deal. There you go off the handle. There you go. Hey, and then I guarantee off the handle, I'm going to call this shit right now. I bet you get a $6 tip. I'll put it out there. You're going to get a $6 tip on that ride. It, when it comes out to be $27, find this video tomorrow and say, dude, it came out to $27.27. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tomorrow, I'll, I bet you get a tip on that. Because like I said, when the, the ride I had, when the dude was like, he was, what, seven miles away, but he had to go a half mile to Circle Can, a half mile back to the house. And he bought me all them fucking cookies and tipped me like five bucks. Some people really appreciate us going a long distance to pick them up when nobody else is messing with them. $21 for 10 miles? Yeah, I'll take that all day, all day. Because then when you get there, you set, you get a ride back. Now your ride back might be like 21, something like, man, you come back and get money. You can get $40, over $40 for going like 20 miles. That's good. I like that. 
Oh, yeah. That's why Model Xs have so many blowouts. No one sees the, the tire wear on the inner of the tires because of the tilt. Tilt sounds like overpressure damage. I don't know because my BMW's got the same thing. I got pictures in my car. When I first got the car, it had the uh, Pirellis on the front. So when I took the Pirellis off, the insides, you could see the radials on the inside. Outside looked perfect. Insides, the radials were there. I was like, damn, took those off. The next tires I had, and all I did was move the the um, the two fifty fives to the front, the Pirellis to the front. Did the same thing, driving on those. The fucking inside, you could see the because I was wondering why I was getting like a little thump. I was on, I could hear something going thump, thump, thump. I was like, what's that thump? Came home, took the tire off. The radials on the ends, the outside looked brand new. It's something with the camber. The camber is like not right on some of these cars, man. I don't know. I'm gonna go. I just put these tires on, so I'm gonna probably give them like a month. And I'm going to go ask somebody if they can realign it and see what if the camber is off and on. But, yeah. And I don't know. Tilt is that is that camber, Thomas, man. It's the camber. It's, it's kind of off. Something screwy with these cars. And I think, honestly, I think they do that shit on purpose. Because when, when you think about all of the tires that can go like 80,000 miles, 90,000 miles, people aren't selling tires that often at that rate. So if you can get a tire to last 30,000 miles because the outside looks brand new. But the inside, the whole camera done fucked up the inside. Now you got the tire manufacturers and the automakers in bed with each other. And they're saying, dude, we're going to give you a cut of our profits if you could fuck up the camber. If you fuck up the camber, they're going to be replacing tires more often. <laughs> so it's like, hand, it's kind of like how Uber sides with Hertz is, hey, you want to rent a car? Go to Hertz. <laughs> it's like, man, oh, tilt, toe, same thing. It's, I call it camber, cause, but it's like toe in, toe out, you know, camber, shit like that. And I think that's what it is, though, man, because a lot of times these cars, man, they just they don't set them up right. And I think they do that shit on purpose just for the service and for selling tires and shit. I'm like, there's no way these tires look so good on the outside, but the insides are fucking up like that, man. Hey, buy Hertz it has a decent deal on rentals, to be honest. I don't know. I would buy it. But I would buy it. Yeah, man. But for real, like I said, I'm glad, you know, a lot of us, you know, we come to these chats all the time and we really talk, you know, like drivers that respect each other. We talk like drivers that appreciate each other in the chat. We help out each other. Miami, you're right. Very good topic. And and I like I said, I just love the energy, man. I really love the energy of, you know, what we do on this channel. I know a lot of the shit we talk about is kind of off key. Lot, not a lot of people get down with the vibe that we kick out, whether it's, you know, we we cuss too much. We like joking too much about something. That's in there. It's cool. It's cool. You know, like I said, this is the barbecue. This is where we come. We all chat. We family and shit. And we try to help each other out. And just when I'm going through the comments and I'm seeing other drivers, like I'll click love on somebody's comment and like somebody's comment because I see them helping another driver out. And I appreciate that shit because it's, that's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take for us to actually teach drivers and riders how this industry could work. Because if we allow the apps to run this industry, ain't none of us going to make it. Ain't none of us going to make it. Because if we allow the apps to run this industry, we're going to first be replaced by driverless cars. Then, too, we are going to end up broke. Because the apps ain't never calling nobody's phone ever saying, hey, man, you only made like 100 bucks last week. Is everything good? Excuse me. Oh, man, my transmission went out. Oh, damn, your transmission. Is there any way we can help you get another transmission? Like, you want to do a loan with us, a 0% interest loan with us or something like that? Because we know you drive with us. I mean, you've been driving with us for a while. We could do a 0% interest loan and help you get a new transmission. These apps will never say no shit like that. They'll be like, damn, that driver's out. Let's get this other driver a, a fucking bonus to see if we can get him out. They done, they forgot about you. The moment you turn that app off, they forgot about you. And that's why I tell people, man, these apps don't really care about drivers. And they will replace any driver out there with a whole new fleet of drivers they just got off. Like, And that's why I think they keep a lot of these um, background checks on the back burner. Because they wait till a lot of drivers get fucked up, phased out and everything, and then they let the new lot come in. They say, man, we just lost like 6,000 drivers last week. We lost 6,000 drivers. Well, we need 6,000 new drivers. Well, we got all these background checks on the back burner. Approve them all. And so they approve them all, but then these people are driving for a year, and then like half of them will get deactivated. Well, they redid my background check, and I got deactivated. It's like, but they did your background check last year. Yeah, they redid it and they deactivated me this time. They said something came on my background because they never did a background check to begin with. They just let a whole new onslaught of drivers on because a whole onslaught like left. And that's how I think that's how they do it, man. They don't really do background checks and shit like that. They just get people in, they get people out. That's just what it is. Yeah. 
forerunner, my man. I'll tell you, hey, don't change anything about this channel. We love it the way it is. Haters can move on to high AR channels. Real shit. Real. And that's what I say, man. This channel is not for everybody. But everybody that comes here, guaranteed. First off, if you if you come with respect to this channel and you respect the drivers on this channel, you're going to get respect back. But if you walk into this barbecue talking shit about, man, this chicken tastes like shit. We're like, who the fuck are you? Like, who invited this person anyway? Man, these motherfucking ribs suck, man. These All oh, this potato salad, man. Who made this nasty ass potato salad? We don't even know you. You just walked in the room. We have no idea. You just walked into the barbecue talking shit. Nobody knows you. So make sure when you come to the barbecue, you, hey, how you doing, man? My name's John. What's up, John? Yeah, man, I'm a driver in this region. This and that. What's going on on this channel, man? What's going on on the channel? Oh, man, this is what we do on this channel. Cool, cool, cool. All right, kind of browse around. Check out the channel first before you just talk, start talking shit about everybody. And a lot of motherfuckers like to walk into the barbecue talk. Man, these motherfucking sodas ain't even cold, man. Y'all ain't got no real Coke. This is knockoff Coke. Y'all ain't got no real. Man, don't come into nobody barbecue talking shit. Nobody here even know you. So this is a channel where a lot of us, we come, yeah, man. <laughs> Realest channel on YouTube, man. I appreciate that, Ryan. Tuck said, this channel ain't for the week either. Man, real folks over there. For, man, we real. We real. We, we're drivers. We're humans. We got brains. We got hearts. We got feelings. We on these fucking streets. We got families and shit. We trying to do it. And then you got these raggedy motherfuckers who think this channel is like every other ride share channel because that my shit might just pop up in a news feed one day. And they go, who the fuck is this Uber G Bay Z dude? Oh, you fucking idiot. You're driving a fucking Jeep. Who drives a fucking Jeep for ride share? You're stupid as a motherfucker. I'm like, who the fuck are you? And I ain't drove that Jeep in years, you idiot. <laughs> well, I didn't know. I just saw you in my news. Well, walk into the barbecue and talk around the motherfuckers. Find out who's at the barbecue first. Don't just walk up in here talking shit because you don't know us. Because when they come in attacking me, oh, right off the bat, I'll let motherfuckers have it. Ooh, I'll be good. And don't let them have a channel. Please don't let them have a channel. Because I go look at their shit real quick and come back and let them fucking have it. I'm like, you motherfucking missing teeth, son of a bitch. Let me tell you, so I'll be going to fuck off. <laughs> no NPCs up in here, fam. Hell no. Thomas said, my boys love your vids. It's a bridge that be cracking up. Man, for real, man. I enjoy your driving vids. The one where you were talking about the motherfuckers with the glow sticks. <laughs> Direct in traffic. <laughs> I was at the Beyonce concert. The motherfuckers with them goddamn glow sticks, the fucking silver suits walking around every fucking where they just drive me up a goddamn wall, man. Them people. But like I said, we we it's real, man. And and the way I look at a lot of drivers, like when I see you guys, I see your names pop up. I see like how we are. I know who's got the 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 good energy, the humor. I know sometimes like my homegirl and the coach, she had a real bad day today, and you know. We try to cheer up. We try to talk and tell people things. That's what we do as a, we don't, oh, well, you better quit. My man, Devin Brown, he's on the channel every once in a while. He was driving. He had to go do a W-2, but he's here in Phoenix. So he's like, man, I'm, I'm mad I end up getting a W-2, but I'm going to be back on the road. I'm like, dude, don't feel bad about it. I mean, you had to make a decision. You was down to the wire. You had to pay some bills, man. So you'll come back. We ain't going nowhere. And if anything, by the time you come back, we learn new shit. All drivers have traded new information. That's what we're here for, man. This channel is one of them channels. We all elevate. We don't hate. We elevate, man. This is rising. Your response to the haters in the comments are prices, bro. <laughs> Dude, I don't give a fuck about them because they don't give a fuck about me. And it's like they don't want to sub my shit. They just want to talk shit. So I talk shit to them. Fuck them. And they go, well, I'm going to unsub your channel. I want to. Oh, who gives a shit? It's like, motherfucker, I'm so far past a thousand subs. Leave me the fuck alone. And it's like, I don't. I tell these people I'm real. I'm 100. I know how shit operates. I know how the world operates. And when they bring that Facebook ass energy over to YouTube, I'll let them have it. I don't keep that shit on my channel. I don't like that because we over here trying to help people eat. We trying to, you know, help people pay off a bill, get out of debt, say, man, all I got to do is come up with three G's. You have three G's and I'm out of debt. I'm like, well, you better do some serious fucking driving, man. You got to find some surge. Use Uber pet. Fucking if you got to do some night driving, whereas, you know, less traffic so you can move around a whole lot quicker, move the nights for a little bit, change your sleep schedule up, move nights. And a lot of people, man, they just they they don't want to come and, and better their situation. So they come to our channel. Oh, I've been driving for five years, man. Oh, you motherfuckers cars are going to blow up next week. It's like, oh, whatever, man, whatever. And you get people like that. And like I said, they don't come to the channel to try to help anybody out. They try to come to put people in the same boat they're in, the same energy they're in. And not we might be over here mad about what we're getting, you know, shitty rides and stuff like that, because that's what it's about. You know, we come over and we vent. It's cool to vent. And that's what friends do. We come, we talk about the bad plays. We may just like, you know, 
Coach Prime, he was venting at the news conference earlier about how he plays. Yeah, we got to win. But it was the shittiest win I ever had in my life. I mean, he kept it 100. And and we all said the same thing. We saw that Buffalo's game. They won, but man, it was a sloppy win. And in my opinion, at the end of the game, I know Shadur went over to the student section and did the little watch thing like this or whatever. It was tacky. I think it was tacky because he didn't really put up his best performance. He really didn't. I mean, he pulled out a win. And if not for that kicker, they probably would have lost that motherfucker. If anything, the kicker should have ran over there and did like this, not him. So, but like I said, and I think Coach Prime, he he really he he's like the energy that we got in Rod Share. We get our asses kicked a lot. We get our asses kicked a lot in Rod Share. And some days we might win. We might come up profit like Miami. We might come up with a little profit, but we know we need better. We could do better. We just need to come different. Some days when I'm out driving, I know I make mistakes. I'll I'll go left instead of right. And I'll end up in Tempe and not downtown. And I'll miss all the surges. Shit happens. And we know that. We know that. But we're a channel and we're drivers on this channel that at least try to help educate each other on the next time we go out. And a lot of people, they don't, you know, they have one bad night. Right, sure sucks. This is, I knew I should have quit last year. This is hard. So, man, it was one night. Because you might go out tomorrow night and bang out a $400 night. Shit, dude, I got videos showing me. Make nothing. I'll go out. Make $70. 70 bucks. Then I go out, you know, two nights later and clear almost 450 that's right sure you got to be willing to deal with the roller coaster man it's all mental and we got a channel like this that we got a lot of people that have been on this roller coaster man we've been on it for a while but we help each other and we tell each other hey there's a loop-de-loop -loop coming up you're gonna get kind of sick so like brace yourself into your motherfucking seat be ready because the loop-de-loop -loop gets everybody and we educate people on what's gonna happen on this roller coaster and a lot of people that's not, if you can't ride the roller coaster, you got to go get on the Ferris wheel or the fucking merry-go-round. Go sit on the motherfucking zebra. I don't know. Go sit on the dolphin and shit with the fucking spoon on his back. Who the fuck knows? Do something. But ride share is one of those, you know, industries that can go left or right any given day. It can go left or right. And we take that risk. And that's why we feel we deserve the money. We deserve the money. We're not the travel agents. We're the ones actually doing the travel. And we deserve some of those profits so we can take care of the families. Because without drivers, these apps ain't shit. Without drivers, these apps ain't shit. They just in their hand. They're using it. And ain't nobody going nowhere. So they've got to respect us. A lot of people got to respect us for the drivers we are. Because we're picking up people, saving them from getting DUIs, getting people to and from work so they don't lose their fucking job. They car breaking down. We getting them to and from shops. Getting them to and from work while their car is in the shop. People flying into town, we're getting them to and from their hotels, so and they ain't gotta go pay $500 to rent a rental car. Instead of paying you paying $500 to rent a rental car for two days, you just, you know, 60 bucks for an Uber. You just save $440. You're good now. You save $440 just using the Uber. That's it. And we do that shit for people because, no, we don't do nothing else. So you don't gotta walk up. Is there any, you gotta do something else? You can't be possibly just doing this. There's something else you gotta be doing. No, I kinda invest my time and energy and my money into this because this is what I enjoy doing and I enjoy helping people out. And when people return that energy back and they tip us back, it makes us feel appreciated for getting out, lifting a suitcase. Like, you know, forerunner forever. You get out, you lift the suitcase. And people be like, thanks. And they just walk off. Now you don't feel appreciated. You just help lift people's suitcases, help people move around this and that. And there's no level of appreciation for it. And I know people, well, we don't have to fucking tip you. It's not, you know, required. It's not mandatory. Yeah, next time your ass don't get a ride to the airport and you miss your motherfucking flight and you got to come up with a $90 fucking airport change fee, you're going to wish you gave somebody $5. Because now you're like, I got to do a $90 airport change fee? Yeah, but just think, had you gave the last motherfucker $5, you'd be better off right now. <laughs> but now instead of 5 you got to pay 90 That's energy being returned to your ass. Yeah. Yeah, not to mention emergency room rides. That's right, Briz. The emer the ER rides, you know, Banner Hospital. We got Banner out here. We got the Children's Hospital out here and stuff like that. I'm always there because a lot of kids have shit happen to them. A lot of kids have shit happen to them. Middle of the night, on the way home from school, this and that. And where's the parents at? One of the parents has to go back home with the other kids because the mom is going to stay at the hospital, but the dad has to get back. And they had the Uber there and is moving around. Dad just got off to work. Dad's going to leave the car at the hospital. So when mom gets out, the car is at the hospital or mom's got it. And we're, we're the drivers. We come in to fill that fucking gap. What do the apps do? Oh, yeah, we're going to charge them $19 for that ride. And we're going to give you $7. The fuck you not? No, because that person going to still be sitting at the hospital if you pull some shit like that. 
they still gonna be sitting at the hospital having to get back home to the other kids that didn't come. And it's like, you got to say, we need to start paying these drivers for what they're really doing for people. These apps ain't shit but an interface. These motherfucking apps ain't doing nothing. They're not moving no bodies left or right. They're just finding an available driver in the area. You're finding an available driver. That does not give you 70% of the fare that the person has paid because you found them a ride. The driver has to do the ride still. And that's the shit that irritates the hell out of me because they used to pay 75% of the fare, 80% of the fare. There's, I remember when, when Uber used to have negative money. I remember when I used to do rides, Uber would be like negative $3 because of the, the way the ride was set up and it took extra because we were doing the time and the miles and everything else like that. That I don't see that happening too much now. I don't really see that happening too much because the way the apps are set up, they're, they're screwing us over. And we'll sit there and do, like you said, Britt said, we'll do an emergency room ride two o'clock in the morning, getting the, like I had to take a dad, his uh, kid got bit by a dog. So I had to take him back to the hotel or whatever. And he was, you know, I'm, you know, consoling him. You know, I got four dogs and we sitting there chatting and talking and stuff like that. And, you know, I sided with him and not with the dog. And it was like, well, the mom is upset because the boyfriend's dog has got to get put to sleep. But the dad, the dad is the one guy he was there. But the boyfriend was another guy. The boyfriend is who had the dog and the kid was bit. So the dad had to get Uber to the hospital or he had to get Uber back from the hospital. So that's when I Ubered them back. And I was like, yeah, man, they should just, I said, I got four dogs, man. And if my dog bit up a kid to the point where he needed stitches in his face and everything like that, and the recommendation was to put the dog down, I think of the kid first. I would think of the kid first. I love my dogs, all four of them. But there would not be a second kid that they would bite. There wouldn't be a second kid. I guarantee that. And so, and we do stuff like that. And we round, the apps don't do that shit. The apps don't do that. The apps find the best drivers with the best energy who's in situations this person may or may not be. And they're even letting people prefer, you know, who do you ride with? The apps don't do none of that. We are the energy of ride share as drivers. And I tell people all the time, you know, exactly. The methadone clinics, the car dealerships and going to and coming from work. Yeah. What ride share company can you recommend for a new Uber or Lyft driver? Hmm. Might want to look up state form. I use travelers. I use travelers for mine, but they're kind of pricey, but they give you free shit all the time. Yeah, but no. And that's why, you know, and I sit and I think about all the times when these apps have ripped us off from making really good money. And here we are doing the best we can do for the community that we service. We service the community. The apps are not the service of the community. The apps, they're, they can be in a region in the community, but they don't necessarily service that community. The drivers are the ones that drive. And for them to constantly take money out of driver's pocket, people who are, you know, like you said, helping take care of families, getting people to and from, really investing into our equipment. We still owe three years and four years of notes on these Lux cars that they're about to come off the platform. I mean, somebody's got to pay this shit off. We don't have deep pockets like corporate America. We can't just go out and get loans to cover loans. We can't do that. Excuse me. We don't we can't just go out and say, hey, man. I need a $2.2 million loan to cover that other $2.2 million loan that I got from that other place. We can't just arbitrarily do that. Banks look at us and be like, dude, you already got a car loan out. What you need another car loan for? Oh, because I'm going to use that car loan to pay off this car loan. So I know owe you. So you buying the same car twice? Well, I'm going to just move the money to the other bank so I don't owe them no more. I owe you now. <laughs> so you refinancing, basically. Like, we can't just arbitrarily do that. Woke Flex A is dead tonight. Just did a three mile ride for nine hours from Lauderdale Airport. About to go see if I can find a ride back home. If not, I'll just go on my own gas. I'm on like five minutes from home right now. Yeah. And that's me, man. Up with 1500. Yeah. And that's me, Flex. I live, like I said, Terminal 4 is around the corner from my house. So I don't mind, you know, driving some off the airport and driving home. I do it all the time. I use airport rides as me getting back home because I'll be clear across town. I'm like, man, I got to drive all the way back home my own gas airport ride. Cool. That means I only got like a five minute ride now on my own gas. <laughs> I use them airport gas. I use them airport rides for everything. I love it. But no, and that's, you know, and that's why, you know, I enjoy spending time with a lot of you guys as far as drivers go. And I go through all the comments and I check on, I check with everybody and we always talking back and forth. We having a good time riding around in cars. I listen to a lot of you guys. that got, you know, YouTube channels. I listen to y'all podcasts. I'm making breakfast in the morning, hearing what's going on in your day, what's going on in your mind. We all laughing. And it's like it helps us as a community to understand the other drivers that are out there to know we ain't alone, man. We ain't alone. We all in the same boat together. 
And some of us started our plans, you know, last year or the year before that. Some of us are starting plans right now to do, you know, savings and profits and stuff like that. Some of us bought cars last year. Some of us are buying cars this year. Some of us bought cars five years ago. But, hey, Glitch Dash, my man, hope you have a good week, Jeff. Hope everyone has a good week. Stay safe, folks. Real shit, Glitch. Get out there and make that money, brother. You know, I'll be listening in to some, to some of your uh, lives pretty soon. Like I said, if when whenever any of us are not running lives, Glitch Daz, nine times out of ten, is running alive. Nine times out of ten, he's running alive. And that's why some days, like I said, when I'm making my breakfast, that's what I do. I just hit it. I'm sitting there listening to it. It'd be like four in the morning, five in the morning. I'm just listening. <laughs> I don't really get in and comment and stuff like that, but I got to listen because I got to cook. I got to wind down and everything like that, but I'm just listening. Clocked in $21 in 21 minutes. There you go. Hey, but what about the tip, man? The tip's got to come in pretty soon. Like you better text that motherfucker and be like, where's my tip at? Started out really late today. Started at 11 p.m. May 62, three hours tonight. Minus $5 that my pastor gave to Jeff. <laughs> Flex, you stupid. This is $5. <laughs> they gave to me, man. I'm returning at five. Watch how we do this shit, Flex. You're going to be like, oh, shit. No, I'm serious. Though. I, I take care of people, Flex. And I, I would say how, but I like it to be a surprise. I like the way I take care of people to be a surprise. I don't really, and the thing is, the people who have taken care of the drivers on this channel that know what I've done for them, like how I've taken care of them in certain ways, they'll be like, yeah. And I, and I don't tell people because I like when people do shit out of the heart. And Flex, I appreciate that shit right there. That was out of the heart and shit like that. And so, you know, I'm a, I'm a driver that I always do. I'm always doing something for somebody. Like I give rides to people. No, but it flexes energy, man. It's energy. And I tell you like that, man, I'm always giving good rides. Like my man, Dave McGrady, I sent him one of my clients the other day because they had four and usually I would take them, but they had four. And I said, well, I'm going to send you to somebody else. And hopefully he made really good money on that. But that's what I do to people, man. We're all drivers in this shit together. And I'm glad you guys, you know, supporting the channel. You hear doing things on the channel, giving drivers help, giving content, you know, making this channel really live, making it alive. Because just like Rideshare, Rideshare would not be alive without drivers. It ain't got shit to do with the apps. And just like a lot of YouTube channels, they wouldn't be alive without the drivers. So when people ignore drivers, especially in chat, when they ignore fucking drivers, that is my biggest pet peeve. Because I'm a driver and we're real people. We're like humans and we're saying things for a reason. Well, are sporting events profitable? Running at altitude? It depends on the infrastructure of the parking because you can get stuck in parking lots and you be doing one ride an hour. You be doing one. And like I said, if you're if the infrastructure for where you're going, like at ASU, don't I don't pick up at on university at all. It has to be south of university for me to pick up from ASU during a sporting event, because if you go down university, you're getting stuck in one mile an hour traffic the whole way down university. So that trip you just took 20 bucks to go like four miles. It's going to probably take you 45 minutes to make that 20 bucks because you got to go one mile an hour all the way down the middle turn. Then you got, like I said, it's, it's all crazy. Oh, no problem. Glitch dads, brother. That's what I do, my man. Hey, I support channels out there. I support drivers, especially real drivers. that's really trying to spread information and not be, be like a bullshit channel. Like you're a real life channel. You like, you are a part of the community and I don't know. Just, like I said, it's my opinion. My channel is my opinion. Motherfuckers know me, but I think you did something amazing for the community. I think you opened up the community for for integrity. You you really opened this shit up. And a lot of people were basing integrity on the amount of subs a person had. And I've always said subs don't fucking matter. That shit don't matter. The number of subs you got don't matter. It's the quality of the subs you have in that number. Don't worry about 200,000 subs, 300,000 subs. I, I have 5,600 subs or some shit like that. I have so many more quality drivers on this channel, in the comments, in the chat, and I sit and I watch everybody help everybody on certain videos. I'll tell you right now, some of the best drivers in the game are in rough markets are on my channel, and they're helping people in rough markets, rough periods of time. We all made it through the fucking summer. Even here in Phoenix, I had a few Phoenix drivers watching my channel and they couldn't even hack it through the summer. They went back to W2. That's how rough that shit was. That's how rough it was. But we still stuck it out. We still try to help everybody we can help on this channel. And that's what being a driver is all about. And you got other channels who are promoting greed. I don't give a fuck about no Lux drivers. Fuck them. It's just more for me. I'm glad they little, they little tears shutting down. That shit, that's more money for me. You got channels like that out there. You have channels like that. And I don't like that shit. That's not cool to me, man. That's just not cool. 
because we know it's hard enough to pay bills. It's hard enough to keep food. I went to the grocery store the other day today because I woke up today late and I went to the store because Nicole told me she had a rough day or whatever. I was coming back. I spent 89 fucking dollars and I had like three bags. I was like, what the fuck? I bought a can of Pringles. Pringles used to be 97 cent. It was two dollars for a can of Pringles. One can of Pringles. Everything's doubled in price. That's why I'm not buying shit when I'm and I'm like, this is fucking crazy. And like I said, and I'm normally a night driver, so I don't really eat out and stuff like that. I only grocery shop. So I'm noticing that the things that I'm I'm always trying to add snacks to my mix, back to my mix, not heavy snacks, but light snacks. Yeah, stacks, yeah. Stacks were the dollar seventy-two. They were right above it at a dollar seventy-two. And I was like, oh fuck. But the stacks only had barbecue, not original flavor. They were all I, I only do the original flavor because I don't like my lips burning and shit like that when I'm driving. Them fucking barbecue flavors and all these weird flavors be fucking my mouth up. And I just want a plain flavor with no scent. So I don't, you know, drive around fucking. No, stacks were a dollar seventy-two, but the uh Pringles were two dollars. But the Pringles used to be 97 cent because I used to buy Pringles all the time at 97 cent. They're two bucks. So they're a dollar three more. So they they went way over 100 percent markup, way over 100 percent markup. Wasn't no 50 percent mark. It's over 100 percent markup. I'm paying double what they used to cost. And that's why when I'm picking up bags from the grocery store, it's like even dog food. I had to go with a different dog food because the dog food I used to buy is now over 60 dollars. Thomas, all right, man. He says, ah, man, I'm falling asleep. I'm bounce. Appreciate you, Jeff and crew. Good night, folks. All right, Thomas Haney, man. Appreciate you, brother. Much love, my man. Thank you for coming through the chat and everything. That's it. I'll probably do another live later this week, so we're going to catch up, brother. We're going to catch up. Anything you miss on this, just start at about three hours and 45 minutes tomorrow and be like, ah. <laughs> man, glitch that's like, baby daddy number four. Shit, hell yeah. Man. And, and that's the thing, though, man. Yeah, two liter of soda, three forty nine, used to be ninety nine cent. That's crazy. A two liter of soda is three forty nine. Damn, I remember when they were ninety nine cents. The sprites and the seven ups were all ninety nine cents. I remember that, man. Man, yeah, Logan, man, you psh, dude, four dogs, man. They, we gotta feed them. Though I tell my fuckers, my dogs eat better than me. They eat better than me. I just had to go with a less expensive dog food. I went down a bag because I was like, man, I used to get the big bag. And I was like, I got to go down a bag, man. And I still buy them the same treats and all they treats, the treats. Uh-oh, that's who's back. And now the, the fucking adult chat is back. But see, and then I went with, you know, the dog treats they got. They used to be like $14. It's now $17. But it's the only type of dog treats they have to eat. Man, so, sometimes people don't understand dogs. Not only are dogs spoiled very spoiled because they'll eat what they eat and don't eat what they don't like but their stomach and their their chemistry their body chemistry you can't keep switching up foods and switching up shit and companies know that so when you sit up there and you start feeding people and everything like that at least gas is down a little bit. yeah a little bit a little bit and so you start feeding them too many different foods you messing up their stomach and so you got to keep paying the price. You just got to keep paying the price for the same treats, the same food, because you don't want to mess up their eating cycle. don't want to mess up their stomach. And so this shit gets expensive, man. Like I said, we got families to take care of. And, and when we know the apps are, are digging away at the, the fares that we're getting, digging away at our percentages and stuff like that, we're doing the best we can to stay on top of that shit. And when we ain't getting tips and all that, swap. So hey, Logan right here. Logan hooked me up with this. That's what I'm saying. Go to Logan Block Valley's page, man, and you can see the big one. This is the small one right here. He's got the big, he's got the one that's sideways that goes all the way down. I got this one right here, but this right here is going to be the killer. Because I, like I said, when I, that's why I sit it like this. Next time I go to a show, I'm going to sit my shit just like this on top of my car. So people know this dude takes Cash App and Venmo. I'm going to sit that shit right on my roof. Be like, hey, Cash App and Venmo rides right here. Cash App and Venmo rides. Oh, nice car, man. Nice car. Hey Flex, look on the uh, on the last video I put out. Was it the last one? The last one? Yeah, I think it was the last. Either the last one or the one before that. I can't remember. But I put the uh, the link to to purchase this on on Amazon in that because I got it off of Amazon. But I also put Logan Valley's channel page in there so you can go to his channel to look at his first before you buy. Look at his because you might want his. Now, the reason why I got this one, because it had to stand with it. And I like to stand because I want to sit it on top of my car when I'm at events. 
and be like, hey, cash out Venmo rides all day, cash out Venmo all day. And that way I just run around with a fucking telephone in my hand, scaring people. I want to have my shit sit on top of the car, be like, cash out Venmo rides. Yeah. And that's what a thing, man. It's like, you got to do that. It's, it's all about those dollar tacos you find at the taco trucks. <laughs> a little time. Not uh, hot sauce. You good to go, man. You be like, shit. All the longs got a stand too? Okay, cool, cool. I didn't know the long had a stand or not. But I saw this one. I was like, oh, man, I should have asked you first. I should have asked you. So, yeah. So, I don't know. I'll probably get another one. It's cool because, like I said, this one, I can have this one hanging on the car. And I can use the one you got, the taller one. I can actually have a light or something right next to it. So the light is when I'm at concerts and I got it sitting on top of the car, have a light aiming to it. So when people walk by, they can see it. And they go, oh, hey, dude, do cash at Venmo rides. He's got the whole sign on top of his car, man. Cash at Venmo rides. And so that's why I want to have that. Because like I said, most guys are running around with their phones in their hand. Cash ride, cash ride, cash ride. They're just doing that. Taxi, you need a taxi. They do that all day. And they scare people sometimes because it's kind of abrasive. But if you got your shit set up, sitting on top of a nice, clean-ass motherfucking car, they see what a car you got because it's sitting on your car. They walking past your car. These guys just walk through the parking lot. You have no idea what the hell they driving. You turn around, these motherfuckers got a goddamn 1985 fucking Dodge Omni. Like, oh, shit, motherfucker backfiring. You're like, man, we just took a ride from the wrong dude. But you got this sitting on top of the car. Motherfucker walk by, they be like, oh, shit, this the orange beamer? Yeah, man, I'll take three. Oh, we got three. We got three. Cash out Venmo. Let's go. Let's roll. And like I said, you got to we got to come up with ways to to keep profits in our house because the apps taking away Lux. They were talking about doing away with Surge. Oh, man. Hey, Logan, don't play with me, man, because, hey, I will pull up in the motherfucking 86 Caprice with that sign on top of that bitch subs in the back. I guarantee you I can get a ride because <laughs> I'm like, dude, he got a box Chevy. Hell yeah, baby. Cash App Venmo rides, box Chevy. We've been to old school with this shit all the way home. Man, I had that motherfucker full. They be in that motherfucker doing TikToks and shit like, oh, my cousin, he had one of these when we was kids. I love the box Chevy. Man, don't tempt me, man. Hey, because I'm going to tell you, and that's the thing. Somebody was saying on another chat, we should have Uber Classic. Uber and Lyft Classic. What they should do is they should let us have all the classic cars, 57 Chevys, box Chevys, you know, oh, the step side four trucks, all that shit. Get them to a location, have them inspected, make sure everything is cool with it, and put it on Uber Classic. Because some people love to ride some shit like that. Because my little ass car, man, my car is cool, but no, nah, I'd, I'd rather be in, in a box Chevy. If somebody told me, man, I got a box Chevy, I'll take you in. Let's do it. Honda Prelude, shit, race that shit. A Honda Prelude, a old ass Supra, a, a fucking 1986 Toyota Supra with the fucking fins on the back, man, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man took the 96 caprice uber's move hey that 96 that's that motherfucker ss right there man that's that ss that motherfucker hit the highway Woo! it's gone see you man and see that's the thing if uber would have something like that uber lift would have uber classic lift class they can just say hey we're gonna actually inspect the cars make sure the cars are up and up make sure the motherfucking you know tie rod struts exhaust everything no check engine lights inspect it like a normal car and as soon as they fucking be like, this is, is legit. We got mommy like, what is Uber Classic? That shit pop up, but it has an actual picture of the car you're driving. Not the little cartoon shit that's on the app now. It'll have an actual picture of the car that's showing up. Tell me that shit wouldn't be sick. Motherfucker, you see a motherfucking uh, a Riviera coming around or a Regal, a Buick Regal coming around the corner on some baskets. Man, I'm taking that. I'm getting the Regal. I'm getting the Regal on baskets. Let's go. Shit, that motherfucker pull up, dude. Tell me that shit wouldn't be cool. Everybody in the parking lot will be sitting there like, that's an Uber? Yeah, dog, Uber Uber Classic. <laughs> Motherfucker came up in a Regal. Shit, on baskets, not even dating, just baskets. The old school, big ass, thick fucking, the thick wire baskets, the old school shit. I want some real baskets on my shit. The Dayton's was cool. I had Dayton's on my cat. I got an 87 uh, Sedan DeVille. I was all white, blue interior, 14 inch D's on it with thick ass white walls. I used to roll that motherfucker to work. It had the square headlights. Man, I pull up and work with that motherfucker. It's like, that's y'all count it. Yup. <laughs> I like what I like, motherfucker. It's like, you can't tell me. Just because I'm accounted don't mean I'm not going to go get one of these old ass caddies. I paid four G's for that caddy. That motherfucker was clean. It had the 4.1 engine, though. That was the problem. It had the aluminum 4.1, so it ended up uh, throwing a rod through the bottom. 
and I should have got the 4.5 engine, but I bought the 4.1. It's like, ah, fuck it. You live and you learn. You live and you learn. Shit. $8, 10 miles. Doubt it. <laughs> what was it? Doubt it. Flex said, Logan, just subscribe to your page, bro. Uh, you're going to see some badass dogs over there, man. Logan's got some beautiful dogs, man. Beautiful. And see, I'm a pit guy. I've had pits my whole life. And none of my pits have ever bitten anybody. They, Many of them have been like, I don't even have to walk them with a leash. I could like walk them down the street with no leash. They wouldn't go nowhere. The two I got now, you got to leash them because they're super friendly. They're, they'll like go with you. They'll go with anybody. They don't care. They don't even know that they're pits. I love pits, man. 87 Fleetwood Broham. Woo! You had the big body, the boat right there, boy. That's the boat, the Broham. You probably had motherfucking carpets on the ceiling. <laughs> Is it? I'm talking to, nah, I'm cool on that shit. <laughs> Eight dollars. Nah, I'm cool on that shit. Let me just chill, man. I'm cool on that shit. <laughs> That's funny as motherfucker. Yeah. This, what did it say? Whenever I drive it, men always trying to buy it with the old school. Wait a minute. Hey, what you got to offer kicks? What do you got? I didn't see what you had. What do you drive? She said, whenever I drive it, man, I always trying to buy it with the love, the old school. What do you got? What do you got? And see, that's me, man. I'm an engine guy. All these computer technology and shit and cars like that. It's cool, man. I like it. it it's real fancy. It's funny as hell. But you give me an old ass LS, you drop that motherfucker, you know, in something clean, like in the Chevy. I got a big old 6.0 uh, Vortex in that one. I don't mind. I like the Vortex. They're pretty strong. This motherfucker's got 224,000 miles on it. Never had a problem. No leaks, no problems whatsoever. But I'd rather have an old school engine, man. I'd rather have an old school engine because those, I could work on those all day. The old Chevy engines, man. The 305s, 350s, shit like that. Let's do it. Let's run them. Man, man, man. Yeah, but man, hey, this weekend, like I said, what? We got the first Friday has passed by. We had first Friday in Phoenix. I didn't even work first Friday because it was so fucking busy. I was just tired, man. But we got another nine days before lux man nine days wait 1980 box chevy grandma left it for me been driving it since i was 15 wait you still got it you still got the box chevy oh shit you could square you got all the square lights square tail lights square headlights that's how i know when i when i hit the corner i see the square lights with the chrome around i'm like that's the chevy right there that's the box chevy man i'm telling you man them square lights with I had chrome. I had the silver uh, eighty uh, Capri, silver Caprice that had the uh, the chrome trim around the tail lights. Man, I had the little Capri symbol on the side of the back doors and shit. Man, don't 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 get me started with that car. Don't get me started. Yeah, we'll sit on some twenty twos, and I had like what uh four, 15 inch. I had fifteen inch deep dish hammers on mine. Fifteen inch deep dish hammers. So I kept them up. I mean, the goddamn deep dish was, I mean, that shit was like a mirror. I used to keep them motherfuckers Windex the fuck up super clean. I rolled down the street. That shit like it was crawling. That motherfucker was bad, man. 22 inch wires. Oh yeah. Them wires, man. Like I said, they don't, they don't make them like they used to dude. Every once in a while I go to a car show. I'll see people with the wires. I'll see people with some real good baskets on it. Not trying to go dating or nothing like that, man. I love them wires. I like the thick ones too, man. It's like, woo. Them motherfuckers are beautiful. When them lights hit it, you be going down the street, them, them fucking lights hit it, you just turn in the corner real slow. Man, old schools are some beautiful cars. I'm telling you, Uber and Lyft, they're missing a the market. They are missing a market because we got cats like me, still got old cats in the game who would love to be picked up in a car like that. Imagine going to the airport in a box Chevy, pulling up. Man, clean as a motherfucker, just gleaming, coming around the corner, shiny as a motherfucker. You pull up, you got all these new cars and all these new, and you pull up in the Everybody in the parking lot will get their damn cameras out. Everybody will be like, dude, there's a box Chevy right here in the airport with an Uber light on. They'll take that shit out and take a picture of it. <laughs> Telling you, Uber and Lyft is missing the market, man. They missing a huge market right now. And it ain't nothing to get one of them cars. Nothing. Because there's somebody right now got one sitting on the side of their house, dirty as a motherfucker. All it needs is, is some engine work done to it. Get it. Go get it wrapped. Get that motherfucker wrapped matte black. Go get the interior fucking professionally clean, redone. Man, I, I would buy it. I'll get some new wheels on it. I'll work with suspension, put some new uh, springs on that motherfucker. Everything, man. Is it, I might pull my boat out with the lift light. <laughs> that should be funny as hell. Dude, you should do it. Just to, just to throw motherfuckers off. Man, hey, if, if you, I'm going to tell you right now, 
Lyft and Uber, man, they have no idea how much we love our cars. It's a lot of people in this game. We're more than just drivers. And that's why I say, man, we a lot of when people be like, well, what else do you do? What, Man, it, people don't get it, man. People don't get it. We are car people. A lot of us that are in this roster game are car people. And we love being in these seats. We love, you know, I love how my car sounds when I'm driving a Jeep. I just love how it sounds. It's a stick shift. You know, I love the blow off valve going off from the supercharger. It's it's a lot. It's a lot. It's like you handling a big ass machine, man. It's like fun as hell. Just driving that big ass Jeep is fun. I could do that shit all day. So if somebody was to say, hey, man, come pick me up in an old school Chevy. Man, I hear that motherfucking V8. Man, sh that's and then you skirt them back tires. Skirt. <laughs> They'll be like this. I'm like, hey, that's a lot of horsepower in that car, lady. Don't mess with that. Shit, shit. Oh, just got a ride a block away from me. Crib for $10. Get it, get it. It's probably the Circle K. When you get there, she's going to be like, hey, can you give me some more crusty dusties when you're in there? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, Miami, hey, it will, Uber Classic would be dope. They just, they're missing the market. Because, I mean, I know they cool. They got Uber Boat. They got Uber Helicopter. Oof. Excuse me, Uber Green, all that shit. But you mess around and you get Uber Classic? Shit. Shut it down. Shut it down. I need a hat that says, my acceptance rate is lower than others in my area. <laughs> Real shit. My AR is too low. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. I don't. I tell a lot of the newer people out because even when I'm picking people up and I'm meeting new drivers at like the gas station and shit like that, I tell them about AR. And I'll be like, hey, listen, make sure don't worry about your AR. Well, you know, right now my AR is like 88% because I had to cancel. I had to uh, decline some rides. I'm like, you know what? 88 is still too high. It means you're taking almost nine out of 10 rides. So the algorithm is going to play you because they see you as a, as a sure bet. And it's almost like a sucker bet. They see you as a sure bet when you're sitting up that high. When you low, they're going to try you a few times. They're going to try you. But they know they ain't going to make a lot of profit off of you unless they get you moving. So they're going to start giving you good rides just to get you moving. Otherwise, you're going to end up going home. Like a lot of us, we just go home. And people be like, dude, how do you have such a low AR? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. $12, six miles deal. Hell, yeah. Take that. Take that. Take it. Hey, and hopefully get a $3 tip on that, man. Three to five on that. And I tell people, when your AR gets gets so high that, you know, they look at you as a, as a sucker, we get so low and people always be like, man, how do you get good rides with a low AR? Because they've been told by so many different people on so many different channels and so many different. Oh, your AR, if you don't keep it up, you're not going to get good rides. But the people telling them that are, are taking shit rides all day. And it's like you get maybe three, maybe four, four out of the, the 20 rides you took today were good. Four out of 20 rides were really good rides that I would take four out of the 20. The other 16 were completely shit rides, 70 cents a mile, 50 cent a mile, 80 cent a mile, a dollar a mile. That's what all the rest of the rides were. But yet they keep saying that high AR gets all the good rides. It's like, but you took 16 shitty rides to get four. If I only take like 10 rides a day and all of them are good, I guarantee my profit margins are killing your profit margins. I'm killing you. And that's what we say. You don't want to be in that boat where you're bucking, you're shoveling out water all the time. You're shoveling out water because you keep taking rides that are underwater. You don't want to keep taking rides that are underwater. You're going to get killed like that in this game. Yeah, low AR is from experience points at this point. Yeah, it's from experience, folks. We experience, so we know. I'm not going to be sitting around all month shoveling water out of my boat because I've been taking all these shit rides. Every shit ride you take is a bucket of water in your boat. You end up sinking that shit and guaranteed... When one bad thing happened, you need a new set of tires. You need new rotors. That's going to be the straw that broke the camel back because you didn't stack up enough profits to handle that. You're going to be like, I got to pay rent. I got to go grocery shopping. I got to pay my car insurance and my car note. Plus, I got to pay for new rotors. All I got left is $97. They want, you know, $750 for these rotors. I got $97 left. That's why you got to stack profits. Make sure you have enough for car repairs. Make sure you got enough. Like I said, if my engine was to blow, I've already priced my engine out. I can get a low, a low mile engine off eBay in Phoenix for that 2019 330i. It's like 15,000 miles on that engine for $4,500. And it's ECU everything. 
All I got to do is get them to crate it over. I got an engine hoist in my garage. I can get my own engine out. I just hoist my engine out of my car, disconnect everything, drop the new engine in with the new ECU and all of that, plug it all back in. It should work. If it's an exact same engine, it should work exactly the same. It's just plug and play. I ain't doing no conversion to an LS and no shit like that. Just straight plug and play. So that's why I'm like, if my engine wants to blow and it's out of warranty, I don't want to spend time rebuilding it because I don't know what may be wrong with it. I might got to take the whole crankshaft off and shit. It didn't just spin a bearing. I got to take the whole crank off, replace the whole. No, fuck that. Send me another engine. I'll just get another engine and I'll have it done in like three days. I'll have the other one out. By the time the other one shows up, I'll put that one back in. I'll be done in like three days. Engine's done for, for like four or five grand. Done. Instead of going somewhere buying a whole new fucking car for like $40,000. <laughs> it's like... Why well, don't need to pay forty thousand dollars when the engine only costs like five grand? I'd rather just spend the five grand. It's like, nah, I'm doing that. Yeah, tuck because I'm not I'm not waiting in the middle of a bad neighborhood willing to die for five bucks. Nah, I'm cool on that. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I'm cool on that shit. <laughs> That's just funny as hell. Since I'm not waiting to be in the neighborhood willing to die for five bucks. No, nah, I'm cool on that shit. <laughs> Tuck, you just need that shirt. I'm going to get you a shirt that says, no, nah, I'm cool on that shit. <laughs> that shit's funny as hell. You know what, man? I'll be saying that shit about rides. I'll be like, no, nah, I'm cool on that shit. I'm cool. You know what I'm, say? I'm not waiting in the middle of a neighborhood willing to die for five bucks. No, nah, I'm cool on that shit. <laughs> That's funny as a motherfucker. That's just stupid, man. That's just stupid. But no, man. And like I said, I wouldn't take out a whole loan for another car. I just put a whole another. I just drop my own engine in and give myself four or five days, get that shit tested, run it, make sure everything's on the up and up. But that's why profits are so important. Without profits, you can't do that. You can't make that move. You're going to be stuck either saying, I got to go trade my car in now with somebody with deeper pockets like a bank, tons of negative equity. I got to come up with another loan or a high interest rate. I mean, without profits, it's hard to make moves. It's hard to make moves. And that's why I love how this channel was set up because we dig into the meat of ride share. We dig into how this shit's really going. How do you really make this money? Because you're going to need it. You're gonna not only going to need the knowledge, but you're going to need the money. They will come when you're going to need this fucking money. You're going to say, man, I need a grand. Holy shit. I've been busting my ass for the past six months. I got like three G's saved up, man. Just from driving smart. I got three G's saved up. I got the grand. I'm not worried about it. And like you said, like most people don't. Real shit, Matt. Most people don't. And if you don't got that that money saved up from smart driving through less spending, less spending, more waiting and analyzing transactions and getting that money, something bad's going to happen. And you're going to be sitting there going, man, had I just not put so much you know, money in the gas, so much wear and tear on my car, because the less you drive that car, the less you're going to wear and tear on it. I love my car sitting in the, yeah, six months saved. You should have at least like 20 K's. Yup. Yup. And like I said, if you sitting on after six months and it's think like Sam saying three K a month is what you can save up three K a month. So you look at all your bills for the month. If you can cover that plus have excess of at least three K you're doing pretty, you're saving up pretty well. My main issue is I own too many fucking cars. I mean, my insurance alone is like 500 a month. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I need to get rid of some of these fucking cars, man. No, but serious though, you should really be able to save up. And if my plan would have went like it was supposed to go, the summer didn't go how it was supposed to go. I was supposed to have like 15 grand by the end of summer. I was short. It happens, man. You make a plan, you make a forecast, you make a budget, you fall short sometimes. I don't think, I'm not going to say, oh, because I fell short, I'm going to just go back and give me a W-2. No. That means the market was shit. We know it was shit. It was hard for everybody. I fell short. Now that the, the fall is here, we've had a few rough weeks or whatever. I had a few things come up too, like with tires and everything else like that. I had to redo my whole interior of my car for the carpets and all that. You know, I had to use some of my savings for that. So now I got to, you know, bounce back. I got to get back into it. But that's the point where you're at, where you need to have that leverage and that, that peace of mind to say, I can do this minimal investment of my car. I can go spend about five, six hundred bucks on this, just this car, getting this done, how I wanted to get done and not really feel too hard up. Like I should be a lot farther than what I am now, but I got enough leeway to make this move right now to protect my car. I got to protect my investment, protect the carpets, get the wheels done right. So I don't fucking 
the inside of my tread was like the radios was showing. I don't want to go off the side of the road trying to save, you know, 200 bucks. I'm going to save 200 bucks and just ride on these tires for another two months. No, because that $200 you saving on them tires might fuck around, total your car out. And you just pay the $200, get the new tires. Now we just, now we'll start from there. So I've had to make some expenditures or whatever to keep things moving. But that's, like I said, this is a business, man. And it for me, I'm a very frugal person. So it's hard for me to spend money in ride share. It's hard for me to spend it. But I know if I don't spend it, things aren't going to get moving. Things aren't going to get done. Even like, you know, paying for the microphone, setting up the podcasting studio, getting everything set up. Because I have to spend money to do this. Like, man, I've spent easily. It spends with the RAM and the computer plus more RAM coming. I mean, I've spent probably about close to $2,000. About two G's getting all these, this shit set up every fucking where on different things I've gotten, different tables, different, you know, man. But it's money you have to spend. It's an invest. I look at it as an investment. It's an investment so we can get things really moving in a certain direction. And if this if this channel works out how I think it could work out and it becomes a good mental channel, at least mental and have a lot of drivers on here that are mental drivers and not physical drivers, then any driver that comes here is going to help get the fares up in our regions because that's the main goal of all of this shit It's not just to pocket profits right now, but it's to make these apps realize we're not driving for shit. Raise your fares a little bit. If you want these people picked up, that's the point of a channel like this. I don't brag on this channel. We don't gloat. Oh man, I'm making a fucking whole lot of money. I'm just, I'm not on this fucking job. I'm not. We don't do all that shit around here. We don't do that because we're big money. We're bigger than that. We thinking it's gotta be something better than this. Imagine turning on your motherfucking app and all of a sudden seeing never seeing a fare lower than six dollars. You never see even for a mile. You never see nothing lower than six bucks. You like imagine that shit can happen, but it can only happen if you have enough drivers willing to say we're not driving for less than. Because the apps, the apps clearly won't take if, if I was a customer, a rider on the app and I said, you know what? I know you want to charge me 20 bucks, but I'll give you you know, $11 for this ride. Lyft is going to be like, we don't want your $11 because Lyft won't bend. Lyft is not going to bend and say, well, this customer only wants to pay 11. No, the ride is 20 though, but they only want to pay 11 though, but the ride is 20. We need to be that same way. So the customer says, hey, you know, if the Lyft says, hey, we want you to do this ride for $3. We say, no, I'll do it for six and stand your ground like Lyft would stand their ground. Because we know what the passengers are paying. We just got to stand our ground. We got to say, hey, if this passenger's paying $18, $20 for this ride, we deserve at least $9 for it. At least minimum $9. So why are you trying to pay $6 for this ride when you know they just paid $18 and they're going four miles? Give me $9 for the four miles. I'll do it. But lift won't bend. So we got to force them to bend by being smarter drivers, being more mental drivers than physical drivers, just getting in and driving and shit. Yeah. What Joe say, I have uh, over 1.6 thousand rides, five star rating, platinum level black, 2019 BMW 530. They won't give me an exemption for extra comfort when Lux ends October 18th. No way. No way. Wait a minute. Joe, you got a 2019 530. And they won't give you the exemption for extra comfort. I got, I did a short on mine. They sent me an email for my 330 saying I get an exemption for extra comfort for this little ass. My 330 is way smaller than your 530, especially in the back seat. Mine doesn't qualify either on the 330. But they, but Lyft said they're going to give me the exemption on the 330. You might want to contact them and just ask them, be like, listen. How do I not get the exemption? What market are you in, though, Joe? Are you in a, a really busy market or something like that? Because the thing is, if they're making these little ass 330s that only BMWs that qualify are I-7 on the list. Wow. Wow. You're, you're in Phoenix, too? Man, I did a short. So if you look on my channel in the shorts and you see the last short I put out, one of the last shorts I put out, it shows the email I got from Lyft saying, hey, Jeffrey, all this shit. You're, we're going to extend extra comfort for you until April the 24th or something weird like that. They sent me the email saying that your BMW 330i, you know, this and that. We're going to, you know, extend you all the way out to April. So they gave me six months with the 330i. They sent me the email. And I'm like, you might want to check your email, man. I don't know.
Because that shit don't make no sense to me. Because I got a small car compared to a 530. I would love a 530. Because that is a that's a really big car. That's a fast car. If they made the 530 in my color now. But then he's got a, a black one too. That's crazy, crazy. They didn't even been man. I cannot believe that shit. See, that's the thing about these apps, man. They so they so sketch. Like you don't know which way they're gonna go left or right sometimes when they're doing shit. You don't know which way they're gonna go. Yeah, time to bring that AR down, Joe. That car isn't cheap, fam. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, man. It's like if if they want to sit up there and put these small at like I said, I even my last video I put out showing my trunk. My trunk is way smaller than your trunk. There's no way my car could even be. It don't make no sense that this little ass 330 is extra comfort. Because I know on Uber, you got comfort and all this shit. Extra comfort. That's like extra comfortable. My shit's pretty tight. It's a small ass car. Yeah, a Honda Accord qualifies. But see, the Honda Accord is a rental car, too. So what they're doing is Hertz probably bought all these motherfucking Honda Accords. And Hertz is like, what are we going to do with all these Honda Accords? And Liv is like, we're going to put them on the list. And so anybody who wants to drive extra comfort got to come rent one of your cars from you. And I'm like, that's what they're doing, man. Because Honda Accords are like rental cars. They're rental cars. You can get them things all day. You don't get a BMW 5 Series at the rental car place. No. You got to go to like an exotic car place to get a, a nicer car like that. You got to go. They got one down in Chandler. They got a few BMWs down there. They got like a 7. Like you said, they got a 7. They got an M3 down there, an M4 down there. I bet they got some 5s down there, too. But you got to go to a place like that to get BMWs. You can't just go to Hertz. Maybe you can. I don't know. I've never been to Hertz like that, but probably. Drew was good. He's damn it still. Yeah, man. I was supposed to end an hour ago, but we got to talking about you missing, man. We had we some about Uber fucking uh Uber Classic. You missed the whole chat about Uber Classic. I know your ass. You would have been like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I need to get my ass in there. Eat me some dinner, man. Yeah, it wouldn't make me mad. But Lux Black is only popping on the weekends in AZ. Yeah. I mean, hey, Joe, did you go to the uh, the Gold Rush concert over this weekend that was down at the uh, Speedway? Because a few of us were down there. I know I was doing drops down. I had private rides, and I was doing private drops down there. But, you know, last night when I was down there waiting on my ride to come to the car, man, every car down there was a black SUV or a black car. Every, I mean, it was lines of those motherfuckers, rows of them. I should have videoed that shit. I mean, I ain't seen that many black cars and SUVs in one place, man. Yeah. So you stay in Scottsdale, Phoenix, Tempe. And see, I usually would too, but one of my, my clients, he's actually a DJ up in Scottsdale. So he DJs up at like Casa and all those places up there. So he also, not only does he DJs there, but he DJs at big events like this. He didn't have to DJ this event, but he's DJ at gold rushing uh, events like this before. So I picked them up get them out to those big events. And then while I'm out there, I drop them off and I just, just stay out there and I just work. I just work until I get a ride back toward this way. Then I work, then I get a ride back out when it starts shutting down. Otherwise, I'm like you. You catch me in Tempe. Juan Vargas always catch me on Mill Avenue. I'm always in Tempe. Like, man. Yep, Austin Scruber. <laughs> Scruber is whack on weekdays, but Griff seems to pop off on weekdays. Scruber is good on weekends, but Griff sucks on weekends. Yeah. And that's how it is out here, man. I don't, especially if you go by ASU during the week, during the week, if you go by ASU, you're getting a lot of two dollars and sixty two cent rides and you're getting four kids at a time. That's why during the week you don't catch my car in Tempe. I'll go down to Gilbert because you got Jolie's place down there. You got, you know, down what well, you got Jolie's place. Then you got uh, Katie's, I think, or Carrie's or something like that. And um, now Katie's pub. And that's in Mesa. That's another little small pub. I do a lot of pickups at. Then you got, oh man, it's a couple of, you got Champs, Champ Sports down in uh downtown right off of Vaughn and Page. You got that. So you got a few during the week. You got a few bars that'll pop. But if you go by ASU, everything's $2.62. 262 $4. 262 you ain't gonna make no money. And you have a car load of people the whole time. So your best bet is to stay down there and get his a question. Yeah, just go down to Gilbert, Chandler, you know, hit them little spots up like that. Since I can't go to Griff because I heard John Zimmerman's feelings, I just multi-app on weekdays. Yeah, I'm going to get back into Uber Eats, man. Especially when it gets cold, ain't nobody going to want to come outside. Woo, Uber Eats is going to jump. Uber Eats is going to take That's why I'm glad my Uber Eats account is good because that shit's going to jump through the roof. Once it starts getting chilly, 
And people are going to fucking have to put on a jacket and go stand there. Oh, man. Shit's going to take off. And I'm going to... And like I said, I think I've learned how to do ride share enough to where hopefully delivery kind of, you know, branches over into it with my mentality. But I know they do a lot of shit like they add tips, they tip bait. I need to get an app that don't tip bait because goddamn UberX, boy, if they tip bait me, I'm going to be mad as a motherfucker. I'm going to be like, they got me last year. What up, Joe? What you got, man? He's a question. I found a phone in my car several days later. I charged it, not missed calls and messages. Can't unlock it. Do I sell it? Ooh, well, the thing is, the fact that you, well, did, I, I would say, look at, see who tipped you last or something like that, or who didn't tip you last, because unless somebody is looking for that phone, you would never know whose phone that is. I wouldn't sell it because it's like, psh, man, it's like somebody might track it. To you, well, this guy sold us the phone. He stole it. Like, no, nah, I was an Uber driver. Usually if you just kind of was charged and nobody's calling it. That's odd. Maybe they got it turned off and it's locked. Is it an iPhone or an Android or something like that? Because usually if it's an iPhone, it was stuck between the seat and I don't know. It could have been days. Yeah. If it's an iPhone, somebody can do find my phone and find it. So they could do that. So they could find out where you live by just going, hey, find my phone. Hey, my phone is at this guy's house. Then they get there and see where it is. But if they don't have find my phone, they ain't going to be able to find it. They'll have to contact Uber or Lyft for somebody to see where they live. But they don't even know where they left it. Otherwise, they probably didn't be done hit the app up by now. Because shit, when people leave phones in my car, oh, they hit that shit up immediately. <laughs> tuck, tuck is stupid. <laughs> She's not going to tell you what to do, Joe. <laughs> yeah. The... Uh, that's what it is. That's what I think. It's an iPhone 14. If they already switched everything over, then all the messages and phone calls goes to a new phone. All right, right. And would have been an iPhone 14. I don't know what an iPhone 14 because it's got the Mac address and all that crazy shit like that. I don't think you could do much with it if it's if it's like a lock phone or whatever like that. I don't know how iPhones work. I'm an Android person. iPhones are weird technology to me, man. Weird fucking technology. Because i drones are gig or garbage for gig apps. Android is a way to go for apps. Yeah, if it's worthless, if it's blacklisted, whistling <laughs> dumpster. Motherfuckers, <laughs> <Well, we'll> <laughs> throw that shit over the fence. Kick it. I don't know. An iPhone 14. You know what you could do with an iPhone 14? You could hustle a hustler. You'd be like iPhone 14. I stole it, looted in Chicago. <laughs> If you want this phone, come get it, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, dog, I want that phone, man. Shit, hustler, hustler. <laughs> nah, yeah, I wouldn't fuck with that. I don't. Yeah, they use on eBay. They do that all the time. They be selling phones for parts all the time. But an iPhone, how can you even take that thing apart, man? Like, fuck that. I wouldn't mess with it. I don't know, man. Yeah. And with the find my phone thing, with the little feature called find my phone, I'm surprised they didn't try to find that shit. Oh, so once it's reported stolen or lost, it goes to the blacklist. You can't do anything with it, parts only. Damn. And that's what all phones are just with iPhones. Can any phone be blacklisted? Because I got an Android, so I probably need to lock my motherfucking screen. Shit. Cause I but see, my phone is always with me all the time. Like I see it all the time. <laughs> Tuck Tuck is stupid. <laughs> this is whistling Apple only. You could use it for like, you know probably like backdrop for videos to make you look rich, like sitting on the table or something like that. Be like, yeah, this is Joe here in Phoenix with my iPhone 14. You know, I got another phone. I use this phone in my hand because that one is my backup phone. Cause I'm rich like that. I got an iPhone 14, a spare 14. So I'm rich like that. <laughs> You'd be like that motherfucker's blacklisted. <laughs> you can sell it as a cat. Yeah. He can't get it open though. That's the thing. He said like, users he can't get he can't unlock it. So there has to be a way to unlock it. I would use that shit as bait. Yeah. What I would do is I would I would tie like a string or something to it and make a video of people reaching down to pick it up and yank it. <laughs> motherfucker be like, oh, you was gonna bend down to pick that phone up, wasn't you? Yank that motherfucker. 
They'd be like, oh, shit, I was going to get that phone, man. Yeah, no, you wasn't. <laughs> like, oh, dog, look, it's an iPhone sitting on this table right here, dude. Look, it's an iPhone. Just Hey, get that iPhone, man. It's just sitting on the table. Motherfucker, reach for it, just yank it with the string. Boop, thought you was going to get it. They'd be like, oh, shit. Just keep doing that shit on videos. You'll go viral. Somebody be sitting, they'd be watching the fucking TikToks like, man, this is a funny ass TikTok. This is funny. That's my fucking phone. I left it in the Uber's car. <laughs> this would be funny as hell. Collect that $12. The pain was four blocks away from the dude's house or would have done five minutes ago. Oh, there it is. There it is. Collect that $12. The passenger was four blocks away from the dude's house or. Yeah, so the motherfucker was four blocks away and didn't want to walk. These lazy motherfuckers, you lazy. So like, yeah, I'm not walking, man. I'm, you had to come get me. Motherfucker lost one of his shoes and shit. I might step on the nail, man. You got to come get me. I lost my other shoe. The pen on the map is never at the place it's supposed to be. Who makes their map? See, and I got videos of that. That's why I'm always canceling rides. I don't like that shit because I'll pull up to the pen and they don't even move. People be just like, I'm like, dude, you like around the block cancel i'm out i'm not dealing with this nope either get the app right or just i'm not dealing with it all together i'm out nope i'm gone i do that all the time man all the time yeah but shoot what is a four and a half man hey i had a good night rolling job drew you came in too late man it's time for me to it's about 12 15 at night tell you what everybody if you if you're signing off over here cancel rate over 30 percent. i'm at 31 if you're if you're still in the in the mood for some some podcasting and live streaming. You might want to check out Glitch Dash. I bet he's probably streaming right now. If he's not, yeah. If he's not streaming, I'm trying to well, Robert Reese is probably asleep right now. He gets up pretty early, but Glitch is usually streaming at some point in time. So use like I said, late night when I'm coming home at three, four in the morning, Glitch Dash is streaming. I'm like, this dude is still up streaming. Cool. I'll be cracking up. So Man, thank you guys for jumping on this podcast with me, man. I hope we had a good time. Drew, you got to play from the beginning. Next time you work, you got something to do, just throw that shit on, man. You're going to be cracking up. When we start talking about the cars, that's when you're going to like that. You're going to go, oh, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, the, this is an Uber Eats delivery, so the customer pin was another whole apartment. Come. Oh, okay, okay. My bad. That was a customer. That was an Uber Eats. All right, man. Well, hey, man, I appreciate you guys for coming through once again. We got to do this again later this week. I'll be probably dropping a video in a couple of days. I got to drive tomorrow. So, yep, Tuesday night's video should be – it'll be a short one, though, because, like I said, it's so much trash out here, man. This is going to be funny. I'm going to be cussing people out. Fuck this shit. <laughs> oh, thank you all for kicks. Bro, you, you kept me entertained and educated. Let's get out and get that money. Let's get it. All right, Ryan, I appreciate you guys. All right, Forerunner. Justin, man, you guys be easy out there, man. Forerunner, get out there and get that money. Tuck, tuck. Stay out, y'all. Hey, we're going to be good, man. Be good.